Welcome to Blast Premiere 2023. Twelve Blast Premiere teams will begin their quest for victory in a season group state. Teams seed each other, creating three groups of four. These teams then play out a double elimination, best of three group stage. The three group winners go straight to the season final. The remaining nine teams will fight it out for three season final spots in the cross group gauntlet. The six teams that failed to qualify for the season final will be cast into the showdown, where they must fight to survive in a merciless single elimination format, where they will be met by 10 teams from open qualifiers from around the world. Each seasonal showdown will be split across two regional tournaments. Eight teams will compete within a European and CIS bracket, whilst the remaining eight will battle in the Americas and rest of the world bracket. Winners of each showdown will secure their place in the season final to join the six teams from the group stage. The eight finalists will face off in a GSL format leading into a single elimination playoff bracket with quarters, semifinals, and grand final. The champions of the season finals will be joined by exceptional skilled teams, including winners of the CS GO Majors, ESL Pro Leagues, as well as the two teams that topped the Global Leaderboard. The Global Leaderboard is a year-long point scoring system that takes into account the performance of Counter-Strike teams from leading tournaments from around the world. Teams hoping to qualify through the Global Leaderboard will have until November 28th to claim as many points as they can in a number of events. In the event of any duplicate winners, spots will be open to those who have fought their way to the top of the leaderboard. These eight champion teams will come together for one last clash as they battle it out for a prize pool of $1 million. Join us in 2023 as victors are crowned and heroes are made. Welcome to the Blast Premier Spring Final here in Washington, D.C. The sky is blue, the sun is shining, the ducks are quacking, and the Counter-Strike is about to heat up. I'm here on the desk with my analysts. We've got Mr. Jason Moses O'Toole hey. and the Maniac himself. Maniac, I like that. You say the sky is blue, we can indeed see the sky again. For it's the first very time exciting. In three days, that does feel good. Yeah, it feels like the here. apocalypse has ended, and with Diablo it, four is out. Just in time it's for playoff Counter Strike. Ended a little bit too early, I think. You think so? You would have liked a bit more fog. I would have liked a little bit more apocalypse in my life. Jesus Christ! Just because your life is an apocalypse doesn't mean we all have to suffer through it. I think it. I think it should though. I think we I should all come down to my level. <laughs> Well, uh, well, it's Jason dark. tries to bring us all down to his level. We did have some teams rising to the level of the occasion in our group stage. Uh, it was quite the showing, right? I think we've got at least one of these quarterfinal matchups that I don't know would have been predicted here. Yeah. 
Probably not. This this first one we have the the complexities you're taking on Imperial, but this is how this is how Group A went uh, overall, and it, this is like where you see like where like kind of this is how things got messed up. That Imperial mm, yep. vitality upset right there. That's where you get like a little bit of the sketchy bracket over on one side with all the top teams. The one that's like grand final after grand final, and that's the one where we got the vitality and complexity quarterfinal is all due to this win. And, and although I agree with you, this wasn't really on the cards to see Imperial beat Vitality, but they gave G2 a run for the money, right? It's not like they just flew sure. their way here. That was a quite a great performance from them. Now we have the overview of Group B as well. Heroic, not losing a single map in group stage. The sky is blue, there's gravity. These are the things that are always true in life. And here they are in the semifinals already. I think what's so exciting about these upsets as we've turned them is that it wasn't so much about a team collapsing. Maybe the Vitality one was. Uh, I know that one gave you a little bit of stress. Stratus kind of maybe collapsed a little. Maybe. But it was the full 90, it was the full distance, it was about withstanding over on the complexity side. But yeah, let's talk about Astralis, because obviously this one's a very disappointing end to a season that hasn't been quite what they were hoping for. It's been a time of change in the Astralis camp, and that change hasn't yet given results. How are you going to call it a collapse when Sonic's giving you that big yeah. D? Yeah. That big D. Yeah, but the problem is, Jason, it's not only about that big Sonic's deal. big tool. That's not <laughs> what this is about. It's about an Astralis that comes fresh off Dallas with a very surprising performance, device being phenomenal, and all of the kind of expectations going high. And then they meet face and they win 11 rounds and the whole best of three. So you're thinking, all right, I can see the contrast. That's a bit That's a bit tough. Then you go on to complexity with a stand-in, and the only argument we have on the desk is Sonic's Deagle? Nah, I'm not buying it. No, no. I mean, look, well, I mean, if you want me to go deeper than that, Grim had a good game on over pass, Grim delivered, Floppy delivered, Fang had a great vertigo as well. They, they had the other pieces there also, but I think too, like one of the things with the Astralis camp is obviously the, ex like I think part of the excitement and part of the hype and part of the expectations were like name value. Like Astralis as an organization, the pedigree that they have a little bit, and then you have Device dropping 30 kills a map in Dallas. Like, those, those, that's I know. not gonna hold up. That's not gonna hold up. I mean, this guy's on your screen right now. It was such a contrast from what we saw in Dallas to what we got here, right? I mean, but opening not really. It's shockers. still, still disappointing loss in Dallas. A disappointing placing for Astralis in Dallas. Like they had ho much higher hopes for this for this North American run. I agree. I just think their level of play was higher in Dallas sure. than it was here. Like on, not only because device, but also their whole situation about hey, this team is finally picking up some steam. Gee, I wonder what could happen to destabilize the whole monument. How about a roster signing? <laughs> Altex, remember when you were having this very good day in Dallas, man. That was been great. But just so you know, we have your substitute. He's ready. He's putting on his shoes on. He's getting the mouse set up. I looked at the stats, and I think it's very easy to see correlations when there aren't any. But if you look at Altex's stats, mm -hmm. and you pinpoint the moment that the signing of Stair is happening, I guarantee you it's red all after that. And it must be really hard as a player yeah. to know that you're already not in a really safe space. But I got them. Give me the illusion of the idea that maybe I, I'm going to stay. You know? You're already trying to get yourself to the level of tier one competition. <laughs> that's, that's hard enough to do. It and is. that's a hard enough mental strain and mental struggle. And then it's like, oh, yeah. And then also, like, one of you, no matter what happens, one of you guys is gone. Like, have fun, play. That is rough. Yeah. And I think we saw the, the conclusion of that. We certainly did. And speaking of potential mental collapses, over on the Cloud9 side, it has been a rough road of late. It's been tough. We've yeah. seen it on their faces in pretty much every game they're playing. They are not really feeling the fire. What's the what's the next step like for the astrophysicist out there when like a, a star collapses on itself? What's Supernova? the next step after that? What's after that? Like once it's happened? White I think dwarf? it sucks up the whole White galaxy dwarf? and everyone. That's probably. <laughs> I, I was actually believing you. I was ready to follow you all it that road. I, I could be. I'm throwing it out there. I'm this just is, this flipping is a coin basically. Probably the one. step we're at now with Clone. And I feel like. The, the collapse has happened. No. We've witnessed it. So what I'm hearing is we need Matthew McConaughey to save this roster. Absolutely. <laughs> He's done it all. We need him all the time I, anyway. I actually think, like, it's funny enough, I, lo I love Cloud9 all of a sudden because I love the <laughs> interview that Naphany gave where he's just like, yeah, you know what? Because all of us from the outside are like, this has got to be a leadership change. Like, this isn't working. Naphany's not getting this team geared in the right direction. He's like, actually, I've just given my teammates too much freedom. I need to force <laughs> my own my own opinions on them as the in-game leader, which is true in a sense. It's just so completely backwards to where the conversation has been for so long. Isn't it also, uh, listen, which is he why might be, awesome. he might be right and he might be honest and genuine in his answer. Yeah. But isn't it kind of an easy way out? To just say, oh, listen, listen, listen. It's it's not my guidance. It's the lack thereof. So whenever I get control, it's going to be fine. That's why I try to poke him a little bit. Like, yeah, you might be right. But in, in a sense, as a leader, it is also your responsibility to kind of get the leash under control. And he, he didn't do that. He or hasn't doing it. He said, and to his credit, he said that as well. He's like, he's like that ultimately, regardless of whichever way you want to look at it, whichever way it's spun, it's my responsibility at the end of the day. So to his credit, he at least brought that on himself. For, I like that. Yeah, yeah.
Now, looking at our teams that have flown high here, right? We've got a couple teams that aren't going to be playing today because they've already got a spot tomorrow. I'm talking about G2 here, waiting in the semifinals. A G2 team that's recently been under the microscope, and right now, well, they're looking pretty good. Yeah, but they, they're going to break my heart one more time. Like, they've done oh, yeah. that. They you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm ready. Like, I've seen, I've seen the relationship happen. I've had my heart broken, my trust absolutely dismayed. Not again. Not again. I know what the high-level, high-class G2 can do. We've witnessed it once again. Like, we could... You you could all just get drawn to Nico, of course, and what he did on Ancient was just historical, it was beautiful to watch. But it's not just that. It's the whole G2 operation that's like, oh, heads or tail? Oh, it's heads? Well, get ready to lose 16-3 because you're not going to play this game. Yeah, but, it's, but what's about the tail? It's the ultimate problem where like the Cloud9 win looks great and you're like, oh man, G2's here. They've, 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 they've kind of figured it out, <laughs> they're looking good, and then it's like they're very close affair to Imperial where you're just like, ah, oh, god. Damn it. Like, why, why are we doing this again? We had the same in why Dallas. Why does it have to be such a roller coaster with Remember G2? Dallas as well? Like, yeah. the first few steps of Dallas, G2 lost like three rounds in three series. I'm obviously exaggerating, but they just looked like they were going to yeah. destroy everybody. And then I think and that, that's an idea. Same I was Paris. Trying, exactly. I was trying to give that to Nico. I was like, hey, is that an issue that you guys win too easily, quote unquote? And then when you have to fight, you struggle a little bit. And I mean, he didn't say I was right. So that's a possibility. But sometimes it's true. Like, when life is just so easy, then you may be caught off guard a little bit when there is a resistance against you, and, and that is sometimes the issue with G2. I will say one thing that I think is encouraging for G2 is, honestly, when we look at Hooksy, right? It felt like there was a bit of a crisis of faith going on for him into himself, and at least at this event, he's had a couple big rounds, he's had that one nutty clutch yesterday, where, you know, you get those moments, you're like, oh, yeah, that's right, I can play this game. I, I yeah, There's a reason I'm here. Also, awesome. what you're saying is all we need is no-scopes from Hooksy, and then we're good. Just yeah, do no-scopes. Take, uh, take that second button off the mouse, and he's ready to go. Now, one team that had no flaws in the group stage. I'm talking about Heroic. They ran roughshod, as they are known to do, taking care of the easy games. Now they've been giving a bunch of interviews that say, oh, we're going to be in the semifinals against an underdog. Guess our season comes to an end. And that in itself is very interesting. I I'm just going to put it out there. It's like psychologically speaking, it's so fascinating what they're doing yeah. right now. That They're trying to create this the sort G2 of a approach, joke. Yeah. They're trying to create this sort of joke like, hey, we're about to meme about it, guys. Ha ha ha, we're going to lose. I think they're trying to exercise the whole thing. And they've taken many different like directions and Kadian had word with us on interviews like we try to be serious we try not talk about it we try talking about it and then the next on the card on the menu is jokes laughter yeah if we don't fun. laugh we cry exactly so i'm wondering where what's gonna be next like if that doesn't work out to so, be fair i don't want to take anything away from the opponents they might face but there is going to be a discrepancy in that semi-final just a matter of fact heroic will be heavily favored absolutely i think the next step is they just put a chip in all of the players brains that make them think that every game is a group stage game yeah any good Bro, idea about humanity started with a chip in a brain if you're Everyone heroic can you lose either imperial or complexity in the semi-final like then, it, you think then you it's a trend. Then it's then it's that it's an issue. But lo losing in Dallas was fine. It wasn't fine. No, losing it wasn't fine was then either. Fine. But it then fine. you go and you do it again. To, <laughs> like like come on now. Then we have then we have actual multiple data points of just heartbreak and disappointment. But no. Well, uh, now it's time to look at something that wasn't heartbreaking, something that was very exciting indeed. It's, of course, our CS Money Play of the Day from yesterday. Figure out what you voted for as the Play of the Day. It's this one. Ooh. It's this one right here. It, it, That's yours? Nico is so beautiful to watch when he's having a game like this, and obviously this is a very special game, but it's just so clean. He does have good hair. You know who has good hair as well? Zaiwu with an ace. Does he? <laughs> does he have good hair? <laughs> Listen, to each his own. To each his own. <laughs> does he? I think we can, we can, improve improve we can get a, a mohawk on. I had someone in the green room tell me this was a boring ace. I'm so sorry. You have no taste in Counter-Strike. This is round 30 against Cloud9, and he gets an ace with an AK. To be fair, I was saying boring compared to this. Compared to this play here. Compared Tell to every crazy simple ace I've ever seen, it was a boring ace for sure. <laughs> yeah, this, is, uh, this, is, this gets a bit wild. We didn't know Hooksy was an opera, and we didn't know he could no-scope as well. I, like it's it's crazy. What this, is Bulls doing? I don't know. I know that, that tilted me on face of the earth in the green room. This is probably the nicest shot of all of them. The little Glock two tap on a Vinny. I like Bolts. He's like, don't worry, I'm gonna trade you. I know. Don't worry. I saw I that it. shot ring out. I, and I was it. like, all right, Bolts is swinging any second, any <laughs> second. <laughs> That's what are you doing, brother? Just go ahead, trade yeah. your. Anywho, that was good from Hooksy. We're not gonna deter anything from it. It was great. Every great play requires someone else look foolish. And well, now we'll see if you're looking a little foolish. Is we're gonna do a break and be right back in just a flash.
Welcome back here to the Blast Premier Spring Final. The Capitol Dome is looking oh so shiny, and now it's time to get into our mm. first matchup my of man. the day. That's Your man right there? That's my boy. Marble Throne. Uh, they were old college buddies. <laughs> Uh, we've got complexity here. Yeah, Look, the North American team in playoffs. It's been so long since we've had complexity in a playoffs. I am excited. I'm wearing my red, white, and blue. I'm ready to cheer for NA. Old, uh, I'm happy to see the boys here. All fence it up. I like that. A little bit of a tie action. Got to class up. We have complexity, and, and one of the reasons why we have complexity today is that they did not, as they famously do, crumble in round 30. To me, that's the story. That's the complexity that for once actually sees the opportunity. <laughs> you know, it's true. How many 14, 16 have we seen? Like, how many heartbreaks have we seen from complexity? Maybe, just maybe, little Sonic in the ranks, having a good time, being a good vibe. Maybe that's what they needed just to get over the hurdle, you know? Yeah, it, was 16. The, it was the good vibe and not just like the Deagle dominance. It was, you know, that a, does a, help a timely too. double. <laughs> yeah, that does These were two <laughs> rounds of these, but. Uh, it has been really interesting watching their team comms, though, right? Because where usually I would see some frustration, some, some eyes being a little bit downcast, I'm seeing smiles, I'm seeing laughs. Even when someone gets absolutely bopped out of the round through a smoke and you maybe expect a death pound or some frustration, it's been all smiles on their on their camp. But it's almost like, it's it's not like the dead team effect, but it is like the stand-in effect of having someone yeah. in like end of the season yeah. where it's yeah. been disappointing. Like you come into this and you have no expectations. You have a stand-in. Like things are all like it's it's taken away. Like your star opera as well. Like you don't expect to win anything. You don't expect to have that success. So it's a lot easier to just kind of flow and just play by the seat of your pants and do good things. Now, someone who might have a little insight into those expectations, we've got Mr. Maui Snake who caught up with JT and Grim about how they're feeling at this event. Looking at what you guys have done lately, it feels like. You've really only done like one big change with just getting Halzerk for Junior over the last year. So a lot of orgs, you know, they'll just be like, just spitting new people out all the time, just changing so many changes and everything. But how does it feel? Because from our perspective, complexity doesn't seem to be rushing for changes for you guys. So how does it feel being in an org that is like that? I just feel like it's the core of uh, JTTC and Foppy as well. Because I feel like even on the Cloud9 extra slot days, they rarely made roster moves. I feel like it's just like they give time to the players to actually like, adapt and learn and stuff and not just be like, all right, if he doesn't get it, let's get him out instantly. Like to give him like a chance to learn. I think that's why like the roster moves aren't happening as frequently as other teams, uh, at least from my side and looking back at their history as well. Yeah, it's also because um, we're an NA team, so there's, like, there's a lot of options. Like just like spewing out NA players over and over again, it's not gonna, like that's most of the players are very similar, or at least like uh, on a similar scale level. So it's better to just like work together and try and try and just figure out a way to win together because there isn't a lot of options in general. So. Um, I mean, we don't really make the we don't make the roster decisions ourselves, but I'm assuming that's the reason. Like, there's not a lot of NA players just to like go around. Yeah, I feel like in Europe there's like a lot of like up and comers that you could pick for like almost instantly, like off the top of your head. But um, in NA it's a lot harder to get the players that fill the same rules because I feel like the skill gap disparity is pretty pretty high compared to Europe Academy players um, to ours. Interesting perspectives there. Uh, awesome. Not a lot of Love options. Uh, very interesting. Also, because I know that TC gave an interview last night where he mentioned that if an opportunity came up to improve the team, they were going to have to consider it. How about we, we give some credit to actual genuine and true answers once mm. in a while? As in, we've just had one here in the sense like, nah, there's not really anybody else. So you know, that's why we're in together. I just Sometimes we it. just sugarcoat it. He I just know. said it as it is. I love the way he just sounded like Grim as well. Grim's like, yeah, these guys just really give chances to like the, the players they bring in. They give them a lot of time to adjust. And JT's like, yeah, that, that's all. <laughs> like, there's just nobody. Nobody's good. Like, <laughs> what do you want from us? <laughs> it's so perfect. <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's shout genuine. out to JT. It's honest, you know? yeah, it is genuine and honest. It is kind of an interesting point headed into this play break. There's like one or two names who you could see making a jump up to one of the big boy orgs. I mean, I'm looking at a guy like Swisher in particular, where, you know, you, you'd think that maybe it's about time for him to get a chance. But... It is you know, hard to see the you know much the, depth beyond that. The issue that I have with, with complexity looking forward is that I, I do believe this roster has reached the ceiling. Yeah, we've we've seen the best of complexity, which wasn't bad, but if you want to play the late runs and playoffs and high tier tournaments, you're not going to make it. Like there's Karavice was a little bit of a firework here and there, uh, but it was very scarce. The issue that I have is you bringing a new talent, a rookie, that's great. Arguably, he's going to give you some firepower, some motivation. Maybe you just find a diamond in the rough, but I feel like they need someone with experience. 
I mm. feel like they need to go the other direction, or maybe maybe a composite of both. Get someone with experience and get a new kid on the block, and then try to make something out of it. Because one of the points that we hear from them all the time is, "Hey, listen, how how do we improve? We have nobody on the team, but maybe Grim, you could argue in his stance with, with Liquid. Yeah. We have nobody that can help us like deal better with these situations, learn how to do this better. We have to do it ourselves. How about just some experience being dropped in?" Maniac, if I wasn't mistaken, I think you were always Who? talking about Me? someone who's on the <laughs> other side of that stage. Well, no, I'm thinking there's another guy who's been very publicly mulling his next step and what continent he'd like to be in uh, and what team he might end up with. That's Papa Fallen, I'm assuming. Yeah. You're, not so, you're not sending Fallen. Fallen to complexity, are you? I mean, yeah. look, I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> you, you worried me for half a second here. <laughs> well, uh, it is an interesting thought to think, though. I mean, wh what direction do you feel they could go? Uh, well, we'll find out what they think, because we've got uh, Banks standing by with Floppy. Ooh. Floppy, we've got complexity versus Imperial. It's certainly a matchup that we've come to know and love. But I want to start by looking at your individual performance. Right now, you're playing above what we've seen in recent times. So what do you put that down to? Uh, I think I'm finally just shooting my gun and it feels great. Uh, I mean, I think it's a little bit different with Sonic on the team, but I don't really know. I feel like I'm not really doing anything too different. It just feels like the, the stars are aligning in certain games. I think Johnny's calling has been pretty good for this event as well, just kind of setting me up for success. So I have to give it to them. Nice, all right, so passing it on and saying that it's other people's success, but you are the one hitting it. Now, against the Astralis game, right, this was a 14-8 on the last map. It looks like you guys are going to clean and take it over the line. But what impressed me is that you guys stayed mentally strong throughout this. Can you talk me what those rounds were like at the end? Yeah, I mean, it's not the first time we almost choked the 14-8 lead on overpass, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we're, we kept uh, staying in it. Um, I'm proud of the guys for that as well, just mentally being there and uh, making sure we're, like, ready for whatever's happening in each round. Like, it's obviously really hectic against a team like that, um, as we saw. So I'm just proud of the guys for staying in it. And how much of that mentality and just the positivity is Sonic bringing team? Because he's always just seems smiling and happy, man, no matter what's going on. I don't know what this guy's doing, but uh, <laughs> this guy's just hitting shots like crazy. Like, I'm, I'm at B, and this guy's at A by himself with a deagle just killing one or two. So I don't know what he's doing, but it's crazy. It's definitely working out. Now, in the Imperial Complexity game, it's always overpass. Sometimes in the past, it's been a decider. Sometimes you picked into it where you got the 2-0 last time. What is it within this game that makes it so wild and so close between you two? And do you even need to prepare for it? Is it just like reading and feeling off each other? Uh, no, it's just another day at the office against Imperial. Uh, I'm not even sure what the veto is exactly yet, but uh, yeah, I mean, it could be overpass. So we'll see what happens. It's probably going to be, end up being overpass because I don't know, it's just them, but just another day at work. <laughs> Another win? We'll see. <laughs> Where's the confidence, Floppy? I don't know. Against this team, dude, anything could happen. <laughs> anything could happen, and anything's been happening with this guy. Business school man himself, Aaron Husbeek. And he's been crushing it. Last night, I mean, he schooled device. Who's, who needs degrees when you're hitting shots like that? Just drop out, man. Oh, yeah, that's true. Maybe yeah. that's your path. Counter-Strike is right there. Look, the numbers that we have here obviously are crazy. The fact that he put device in the box, that in itself is insane. His rating isn't marvelous, but, and I will give it to Jason right there, the emotional impact of the deagle rounds he had with complexity yeah. in that game versus Astralis are what puts you over the line. It's when you start getting that little second, like, drop of doubts is creeping in your brain, like, oh my god, we're gonna let it go, pam, pam! And, uh, oh, no, actually, no, we're not gonna let it go. Even the conversation with Floppy is like, how'd you guys stand? And it's like, in my head, I'm just like, they didn't. They were getting wrecked. <laughs> like, Glaive yeah. had their number entirely, and then, oh, Sonic gets two deagle shots in the A-bomb site, and then, oh, like, yep. three rounds later again, they're knocked out of it, and Sonic pushes up and gets two deagle shots over at Picnic, and it's like, yep, that's that'll do it. That'll do it right there. And I mean, looking at the matchup between these two teams, they almost feel like faded rivals. Like, I feel like I should be a Soul Calibur announcer or something. A tale of swords and souls and destiny. Soul Calibur was a game and a half. It yeah. was indeed. Every single time these guys match up, it's like the most important match they've had in months. Yeah, they've, they've ruined each other's dreams in multiple instances. And I know we're looking at a potential dead team, one that's looking for make changes, so maybe the, the pressure and attention isn't as high. But historically, there have been so many crossroads for these two teams. We're talking about Imperial kicking complexity out of the running for Rio, and then complexity kind of answering that with Paris. <laughs> we're talking about Imperial doing it in the showdown. They're always here. important games. It's never just like yeah, a exactly. casual group no. stage game it's like elimination major it's like you Last and i premier. we're gonna <laughs> decide time, what's gonna happen time over it's time. crazy and this is why like the setup that we have today is kind of out of this ordinary because usually when they clash it's the highest most pressure moment ever and some of the numbers that we have here have caught my eye and particularly rather the fact that grim isn't exactly playing yeah. his best against imperial and he's always the player that i'm looking towards when it comes to complexity it 
and the most consistent. Well, I mean, JT has a little bit of a jump up, but Halzerk being the one who kind of keeps that level yep. and not here. I mean, it's also a really interesting connection because I know he and Fallen are actually quite close. They're always talking together before games, after games, when they're playing each other. And over on that other side, I mean, Fallen's the guy who all the eyes are on right now. We already touched on it a little bit, but he's looking like he's going to be on the move. And this project has been built on his shoulders. Do I have the right to be a little upset with Imperial? Like, why do we get the best of Imperial now? Like, when was that before? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I hate this. It looked it looked so promising, <laughs> you know? They had this last then, and then they say, oh, hold on a second. It's not going to work out. We're going to be competitive. We're going to grab Cello and Joda. Great signings. Great signings. Powerful players. Yeah. And then it just doesn't come to fruition. And now that Fallen has said, well, you know what, guys? It's been great, but I I'm going to move on. Everybody is just playing their best. Vini is popping off. What, what it's was so it annoying. before? It's so annoying. Because this is how the teams, there's, there's teams who have had this trend as well in the past. But it's just like it's like they, they once once that kind of realization hits that someone might be leaving, the team might be going down. All that like you stop trying to fix things. You stop trying to think about like all the details that everyone wants, and you're just like you just actually play the game, which is wonderful. It is indeed. And one guy who was really playing the game yesterday, uh, Banks, catching up with Vinny. This to me, Vinny, is Imperial's real last dance, given what we know about Fall and stuff. But we're seeing you guys play better than you've ever played before. So why is that? Uh, it's a mix of things. I would say less pressure in us, but nothing's is done yet. We're just improving, I think. And like we had uh, six months with this thing, to be honest. So I think we are just clicking now how do we want to play, and everyone is just stepping up. And given what you do know about Fall and looking at other offers and, and what happens with the rest of this team, what does that change for you guys? What's the mentality like? Has there been different atmosphere, mood in the team? I think we're like happy overall and we're just trying to do our best here we know that we have possibility to upset some teams that we already did uh, we had a close uh, game yesterday so we are really confident that we can go really far in this tournament and it definitely looks like you can go because like i said it seems like you're playing better cs than we've seen before but looking at this complexity game it's always close between you two they beat you 2-0 last time but still close score lines what kind of a difference do you think sonic's making when you guys have looked at preparing for them mm, i think they're going to be a um, more buggy, like more freestyle, because they don't have all the interactions and stress they want to do. So it's, it's going to be like a, a really shit show game because it's going to be just like who, who shoots better. Is there, like we can play close against G2, close against Vitality, but against Complex is just bizarre. Everything can go in, anywhere. So preparation out the window and then whatever happens, happens? Yeah, exactly. Just shoots better. <laughs> The funny thing is, uh, that man right there, Vinny, he's been playing against the players on Complexity for a lot longer than any of his teammates. They've been uh, sort of on the come up at the same time of when he came to the U.S. with Furia, when they were playing with rosters like Singularity, and now, uh, once again, a duel for the semifinals. A massive matchup, and we've got the veto in front of us here. Yeah, I mean, uh, Vertigo is an interesting one. Like yesterday when, when Complexity brought that out, I was like, oh, you guys haven't really played this, so a little bit of a curveball obviously went well. Obviously feeling confident on it, mm. but we did get that overpass. That's it's the, the first one. time. Yeah, overpass could be a given to Imperial. It's the first time Complexity play Vertigo against Imperial, so we're about to see what kind of success they find. Well, we'll see if it matches our predictions, because we do have our unicorn predictions Ooh. here. How we feel about what's going to be happening I ahead. I definitely no way. Imperial. That is way <laughs> I, 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 too, I, think. I think half, <laughs> uh, most of you picked Imperial. But I'll take it, whatever. Everyone, what is it that you guys forward. say here? Fake news? Fake, fake news. Fake news. Full <laughs> NA, that's right. Fake news for NA's favor. You had to have it. Complexity coming through here. United Talent Team apparently on that. And you at home as well. And now it's time to take a quick little break. And when we come back, Complexity Imperial live here in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C.
Well, here we go. The first match of the day is coming up. I'm excited for it. We've got Imperial versus Complexity. Maui, how are you feeling about this one? The odds are favoring Imperial from what we can see, but um, but what's your thoughts? Are you excited for the game? This is my favorite rivalry oh. in Tier 1 CS right now. Really? Imperial versus Complexity. It's a little bit of a hipster pick, okay. but in terms of what these teams have been fighting for when they've been facing each other consecutively, I feel like I've seen it all. I've seen... JT 1v4 on match point against Imperial at ESL Pro League. I've seen Fallen Ace against Complexity multiple times with the AWP. I've seen Floppy 1v3. I've seen Fang 1v3. I've seen a Jota 30 bomb, a Halzerk 40 bomb, a Cello 40 bomb. I've seen double overtimes. And all of those moments, they will be lost in time, like tears in the rain. It's uh, all in the past, as they say. Now it's down to who can actually do it again here, right now, today. It's going to be Imperial and Complexity. I think this would be a, quite an exciting game. I, th I thought Astralis was going to win yesterday, but you know what? Complexity had a different thing in mind, and we saw Sonic coming out swinging with the Deagle. It was so crazy, and I bet it'll be even crazier today. We're going to start off on Vertigo. So a big welcome to the show. It's Imperial going to be on the T CT side, sorry. And on the T side will be Complexity. One Molotov already put out. They have a smoke as well, but look at the pressure they're going to be putting on. And Floppy, they almost overlooked the corner, but they're going to be able to get the shot. Fallen back paddling to take down Grim. And Shudder, in the meantime, will take down JT. So three versus four. Fallen barely alive, but they're in the middle of the map. And they could try and find that sole player at the B-bomb side. It's just Cello there. He's got to do something. Got to put up some kind of fight. If Complexity overlook him, this might be a freebie for him, but nope, floppy spots him out. Great headshot from him. Cello should be falling in just a second, and now we're going to be on for a three-on-three -three post plant. What a great plant position, but Fang is going to get caught. Floppy's still fighting. Sonic's going to hit the shot as well. Fallen was so low that he just was chipped away finally, and now it's on Vinny. He played really well in the last game, but this is too much to handle. He's going to find Floppy, but there's not really any time for this. If he had a kit, it'd be very, very different. He could probably win this one, but he doesn't. It's a full 10-second oh. defuse. He just gets the headshot, but is there even going to be enough time, Vinny? I think That's so. That's yeah. crazy. A one versus two. All they had to do was hide. Look at how close it's going to be, but Vinny, he will pick it up. That is such a hard round to win. Wow, what a 1v2 from Vinny there. Look like Complexity were in a commanding position in that post plan. Great shots ringing out already. Both of these teams looking fired up. Can't really knock the mechanics on anybody in the server right now, but Vinny with that swing right there, even though Sonic had actually repositioned quite well. Nice little fist bump from Cello towards the webcam. Might have to fix that one, but <laughs> that buy is going to allow Complexity to go for a purchase of their own the bomb plant, that is. I mean, that is... Not a lot of utility, though, on complexity side. True, very true. But it's kind of still a dangerous buy, right? You're up against four MP9s, and you have Galil's and AKs coming into it. That's that's not bad. We'll see if they're going to be able to make use of it. Bolt's moving forward. Guys get flashed in. The flashbang is a great idea, and maybe with a little bit better timing, they would have had that kill instead. Goes to JT. They'll love that on the complexity side. Yeah, in, in some ways, I'm, I'm happy to see complexity trust their guns and go for a buy like this, but also with the map pick of Vertigo, this is supposed to be a punish pick. This is supposed to be feeling confident in your game plan, and if we start seeing some force wars ensue, it could get a little bit hairy for the game plan, but Fallen here with the MP9 spots a couple of players. Jota right there around the corner. There are four complexity players here, and yeah, with all those nades being dumped upon them, it's pretty tough to get into that middle position. So Sonic, he's been holding on to this lower B area. Mid-round option is up to JT. It's a dealer's choice. Cello with one more Molotov here. That's really going to slow them down. We'll see how they deal with it. We drop. Oh, they have a smoke to put it out. That's good because there's only about 22 seconds, so they need to put some speed behind this one. Jota's going to get the one, but Sonic with a double knockout to get them back in the round. And Fang will take on over. Fallen goes down. Vinny now. The flank would have been really sick if his teammates were still alive, but they're just not. They pulled the trigger on that just perfectly. 
And the fact that they have the smoke to sort of get past and make a run at it, not at all a bad little trick to have up their sleeve. Vinny gonna get caught by Floppy and Complexity. The round works just fine, even without the grenades. Excellent double kill from Sonic there on that short side approach to be able to find two. That is massive. The weapons, the firepower was in favor of complexity, but with the lack of utility, it really had to be the guns doing the talking for them. And oh, they did. They definitely did. You can see the frustration there on Zach's face, knowing how important that buy is. Yeah, for people not familiar with the econ, if you, if you win that first round and then lose the second, you're in a terrible position. It's just pistols here on the side of Imperial now. Yeah, that is... It's not where you want to be. It's where they are anyway. In spite of what the graphics said, Alex, I, I did actually pick Imperial to win this one. <laughs> you yeah, pick let's, let's set the record straight. <laughs> Again, I'm just a little bit hyped. I'm just excited to see decent Brazilian Counter-Strike coming out. So, oh, if I'm on board. Imperial have been playing fantastic CS. That has to be stated. They almost took G2 down in three maps. Yeah. That goes, that got as close as it could be, nearly. They almost took him down in two maps. I mean, yeah. True. That was, uh, it's been really special watching this Imperial team on what we see, think to be their last legs. Jota, though, wants to keep the fight up. CZ right there around the corner. And Complexity, they're going to exercise some caution. They don't want to just fly into the waiting arms of the Brazilian side. Mo good molly damage. Wow, Cello barely alive here. And Fang, yeah, he heard the ticking, and he's going to go for the spam. And he presses on forward, Fallen. Oh, wow, that's a free kill for him. That's actually a free AK retrieve. This is becoming a little bit awkward. Okay, Sonic delivers the headshot. And this is this sort of situation is not recovering for complexity. No, it's really not. That, that was a big slip up. Good shots to the smoke, though. Jota going down quite low. JT is going to be found. Oh, no. Complexity for all the work they did in the last round. This is really awkward. 17 seconds. The bomb is not planted. So Floppy, you can fake it and try and do this. Maybe you can fake it one more time, but then you have to go for it. And he's just getting overwhelmed. Death by a thousand cuts here. They're not doing a lot of damage, but they should be able to find him and he's out of time. Oh no, that is a dreadful way to lose a round. They give up the AK to fall and he gets one kill with the deal, one with the AK, and it all turns around. Unfortunate loss for complexity, but the spacing simply wasn't there. When they had five rifles and no utility on the force by round, they were so good at playing in a pack, playing off of each other. But you could see, yeah, they're sure there's a couple lucky shots like that one from Bolt through the smoke. A little bit of fortune for Imperial, but you have to say to Complexity, got to tighten it up. Make sure that offense sticks together. Oh, okay. Bobby, he was blind, but still able to get the shot off on Vinny. Not at all bad. Yeah, worth noting that Floppy was a huge reason that Complexity were able to win that map over Astralis yesterday. His B defaults were finding so much value. He was taking down Buzz regularly. I think the first three rounds after the pistol, he just found him, found him, found him. Right. And so Vinny's got a lot of work cut out for him. Floppy's actually really solid at defaulting on this side. They're going to be boosting up. Trying to see if they could find another entry. There is actually, surprisingly, a double setup at this bomb site, in spite of the fact that they already lost one player. Fallen is ready for the boot. He's dreaming about it. He's going to get the kill on Floppy. Already low and didn't want to commit to the fight. Might have thought that that spam was almost a bit of a trap, so you can see he didn't want to swing into the fight. They're going to be setting up a bit of a one-way, but that is such an obvious grenade at this point in time. It's hard to catch anyone with it. It is back into a four-on-four -four with about 45 seconds left. Well, Sonic's actually keeping two Imperial players interested towards the B side. And Complexity, they've shifted their attack towards A. It's up to Sonic to try to maintain the space, but I think Complexity have pulled the rotation that they wanted. Fallen has now moved into the back generator at B. Bolts is playing the construction towards middle. And Complexity are going to be using Sonic's forward position to give them a nice springboard into this B bomb site. They would love a smoke or a flashbang right now on that T side. The fact that, because that's such a sick pop flash you can set up, but now they just have to walk into it and they're very slow about it. I don't know about this one. I almost feel like a run boost would have been better if you don't have the grenade. Cello's gonna get the pick off there, but you can see they weren't really rushing the bomb site. They were just out for a casual stroll on a good, you know, on a Friday. It's nice. <laughs> I'm sure the weather is nice up on the 51st floor, but. The air quality has actually improved dramatically since those fires. 
Okay. Okay. But uh, you can see that just complexity, they're so unsure of this approach. I mean, there's so many angles when you're coming into B, that close left, behind quad, behind default, just a little bit of a head sometimes showing over there. And because they don't have any smokes to cut off angles, that, that's what it looks like sometimes. That's what it looks like running into a bomb site that has four I or picked, five angles. I picked Vitality for the later game because of the air quality, Maui. I'm on board with it. You might be insane, but I thought, you know what, let's just do it anyway. Bolt steady with the ace spray down. That would have been beautiful. I, 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 don't so think, I don't think it's insane to pick Vitality. Insanity is, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. No, we're looking at the results. We're looking at the air quality, and we're saying, okay, the data shows that they, he should be performing just fine. We're trusting in the science, which is what you're supposed to do. So, um, yeah, I, I appreciate it. We'll see. We'll see. It has been one of the worst events for for a minute here for Saibu so far. I mean, he's still been playing good, but but he's had some some downturns where he's been where he's been missing a little bit. Maybe especially in their first game, which was against Imperial. Yeah, didn't get the the, the usual 25 kills out of him that you'd not like to see. He takes a minute to acclimatize himself to every, his new surroundings. I'll say that. And if it's not you know moderate or better air quality, sometimes he just doesn't really get off the starting block too easily. Complexity using their first time out. Just going to remind everybody that, yeah, this the win rate for Imperial is okay on this map. It was barely defeating a Vitality on day one, where we've already prefaced this. They just weren't playing as well as we expect them to. Sure. And it was a lot of scrappy rounds, a lot of, like, barely getting out over the line for Imperial. And so when Complexity go for this map, we really haven't seen them play it too much, but yesterday they defeated Astralis in a confident fashion. It was close, but, but confident. And Complexity think that they can abuse this defense, because Imperial have historically been very weak on Vertigo. How did that... Oh, it bounced off the wall. If that had gone down, it would have hit three or four players instead. And now, Floppy, you mentioned it earlier. Good on the entry, trying to bully them on the B-bomb site. Fallen's gonna get one kill, but he gets hunted down. He was scoped up looking for a deeper swing than that. Grenade on top, HE, and then a Molotov. Is he gonna burn them out? Yeah, they're gonna have to slow that down. There is, oh, another little bit early grenade on that one. Destroying these Molotovs, I think, in too quick succession. It's not actually gonna damage anybody, so probably could have been a little bit more careful. There's still a minute left, so for complexity, this one of you, they don't mind waiting around just to make sure that this doesn't get out of control. Grim's gonna get a kill, and Bolt and Jota left. Two versus four, and I don't think it's really worth going for. Even if you have a bit of a lead here, you don't really have the money to throw these rifles away. This is one of those rounds where all complexity have to do is take their hands off the, their mouse and keyboard. Yeah. There's just no way for Imperial to get back into it. Jota already going for the save, and there's already a bit of a hunt going on. Oh, oh he's going to actually catch out Sonic there. Maybe would have wanted to go for more, but I think he's just happy with the one. Wants to just keep himself alive. Fang and Grim are really close to I, the blast zone right now. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I think 16 HP is really pushing it, but this should be far enough away for 16. Yeah. It's a good job that we're not an Ancient or <laughs> or, uh, or even Inferno. Yeah, the blast radius on those maps is punishing. But there we could see just complexity with the explosive play after the timeout. They just go for their B default. They actually push more or less through a smoke as it's fading. And clean entry from Floppy. Great pounce on top of that. Even though Fallen was there for the two-man hold on the site, it was just too much to handle. One singularly strong flash, and Complexity were all in their faces. Okay, pushing into the pocket there that was created. One of those is a T-smoke, the other one is a CT smoke. So both both players were quite happy to find in the, in the gap in between the smokes there. And it's just Fang coming out on top. Cello going down, a bit of a slower start for him, but he was such an instrumental player in their win against Vitality. Oh, and Fallen's gonna find the shot on the Sonic. That means they regain the A ramp control, which is probably the most important part of the map. Definitely. But look how close complexity already are. Vinny is throwing this smoke out, and it's a pretty good defensive smoke, but JT's already passed it, and JT can't double up. It's bolts to find two. Now Fang tagged up earlier in the round with that Exchange from Cello, not going to have too much to do here. Imperial put themselves onto five. I, I think that's a little bit unfortunate that they put Sonic there at the ramp to try to hold off a re-aggress and 
Maybe he's just not as familiar with the map. He's been a little bit out of the scene and Fallen's going for a really cheeky angle there on top of the, the railing on the higher level. Just gives him that sliver that he needed to get the better of the opposing opera. And once, once that happened, Imperial, they knew exactly what was going on. Yeah, which is why that A ramp is so critical, right? Like once you can get rid of the T's on the ramp, then there really aren't that many options left for them. So it becomes a lot more readable. Cello trying to take a couple of shots through. They got the AK on the other side on Jojo as well. Oh, they're trying to beat him down. Good shot. Cello getting traded immediately. But the spray from Jojo is even better at the moment. Fang on his own. And I don't know if there's anything much you could do at this point in time. Getting another kill or two would be great, but... <laughs> they've relocated him out. 16 help on Jojo, and they're just saying, you, you just relax in this round. You don't really need to do anything. Four people surviving on the Imperial side. This is looking like a really beautiful start for them at the moment. They're putting in real work. Imperial are showing a great face on this map. Before this tournament, there was really nothing of note to talk about with this team on, on Vertigo. But they've actually made a name for themselves. I mean, winning Vitality felt a little bit fluky. I think we all can attest to that. The way that they just won these pistol buys, these close 2v2s, winning with Tech 9 sometimes. And it felt like it was an off day for Vitality, but this is looking like a really solid defense. Cello here, fighting towards the short side, already taking JT down. I mean, he's so willing to brawl, and that's exactly what you need from an A rifler. Just pushing through a smoke sometimes, trusting your teammates' flash, yes. and finding the man advantage. I think that's Fallen exciting. did drop that off, though. That's. I think he wanted to throw the nades so badly that even though he, he kind of forgot his gun, he said, I gotta throw this flash for you, Cello. It's okay. I could see how you can, you know, sometimes you'll misplace your keys or your wallet or something, but an entire AWP is a lot to lose, you know? <laughs> you surely realize, like, wait a minute, something is up. He did really pick it up, but it, it, it turns out it's not a problem. It would have been hilarious if he'd got into a fight and he's like, why I'm clicking one and it's not drawing the weapon, what is going on? <laughs> Just one of those panic moments, even one of the mo most experienced players in the server can still happen to him. All right, slow approach though from Complexity using the standard utility to take control of the space, flash towards the short side to clear that out as well. And we've got three players from Complexity here. On the other side of the map, Floppy's looking for something on that B default still, and he actually gets it. Wow, he takes down Vinny. That's nice. Okay, he really wants to actually go for this, but his team is so far away, it's gonna be hard to connect with him. Yeah, they're probably hoping that kill is going to be a distraction, but there's still people at the bomb side. They know. Missed shot for Fallen. We're down to 17 seconds. They have to commit to it now. The bomb is here, and they can't run it back in time. Molotov to slow them down. Aichi on top. That's going to do a lot of damage to Grim. He's practically dead already, and now he's fully dead. Six seconds on the clock. At, they're just going to expire in this one. They cannot get the bomb down. Floppy's doing great work on the other side, but because of the time that was left, they couldn't really do anything with it. So it'll be another round for Imperial. They're really loving it at the moment. Complexity were too committed to A at that point. Floppy has been finding entry after entry towards B, but yeah, that's that opener right there. Cello off the back of a Jota flash, actually. And yeah, they, they tried taking that space complexity, but good counter utility being deployed from Imperial, slowing them down so much. And Floppy, even though he's bringing the bomb over, he just recognized the chance I get this down is close to nil. Fallen. He's been playing really well in this game. He's 12, make it 13 and 6 as he takes down Grimm. So using him as a weapon at outside of the bomb site, I think that's really sick. You know, Floppy's been running wild with it over here, so why not bring in your best player at the moment at least to bring him down? Flash around the corner for the boost. It is a classic setup, but they don't get what they wanted. Instead, they get a lot of grenades in return. And again, another less than perfect start here for complexity. It's been hard for them to find anything clean. Whether they're losing the pick towards a ramp, or this time Grim right above that smoke on that B default. And Jota, this is an excellent off angle. I can't imagine Sonic's going to be clearing this one. Oh, you might find a timing though. Oh no, but Bolts is still there. This almost feels like a bit of a bait. And either way, Sonic, he's not interested in that fight. Just getting peppered by all these grenades. Imperial, they've done their homework. Yeah, they have Vinny moving forward. We'll find Floppy and Fang is just so low on health. That for him to swing wide on that one, he just as well could have taken a bullet and gone down. Five versus three, and it is looking like it's going to be a eight to two round lead here for Imperial. I don't even know if there's anything much you could do. 
JT is hanging around again if you find a kill, if, if Imperial will make a mistake, but they haven't really made many mistakes in, in these scenarios when they have the lead, when they have the advantage. They're not giving them up right now. No, this is a really revitalized Imperial when it comes to Vertigo. Think about a year ago when they were playing this at PGL Antwerp. You basically had to chalk this up to an auto loss every single time they were playing it with that old I, lineup. I'll be honest. I... I didn't think about Imperial a year ago. Like, I just, for me, Imperial had become one of the most frustrating teams to watch in, in almost all of competitive Counter Strike. I just, it was so hard. It was just like, the, I, the last stand story is fine and everything, but it just, it was so soulless. Like, there was just, it just looked like a bit of a retirement home more than anything else. Yeah. It wasn't a fun time. I wasn't enjoying it at all. So maybe that's also why I'm like even more hyped up now, because I was not expecting this. I came into this tournament probably thinking, it's going to be more of the same. We're going to see Fallen look a little bit sad and dejected. You're going, yeah. to be, you're going to be talking about the good old days where Fallen was really sick, which, again, for me, Fallen is one of my favorite players of all time um, to watch. It goes all the way back to 1.6 uh, for me. So, so it just, you know, but I don't... Reminiscing about the good old days can only go on for so long. I think it's sick to see what they're doing here. Um, super unexpected, but what, here we are. What's so interesting about it also is we keep talking about the fact that this team is going to get picked apart, Imperial. The fact that everybody's looking at Fallen, if they want to get an upgrade on their roster, whether that's Furia, or whether that's maybe even a team like Pain. I mean, there's plenty of interest in him as a player. And sometimes when you, when you know that you're the hottest thing in town, you kind of relax. You let up a little bit. You know that it doesn't matter what I do here. They still want me. But Fallen's still playing his heart out. He's owning complexity right now. Yeah, he really is. He looked great versus Vitality, too. Yeah, this time he's leading from the front, though, right? Against Vitality, it was a lot of the utility work that was so impressive that really made the difference, but he's the main engine that's driving the kills through. Six-round lead. Complexity. They need to find some stability here on the T side. It'd be nice to have a round that you can actually replicate, and I think that's what they're trying to do with this A-Ramp take. If you can take the A-Ramp, even if you don't win the rest of the round, at least you have someone to build on. You can go back, do it again. You can sort of try and make that work. Ooh, spam's coming through, Fallen. He thinks of it as an opportunity. That's a two-for-one shot. They could have both been dead almost. That's scary. Sonic almost dead. If one grenade lands down here at the bottom of the ramp, Fallen put under the pressure. He can't get out. Oh, no. It goes the other way. JT instead. Good opening. He definitely overstayed his welcome. Complexity all swung knowing exactly where he was. Cello, though, wants to bring this one back. He's actually got a player right beside him in Jota, and so they're going to double up on this push. Great proactive play, but it will be punished eventually. Floppy with the double, Fang with the headshot onto Bolts, and now Vinny, if only he knew. There, there are three players with sub-20 HP, but it, it doesn't look like he's going for this. Looks like this will be a third round for Complexity. Definitely can find some damage in this round as he's going for the flank already, but not not bad from Imperial. I actually liked how active that defense was, yeah. even though they fell apart there. A lot of teams like to go for that corner swing once you lose the man advantage there at ramp just to regain some information, and they were really about 40 HP away from winning the round. They were, but here's the problem, right? So I said earlier they didn't make many mistakes. They made a big one here, and that's because they both those players swung in front of each other. Like the two CT players were basically, they automatically lined up in front of the complexity squad and just got mowed down. If not for that, I think they probably have it. They, they just, that spray from the T side was made a little bit easier. Yeah, very, very low. But it's a third round for complexity. And I think also, I guess, two mistakes, right? Fallen overstaying is welcome, and then the double up there at the ramp, not necessary, really. Oh. Fallen was so close to getting the double kill there. That tarp really absorbed the bullet's impact. They're so on top of each other there for Floppy. Yeah, that's a good point. Five round gap. Complexity need to win uh, probably two or three rounds in a row right now. They really need to build something back. Smokes are down, grenades are being exchanged, and it's cello to get blown up. Wow. That was, looked like a double nade towards the right side. Yeah. That's great stuff. Okay, JT, though, taken down as he's trying to find his approach. And Fang, great return shot. Still keeps the man advantage for complexity. And there's still a couple of players here for Imperial. Vinny's on this bomb site by himself, but Fang. He might feel pressure to push. Yeah, this is a little bit awkward for him. They're losing players, but it all comes down to Vinny. 
Set up a smoke. Flashbang on the other side. He knows he can't stay inside of it for too long. He just needs the one kill, but Floppy won't leave him alone. Floppy's on 10 kills, and so many of them have been the entries at this B bomb site. So he has done. He's done what he needed to do. Fallen and bolts. They are so far away. You can see they've already made the call not to try and go for the retake here. Gonna be a fourth round for complexity. I've talked to Floppy before about. Who's he? Who's downloads or whose demos are, are he down? Is he downloading? Geez, that was hard to say. Uh, and he always just kind of puts things so matter of factly. That's just his, his humor. He said, "Uh, well, I'm just trying to do my best Rob's impression." And like on this map, you're like, uh, "I'm just trying to be Axile." <laughs> and like, <laughs> well, if you're gonna if you're gonna learn from somebody, Axile probably is the player. Yes, ex exactly, the exactly. This is who he's resembling right now when he's playing like this 10 and 7 at least three entries towards this b bomb site sure they're not the first kill in the round but he's the one that's opening things up for him and his team and so he's putting a lot out there in terms of just the the strategic luxury of having a b defaulter like jt's feeling great right now if, if floppy can just produce a kill like this at will then you're gonna feel like that side of the map's taken care of and it's probably why complexity have put so much emphasis towards a ramp yeah, the part that hasn't been working very much is the A ramp. But hey, you can keep manufacturing that kill over on the other side. Who really cares? They have a good crack at getting back into the game. Now there's almost, well, there is no money left on Imperial. So if they win this round, it's wide open again and complexity can salvage what they have left. Fallen again with another good flick. Take down Fang. Bray coming through. So Jojo on the other side to take down Floppy to finally winning that fight. That's got to feel absolutely amazing. Yeah, so many bullets exchanged. Interesting switch up from Imperial. Yes. We'll see though if Sonic peaks Fallen. He's staying pretty disciplined about this one. And okay, the flash will set him up. Now he's posted on the angle, but Fallen, he's too wise to these tricks. Doesn't just re peak simply. And JT, okay, that's a bit fortunate. This this spam that has been, the, been going on for the last 30 seconds, seemingly, finally nets a kill. JT would love an overextension here. He's thinking about it, but he's very low on health. For him to take the fight is so scary. He's going to get the one. I guess it sets it up for Grim to at least get a return. We're down to 35 seconds here. Everything is riding on this round for complexity. If they lose this one, Imperial can go on to have an amazing first half. So they need to find a way to solve this problem. They've almost burned out Fallen. It's a good step in the right direction. Vinny now running for the smoke. And there's no one there to bodyguard Grim. Sonic, it's not really his fault. He's far away where he should be with the AWP. But they were really crossing their fingers and hoping that bomb was going to get planted. And it never did. So Imperial, they'll get through the round with three people staying alive. And that saves their economy in a massive way. That's one of those plays where if you see that smoke bloom, you know where the offer is. You're going to take that chance every day, even though obviously common Counter-Strike logic says don't just push a smoke like that. You're going to run through a gray screen. The only counter to that play is a fake tap from Grim. So good overall work from the Imperial side. The switch up that they made in the previous round, though, was to put Jota in that fight against Floppy. They, they wanted to have a different rifler test him. And this time they've got another switch up. Falling towards middle, taking down Grim and... JT, he doesn't want to press his luck. And if they had more people there and they try to hunt down Fallen on that kill, they've got the backup in Bolts who's right nearby, although that's going to get taken away. JT with a good shot. Yeah, Bolts didn't even hit a shot there. Okay, for a player that's been so stable for Imperial, his death means that this is a very manageable 4v4. Ooh, that's a good fight to win for Cello, too. Fallen's moving forward. Well, lots of landing behind, so he's got a bit oh, of space. Oh, oh there's a player realizing Sonic is right there. But if Sonic doesn't turn around, his teammates might be dead. Oh, oh what? Around. Fallen, how does he get the kill? Oh, my God, I need to see that from his point of view. That could have gone 10 different ways. JT and Floppy are now left. And he's still a two on three here. They need this round. They need every single round complexity. They're starting to fall way too far behind. There's a bit of a grenade going over just to try and set it up, but Jota's pushing for the smoke. You might not expect this. They get cello, but 
You can see Floppy is weary. He's realized we don't know for sure. And that's the problem when you don't know. There comes the spray. Joji just canceling out the round. And Imperial get another one. They are absolutely running away with this first half. Very nice play from Joto. Lying in wait there. Recognizes his timing. When to spring that trap. Yeah, we, we need to see this one again, though. I, I don't... Oh, as soon as he unscopes, he recognizes. And that's what spins Sonic around. Wow, both of those players are just reacting in that moment to the most craziest stimulus. <laughs> what? There's a guy right here too? Yeah, I, you can tell. The fact that he hit the shot is kind of amazing. He did get killed right afterwards, but we're going into the 15th round with complexity only putting four on the board. Fallen finding another opening. He's got 19 kills in this half so far. Gonna get taken out by Floppy and Shadow finding himself in a very awkward spot when you don't get that first spray down. Grim's gonna be able to drop him and a four versus three. Now they're a little bit low on the grenades, but this is a manageable round for Complexity. This feels like a must win for Complexity. Going into the half down 11-4 would feel horrible given that this was supposed to be a punish pick. This is a map that Complexity had moved away from in their pool, but it's one that they always knew they could return to. It's one that was one of their home maps back in the old days when this core lineup was first finding its way in the tier one space. And so for them to bring it out against Astralis and find a victory, to bring it out versus Imperial, it's almost like the Grim Reaper taking down every older IGL, Fall and Glaive, both falling to JT and company. Gotta make it count though. They're splitting the map right now. Bolt's gonna find one of them. If he overswung that, he would have been dead. And it doesn't even matter because George has no idea that the whole squad is there. It's not even a B split. It's just attacking the middle of the map. And it's been working out. The bomb is definitely going to get planted here. They are checking the entire bomb site to make sure that it's not a double setup. And I appreciate that for complexity. You want to make absolutely sure that you're not running into any kind of a weird trap at the end of it. We'll see. Grenade going to land on Floppy. It brings him really low, but Grim, he's the insurance policy here. He'll get the one leaving Vinny. In a very tight position. Already a little bit low on health. So are they on the other side. He's going to get the first one. He clutched the pistol. Let's see if he can clutch the last round as well. Sets up a smoke to put some pressure on. Out in the open, and JT goes down. Oh, yeah. He started it, and he ended it as well. But <laughs> they're on their feet. Golf clapping as Imperial get 11 rounds in the first half. Brilliant work. Growing up as, as a kid, uh, a pale, pale kid, I was wearing glasses as well. I've been cross-eyed my entire life. I was the perfect case to be, to be bullied in, in school. But it's funny, a picture like this, it's sort of the cliché or like stereotype sure. of a gamer. I was living the stereotype. I was sitting in my room a lot and playing yeah, yeah, computer and games. I have a, a massive scar starting from up here, going all the way down. I'd buy a hot dog, buy a, a cola, two bags of chips uh, and another. I could definitely feel that I was losing control. When you want to lose weight and when you want to change something drastically, there's always a lot of first steps. I think people sometimes need to hear that it's okay to struggle, it's okay to fail, it's okay not to be able to reach your goal instantly. I think there's certain parts of my story that everyone can relate to. The ability to go AFK, to remove myself from the gaming space just once in a while, to recharge the batteries, to feel the desire to get back in, is essential to me.
despite the fact that these two teams have met each other in 11 previous maps, it has never been Vertigo. It has been every single time Imperial's second phase ban. So Complexity say, why not? Let's see what they're afraid of. And Imperial said, well, it's you who should have been afraid. Yeah, you made your own bed, now you have to lay in it. I don't know why you say that. I don't know why you have to do that, but um, but that is apparently the saying. 11 to 4 in the first half. Imperial are looking great right now. Complexity, they need a stunning comeback, and it has to start with this pistol round right now. JT putting under pressure. That is a beautiful shot. He takes down Fallen. Floppy to follow up. JT, he's deleting them left and right. Oh, give us one more. He's hiding back here. Quad kill already, or a triple already would have been great, but see if he can hunt it down. He's going to take down Floppy at the very least, and they are just trying to overpower it. JT will get the last. Oh, a little cheeky smile, but that is beautiful Counter-Strike. Oh, my goodness. JT doing it all right there. Four kills in the round for him. Completely shutting down this A push from Imperial. Everybody's firing when it comes to these two teams. Every single time these two teams play against each other, the maps have average Anders over 30 rounds. Don't think that this one's over just yet. Don't think that an 11-4 start for Imperial means that you can count complexity out. These teams take each other the distance more times than not. It is more likely to be overtime by the metrics that we are looking at. You said it was the, the hipster pick for a good rivalry. I don't even know if I would have known necessarily that there even was a rivalry going <laughs> on. So I like that idea. I think it's kind of cool, you know? It's the American special right now. America's special, that is. The battle, which is the best America. That's it. We don't really have a great, you know, Liquid Fury rivalry right now. So this is, this is taking its place. I'm here for it. It's delivered some pretty good Counter-Strike so far. So we'll keep it up. Now, they do lose JT in this round, which is a bit awkward, right? Tech 9, Deagle, P250, and a Galil in play, and Floppy. Yeah, this is the smart play, right? The, the MP9 is not a gun to spray down three or four people on the other side at this range. So just buy some time. I'm sure eventually Grim is going to come in. He has another smoke. So this is just what it's about right now. And Imperial, we'll see if they are going to be able to set up. And attack. You can do, you know, the, the boost up. You can even double boost behind that, that board out there, and then you can just run people on the bomb site. There's Grim Smoke going down. It's gonna be real low on time by the time that that fades. Oh wow. Oh wow. Floppy wants to play around this. This is a dangerous game. Uh, could have been taken out right there, but he's gonna he's play close to the wood wall. Probably gonna get Molotov in this position. Oh, that's a miss smoke. Oh no. And that's unfortunate. There's the spray, and it's a double for Floppy. That's everything you could have wanted. A miss smoke. I thought they were going to Molotov that position forward. People usually do, and they had two Molotovs, so they could have put one there and one inside of the bomb site, but they get it wiped out floppy with the triple. Okay. I was not expecting any of that. Floppy is on a heater at this tournament. Highest rated player right now for complexity at the Blast Spring Finals. He's keeping up that good form here on a round where it was much needed. Got to stop that Imperial Force fight. And I love his swing right there. As soon as he recognizes they mess up a smoke, he swings. It, yeah. it doesn't necessarily affect his fight. It's just that in that moment of miscommunication, you know that Imperial is also going to be a little bit confused. Okay, they've actually assembled the run boost themselves, Imperial. They've got some tricks on this map but it doesn't actually net anything. JT recognizes Jota's position, and now they're dumping utility on this B area. Yeah, he needed he needed that CT side player to be one step more forward. And maybe he could have landed the headshot on him, but he just never really got into a strong enough position, unfortunately. Still, it's cool to see those run boosts come into a play more. That's the fast version of it, obviously, you could tell. By the time that he's there, bang. I don't know if I want a FAMAS in that position with a spray down, but then I'm gonna, I don't really like the FAMAS at all. Sonic, though, <laughs> get the job done. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a fair criticism of it right there. Yeah, Sonic trying to play a little bit of a bait and switch there. Unfortunately, one casualty taken, if you're thinking about Complexity's perspective, but Imperial, they're probably happy with that one. Not, not too much going for them in that round. Run boost didn't net anything, and they still get a kill. It's a rare case where you actually want the Bison. <laughs> <laughs> Against unarmed op opponents? Yeah. Why not? Four kill bonus. The one round. Oh my god! <laughs> you don't want to do that! What was he even shooting at? <laughs> he just got spooked by Fallen's head. 
That's why you keep your finger off the trigger, right? <laughs> Until you're ready. Yeah. Oh, George Ooh. and Vinny are both going down. Grim might be low on health, but not sure it really matters. Fallen just didn't even react to it. He's like, ah, oh, I'm focused on someone else. Yeah. Now, complexity, oh, sorry, Imperial, when they were on the CT side and they were in these kind of three versus fives, they were so good at not giving up the rounds, right? They didn't really overcommit to anything. They didn't overswing too much. Maybe a couple of rounds where they made some mistakes, but overall it was pretty solid. So I want to see complexity do the same here, right? You have the man lead. You don't have to do anything crazy now. Just set up some trades, wait for the bomb to go down, and then, you know, try and try and zone them out of the round like that. Fallen! Whoa! Get the flick on the fang. That was real awkward. Yeah, it's a kill for you. They're not going to know about Sonic. They wouldn't probably even suspect that he's still here. No one's looking that way, you can tell. They've completely forgot about it. And this should be round winning. There's the kill. Now you're sandwiched in. Oh, oh no. The kill on from Cello. That's a little bit interesting. Bomb's going to get planted. Oh, come on, complexity. No way. This should be their round. They do have a smoke on Floppy to try and block out Fallen's AWP. So that, sh that should be a last resort, right? They should be able to go for the smoke defuse, if nothing else. A little bit of a setup, and Cello gets the headshot, and now a wider swing. Fallen gets one more kill, and now it's on JT. He gets the first one, but that smoke's gonna fade real soon. He's got a kit, so five-second defuse. Fallen misses. He's got one more shot, and it's gonna be too late. The defuse will come through. Yeah, that was the insurance policy. The smoke defuse. You didn't want to see it come down to that, but it did work. No, you did not. It's I IGL versus IGL, and JT gets the better of Fallen at the very end, but it never should have been that close. Overlooking that short side angle leads to Fallen finding his first kill to approach towards A, and we're getting the replay of how this was a 5v3. Good flash setup, and this just became so awkward so quickly. Sonic just out wide in the open, and he got that one kill. Probably thought that his position was compromised, but still, he wanted a fight to the death, and sometimes at that point, when you're that far ahead, it's about self-preservation, so... Complexity... Might need to calm down just a little bit. They're doing a lot of things right, but those moments of transition, they're getting the better of him and fallen. He has just been the better opper in this series. By a really wide margin. 10 kills ahead of Sonic at the moment. He has also had the AWP more, so maybe that's also worth keeping in mind, but still. Give Sonic the Deagle instead. <laughs> yeah, what we saw yesterday. It was sick. Oh, really gonna win that fight as well. JT. This is... Some un well, that's gonna be a really good shot from Jota. Fair enough. I was gonna say, it's some unfortunate math for complexity. When you reveal two people at B, you know that there's almost certainly gonna have to be two people at A. And Well, you killed Sonic, but at a minimum, one at A. So there's just not that many options left for the defense. They're gonna be falling back on this one. And actually, the hunt is already in. Imperial. They know they had that last round down to a one versus one. So, some more easy math for them as they realize there's no money on the complexity side. Yeah, this yeah, is actually... Molotovs. They can actually burn this out. It's super important to try to stay alive with complexity. Oh, the flash is there. Wow, Fang with the blind shot to keep himself alive. I mean, round's already over, but you could fight next round if you're complexity if you keep these guns up. Dying means you have no shot. And it looks like they'll do just that. Okay, they've actually dissuaded Imperial. Imperial recognized that they want to stay alive with three or more, keep some money for themselves. So it's a stalemate. That's a good job, though. Yeah, that is important. Especially with the AWP alive. The early engagement, though, towards the B default there is just a little bit a little bit rough, I think, for, for complexity. They get this one kill, and JT knows that he's lost mid-control, that he wants to go for a push, take some sort of space back. And, yeah, some light frustration there from Sonic. I think Darth Mike was talking about it on the desk, the fact that the mood's just a little different when it's Sonic versus Halzerk. Halzerk wears his emotion on his sleeve. He He's pounding tables, he's shaking teammates, trying to rile them up, trying to get them into games. And Sonic is a little bit more of a level-headed presence. And even if the game is a tense moment, 15, 14, 13, 13, doesn't matter. Sonic's gonna make the same plays. He's gonna be a guy that is gonna show that he wants to impose himself mechanically onto his opponents. It got complexity and actually extra salt for that matter into trouble sometimes back when he was playing tier one seriously. 
but against Astralis, it was also a big reason why they won that game. So you got to take the good with the bad. And unfortunately for Sonic, he's just not having the best showing on map one in this series. No, it's not been the start that we've probably, I think, most people were hoping for here. And they might end up needing him, right? Floppy's playing, playing out of his mind. He's got 17 kills. He's playing really well at the moment. But he needs somebody else. And Sonic is a likely candidate to do it. JT is also playing all right. And Fang is there. So either Sonic or maybe Grim as well. Spray is just perfect for Fang on the other side. One of the big advantages of that M4A1 is how mobile you could be with it swinging in a fight like that. And that turns it into a four on five. Fallen's moving up. Sonic's got the right crosshair placement. He knows it's coming. He'll take down Fallen. That's going to feel great. That's such a weird position for Sonic. I, I think you're actually disadvantaged in terms of geometry, but Fallen is not going to expect anyone to be there. It's a weird off angle. They almost lost a five versus three like this earlier. This one needs to be a lot more clean. And from the looks of it, it will be. Jota, going to get the one kill, but... Hard to keep that fight going. Vinny's dropped on the other side of the map. It really is Floppy's domain, that B-bomb side at the moment. Fl Floppy has had Vinny's number. I would love to see the kill matrix between those two, because I think that tells a big picture about what's going on in this game. Jota not going to find anything. Floppy, after that kill, pushes on down, recognizes Jota's position, and good stuff from Ricky Camery. He really wants this high five. There it goes. Yeah, like you were saying though, Fang, Fang, good opening pick. Just swiveling around that sandbag position. And overall, this is a much cleaner round. This is almost like Imperial going for a really standard A ramp default and complexity just getting the better of them at every corner. First time I've been called for Imperial. They haven't really needed to use one, but they do now because this is a wide open game. You did warn, you said you know, on average, they, you said more than 30 rounds. There's no way that's true, right? No, on average, it's, I think it's 30.1 rounds. That can't be. It's right. unbelievable. It's because they've had a, two game, one game that went triple overtime, one game that went double overtime, and then only once ever in 11 maps did one team not get double digits. <laughs> That's actually crazy. They're, they're so evenly matched. And it's always for some big qualification. Like, twice it was for basically making it to the major. So, yeah, there's a lot of history between these two teams. Okay, big investment, though, from Imperial in this round. They call the timeout. They spend all their money. This feels like a must-win round, or the momentum will be firmly on the side of complexity. Terrible first half for them, but they've shrugged it off really quickly. And they look focused again, which is what you'd want to see out of a team that's playing in the quarterfinals, right? You want to see that kind of resolve. Good spray, though. It's JT. There must have been something showing there for Cello to get the angle right. Fang going to be falling back through the flames. That's fine. Doesn't take too much damage. But four and five to begin with. It's been a couple of rounds since Imperial have had this kind of a lead. This has been really methodical, this round from Imperial. Just taking their time. You can see that everybody's holding these angles. I I don't know if that's the right smoke don't think for so. Jota. And yeah, Fang recognizes that. Oh, Fang doubles up. No way, a triple? Fang, no. Relax. Okay, Grim. Taking down Vinny, leaves Bolt in a one versus three. That's just unwinnable. What an explosive play from Fang. Yeah, I find it's all around. He can hardly believe it. That's that's just unexpected, right? Every single player is probably thinking on the Imperial side, he's going to fall back. He's not going to keep on pushing. Fallen might have been the, the guy to get the kill, but I'm sure this third one, he, Cello's just kind of, why is he still moving forward? Why is he still <laughs> fighting us? And he's just walking forward. It's slow and sweet, like maple syrup. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Good work. Two round difference. You pointed it out. That was all of the money invested on the Imperial side. The boost on over. You can get into a deeper position here, but it's going to get checked, though. Vinny, I don't know if we need to do that. I don't think that was going to spread. That was one of the two smokes that they had, so it's a really valuable grenade to throw down. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I don't know how you get back in this round now if you're Imperial. You, you have one smoke. I will say, 
we saw a miraculous Tech 9 round just like this versus Vitality from Vinny. I think he found three kills with the weapon itself, then he found the final with the AWP. But I, it's just so hard to gain space. You use your last smoke already to try to play around the one way at the bottom of the ramp. The only saving grace is that Complexity have given them all of the room to work with. Surely, at this point, you'd be very excited to just get a bomb plant. I feel like if you can do that, then you're setting yourself up pretty nicely. They're getting a bit close. The spray is good, though, and they're going to go straight for it. A little bit scary now. They're running into the pistols. Bomb on the other side, and it will get planted. You know what? We'll take that. Would have been cool to get probably a couple of kills here. Maybe Vinny could be in charge of it, but no, Grim is going to hunt him down. He's starting to show up on the scoreboard a little bit more, Grim. Yeah, Grim. I think we were all so blown away from what he was accomplishing earlier in this year where he was by far Complexity's best player. I think it was you know, Alzer right there in second place, but you were wondering when everybody else is gonna show up. Well, we've got a tournament where Sonic is doing God's work. We've got a tournament where Floppy is finding value and impact on extremity positions. If Grim just summons up what he was able to do at IEM Katowice earlier this year, you have a Complexity team that people have to worry about. It felt like he was routinely dropping 25 plus kills. So you want to get him back to that level. Fallen with his back turned for the grenade. And Fang just moving on forward. And this is going to work. They trade two for three. And he'll take that. Vinny should be able to get this kill. Floppy, I don't know. Was he checking the corner? I guess he was. But it's a two on two now. Bolts. Dangerous off angle against Grim on the other side. But Grim is at a significant health disadvantage. He's going to be walking right into it. The spray is anything but perfect. And it leaves it into what could be a pivotal one versus one to decide this map. A lot could come down to this. Complexity have clawed their way back into this game. But if they lose here, Imperial take a big step in the right direction. And it's going to cut deep in the money. Sonic's already moved up. There's no way that Vinny could see this coming. And Sonic, if he checks it, he's going to win the fight easily. Good shot and just good proactive movement coming out. Complexity, it's another one versus one. They had one earlier with JT inside of the smoke. But they win this one as well, and it's huge. That's that's what you get for moving on forward. It felt a little bit risky for Sonic there, but yeah, this was getting real dicey. Even though there was this nice 3v2, it was actually Floppy that got a little bit over ambitious on that B side. And so Sonic in the 1v1, he just wants to keep the pressure up. There was a single theme for that round for complexity. Keep moving forward and everybody obliged. We are all tied up, but running through the flames to take the shot up on the sandbags as Cello. And that's at least going to give them another four and five. But look at this back to play, Grim and Floppy. I don't know how Bolts is realizing, but he's going to know now. And he get the spray down on the Floppy. He's already aware that there's going to be a second player there. That is huge awareness. I would love to have seen that fight from the beginning. Did Bolts see them earlier? Did they make noise? How is he checking it that early in the round? A little bit of an attempt here. Fang gonna get one. Sonic with the other, and it's right back into a three-on-three. Three. Complexity. This defense is so dynamic, and it's actually working for them. Oh, yeah, and, and Imperial know they're trapped. They're gonna have to keep watching their flank, but Vinny pressing on forward. You could see how this has really just kind of made Imperial so stringy right now. And oh, what is this from Vinny? Just pushing right through the smoke. A double kill? Oh, that is a game-breaking play. Complexity felt like they had Imperial trapped and the one gap in the defense, that one spot, that's where Vinny struck from. Just as they were turning around to check the middle, you could just, the, the timing could not have been better. There's a lot you can account for, right? Like you can, you can play around the timing, like the time that's left on the round and how many players you got left and the grenades and all, everything else. But if you get out timed, it, it, that just beats everything. That's the trump card to just take it all away, so. Going to be Imperial with 13 rounds and complexity. Again, because that other round was down to a one versus one. Some of their players are really low on health, but Sonic does have an insane bank on him right now. 9,000 interesting attempts. Not going to be enough to get the kill. Over 10,000 on Sonic at the start of this round. That might actually be what they need to keep this fight up. Yeah, Imperial, they they keep their throats, their, their foot on the throats of Complexity. Despite the massive comeback that Complexity have pulled off in this game, Imperial have never been behind. They've either been in the lead or tied this entire time, and they keep that pressure on. Complexity definitely had the momentum, 
but until you actually overtake your opponent, it's so tough to believe in that victory. But this is just what these two teams deliver when they're up against each other, Anders. This is why I've labeled it my favorite rivalry in Tier 1 CS. I, it's just constantly so much action. The games get so close, and there's always something that they're fighting for. Yeah, it's, yeah I, I'm really excited for this is how it's playing out. There's still a lot of X factors to be thrown in. I mean, I'm still, I think there's still the opportunity for Grimm to show up in a in an even bigger way. He's made up for the, the early slow start that he had, so it's not like he's really a, a liability in the team that, the way that he maybe was like five or six rounds ago. 12-13. That is a beautiful shotgun, but don't know why somebody bought it and just threw it away. Seems like a waste. This round is everything to complexity. If they lose this one, they're going to be out of money, and Imperial probably bounce directly to 15. We were promised at least 30 rounds, Maui. I feel like you promised that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's likely. Trust me. I don't want to see you going back on that now, you know? It's more likely than it isn't. Okay, complexity though. They're in control of ramp this time. They have to spring on the floppy. Oh, the flashes are so good. Yeah, floppy never had a chance there. JT still wants to hold on to some of the space though. Vinny over extends. This could be a way back in for complexity, but no, the smokes cover every possible angle. That was at least two, but was it actually a third layered flashbang against floppy? He just he was blind forever. You could yeah. hear the pops going up and down. It actually be really cool to get a replay of that, maybe from like a bird's eye view at some point. Maybe. Maybe we send Mahone on the mission to find out what was going on there. I love when Mahone's in his zone. It's Don't let him into his probably zone. Probably the best zone there is. I can't really argue with that, actually. I can't contest that statement. That or the drop zone, which is a cool Wesley Snipes movie from the 90s that nobody knows anymore. There's the red zone on NFL where they just go between games all right, so. I, all right. I knew this was just gonna be too american of a reference so i didn't want to make it but yeah, but we all agree my own zone is the it's the one for me if we had to choose one it would be that one for sure so there's one pop boom. there's a second and there's a third boom one two there's I a think fourth? fourth there's a fourth okay <laughs> come on put okay that white <laughs> It just stays white until he's dead. He's just uh, yeah, his whole face was just white the whole time. He even said, he said B stuff. He just said B stuff. They should uh, create monitors with like you oh. hiding in them so you get panned a little bit in the middle of that fight. Oh! Grim with a double spray down. Wow. Man. That was so clean. It was. This is the Grim that we need, right? This is what we want to see. You haven't seen it yet in this game. You haven't really seen the true power that he wields, but he absolutely can be a mechanical god at times. And they need some divine intervention at the moment, don't they? It's 14 to 12. They did just have enough. They saved the rifles in the previous round. Look at how they're trained on the corner. He's surely waiting for a Molotov. Anything that they can do to get him out. There is one on cello, and they're going to set it up. Smoke to buy a little bit of time, but it doesn't feel good. Second Molotov goes down on the other side, and Floppy, he's really feeling the love. I can't believe that he's alive. Cello's now walking through the middle, and this could be the... Round ending kill right here on Grim. He's stuck on through and he's gonna get the headshot on him. That's a good little crouch through. And Floppy's already low. And they know that he is somewhere back here. Maybe they don't know exactly. We'll see if they have another flash or two to get rid of him. It worked the last time and it might work again. He's actually sneaking out in the open. Has he lost his mind? He's so exposed out there. Oh, he needs help. Something needs to happen for complexity. If Floppy's on an island right here, you gotta wish for the best multi of all time, but it won't come to be. Vinny with the headshot. There's a flank, but Floppy had to stay alive. And then Fang's revealed the flank already. Taking down Cello. I don't know, this could be one though. Oh. Fang, there's the headshot. All on Jota now, and he's gonna actually give her the bomb plant. What do you do? You're trapped in here. He's gonna go for it one more time. Not getting peaked just yet. There's the wide swing, and JT will take him down. Good work on Fang. That's that the, the second shot that he got there was absolutely great. Yes, yes. The second kill was so big. Opponent already knew that he was there. It had to be the outright dual victory. And the Canadian comes up big for Complexity. Fang has actually leapfrog floppy into the top fragger position. 21 kills. What a great half for Fang. Yeah, it really is the the all, all the Americas that are playing. You got everything here. Okay, there. 
And, and a little bit of just African influence, which is so interesting that it just kind of <laughs> came together in this game. Like, th there's no African representation, practically speaking, in Tier 1 CS, but on Complexity, you got this little, they're just, they're inching their way in. Yeah, it's true. It's, it, it was there for a minute, but it kind of disappeared again. In the in the female circuit, there is a lot more of it mm -hmm. uh, from, from South Africa, but um, yeah, not so much currently in this division. 13-14. Imperial, they probably thought this was this is the home run, right? You win that uh, the, the second to last round and, and you feel like that's it. Their money's going to be low. We can see that finishing line. But they're not there yet. You look at the money on complexity. It's real tough still. One little mistake here. And it could all be over. And, and you can just feel how the game is slowing down. In, in round number 28, both of these teams, nobody wants to be the first to make a mistake. Nobody wants to be the one that dies immediately. They both have a great read of each other, and Grim sending those bullets sailing past Floppy. Not going to do anything, but might actually disguise Floppy's position, and Cello's taking a heap of damage, but oh, somehow, Bolt's got the better of Floppy. He found the headshot right around the smoke, I guess. Oh, Miss Molotov! Yep. That's supposed to be the quad molly. That's a little bit unfortunate, but Grim is still burning alive in the back, and he'll burn all the way down. Shots are able to find him. Sonic, he's going to get traded. You'd never get out of there. And they got to worry about the, the, the rifles here. Jay oh, what? One fang is on the spray. Big double. And it's a two on two. Somehow, they brought it back a little bit. Falling to pick up what? the bomb, but only for a second fang. No he way. Going. He'll end the round with a quad kill as he brings complexity right back in the game. Oh, Fang just blew Imperial up. That looked so hopeless for complexity. Everything was falling apart. The entry onto Floppy. Grim burning 100 to zero. Sonic falling as well. But it was Fang that dug them out of a round that felt like it was a huge trench. I, I need to see what happened for Imperial in that round because the initial spray for Fang was not even that great, right? It took a long time. I'm so shocked that nobody, I don't know if they were flashed or if they were just focused on the bomb plant and not worried about anything else. That could have easily been one of those, the round is one moment where you're like, that's it, like we're all good. And then suddenly the fight continues and no one's really paying attention. That looked like it, it should have been, they should have been able to trade Fang, I feel like. Let's see what happens here. So there's two people, or oh, one of them is actually completely blocked. That's, I thought he was facing all three at the same time, but yeah, what a round from Fang. <laughs> that tied up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, no team has any money. Imperial, they put everything into this one. Let's see if Fang can keep it going. Oh, this is a sick game. He's turning into a really sick game. 25 kills on him. He's overtaken everybody in the server. He's ahead of Fallen now, but Grim's going to be going down at Divini. Haven't had to say his name too much. He's at 20 kills, so he's been doing a lot. Just a few highlights, I suppose. Cello will take down JT, and yeah, they're falling left and right. This is actually a disaster. This could be a heartbreaking moment for Complexity, where they end up losing 16-14 because they don't have the money. Oh, it's never easy versus Imperial. Always oh, gonna hold their nerve to the bitter end. Jota still trying to hold on to this spot. Sonic, oh, not peeking that outright, and Jota takes everything away. Just after a miraculous Fang round, Imperial dice and piece apart Complexity's entire defense. That wasn't even competitive for a moment. That that boost to look over like that is is a really cool boost, but it's even better because the smoke that's down on that CT side is one that Complexity have been trying to play around so much that you probably feel like they're going to do something. Like, even if they don't walk all the way up, they're probably going to at least take a peek around it. So here we go in the middle, Floppy. That's the start. Oh. You want overtime. We were promised oh. overtime. I think he's going to get blindsided. Yeah, flashing Oh, through. what? Sure, it goes down. That flash is so good. JT set it up, and he's going to go down after what Stello sprays down. Floppy, and that means they get the bomb back. Fallen, covering the run for the middle, taking down Sonic. They're a little bit worried that someone's here. We can tell that nobody is, but you have his respect this from Imperial, right? This round almost lost to them. The flash through the smoke down there. Stroke of genius for JT, but it might not have been enough. Grim and Fang.
I don't know. He's got the deagle, Maui. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to mid-round this, though, if you're Imperial. If you're Fallen, you think that there's a great opportunity to get to that A bomb site, or at least slow down, and you'll thin the numbers out for complexity. It looks like Fang wants to be that point man, though. Yeah, he wants to be the hero. He's done it a couple of times already. He's got the deagle in play. They're walking around the corner. He sees one. He knows the coming, but misses the first shot. And I think that was the last chance that they had. Running for the flames is Grim trying to get there before the bomb is down, and he's going to get traded out as well. Bolts to get the last kill, and Imperial to pick up a map that they haven't almost ever played against Complexity, and they end up winning it. That is a shocking way to start this series. We'll see if we can continue with the second map that's coming up after the break. At three or four like kind of guides like really experienced people in this area because it could be kind of, kind of dangerous. So the first thing we were gonna find with the GPS tracker was like was a tent. So we were like, oh, we're gonna sleep outside and it was, it's like minus 20 degrees. They eventually told us that we'd have to go back to the cottage to sleep because there was gonna be a storm and they did and they were gonna it was gonna be very dangerous to be outside. So they were like, okay, maybe it's gonna be a little bit too hard on these guys. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. So and, and that was like day one. And then the second day we went on to we were supposed to go on another hike, uh, find new objectives, and we would have a map that we had to look through. You know, it's all about task where you had to communicate and guide through. You're talking about one of those paper maps that we don't use anymore, right? Yeah, it was. You keep up in the windshield yeah. in the nineties. Uh, oh, that's actually a funny story. I don't know if I should, I, I don't know if it's just, it's only on me, so. Perfect. <sighs> okay, I f I'll share. Let's go. Maybe two weeks prior, I, I destroyed my phone. So I had just gotten a new phone. It was the, new, the newest iPhone at the time. Yeah, you know, I, I was on my phone and I had to pee, so, and, and, and you know, you see, you, you have the toilet, as, like right here, and then you'd have like a window up here, a little bit curved, you know? So you can see the bears coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a little bit, I was just like, I put my phone up there. All of a sudden, I hear someone, you know, like tries to, and it's, it's Sonic, you know? I panic that I thought that Maybe I didn't lock the door. Oh yeah. So I'm standing here. My phone is up here. Yeah. I hit my phone with my elbow as the phone goes <laughs> <laughs> into the toilet. So my phone is lying in the toilet with my own pee in it. Yeah. So I just immediately like <laughs> get my hand inside the toilet, realizing that the phone has gotten stuck because you know the, the toilet is like on the curve. On the curve, so it's like in between. I'm just like trying to get that goddamn phone out. I finally get the phone out and I look at it, it's fine, it's working. I had pee all over my hands in my phone and oh my God, it was horrible. <laughs> Sonny kind of also panicked because he heard from, from, from outside the door. A lot of things happened and he was like, oh, what did I do? And, and he didn't know it was me in there. Yeah. And then he said, uh, hello? I was like, hi, oh, it's just me, Danny. It's just me, Danny. <laughs> he said, are you okay? Yeah, I just dropped my phone in the toilet. There's pee everywhere. Oh. Pants on your ankles, lying on the floor. Yeah, it was horrible. Phone it stuck was, in the toilet. It was horrible. And when I went back to the room to tell the guys that, that what I did, uh, that was a horrible thing. Wow. I, uh, I, it's actually, it's, it's right here. This is the phone. The same phone. This is the phone. So Thanks, I'll make sure if you, never to touch you, that. But yeah, still remember it, got that sense. <laughs> Beautiful. That Vinny all smiles on the server, but he's a bad man with a gun in his hand. Uh, Imperial crush complexity on their map pick, but it's 16-14 again. It's just a little bit of a heartbreaker.
A classic. Yeah, yeah definitely doubts and regrets on the side of complexity. Um, Imperial have followed the, uh, the Vitality recipe, a very strong first half, and then allowing <laughs> their opponent to come back just to say, psych! And round 30 is for us, 16-14. They had a couple of great individual step up. We had a moment with the mic up moment on Vinny. That was not his only clutch. He had another one of these 1v2s that he kind of pulled out of nowhere, and that was one of the reasons why they won it. Imperial did their best, man. They, they really they really threw everything in the kitchen sink at that A ramp. They really wanted that A ramp for like, make the, it work. the first like 10 rounds. They're like, we'll try like six different ways to make it work. And it, none of it worked. <laughs> none of it worked. I mean, over on the other side, Fang, right? I mean, that guy had some really big moments. We almost thought he was going to deliver them the map, that, that 4K, to bring them to 14 He's to 14. But it, He's actually part of the reason those A-Ramp plays didn't work. Him and Grim getting like aggressive down scaffolding, like you know pushing and swinging and taking fights on the CT side were massive. It was, and also it was great because he was one of the pieces that we saw in their vertigo. And remember, we have like a small sample size because it's only the third time in the last three months that Complexity's played this map. Is like Fang on the T side. Those entries on A-Ramp yesterday were awesome against Astralis. He was one of the big reasons why they won the map today. A little bit more muted on the T side, but his defensive side was absolutely spectacular. Fang was all over the place. He had moments where he he turned situations around. Yeah. alone, like single-handedly. And uh -huh. I really like the fact that he sometimes threw to caution to the wind and said, you know what, screw this. Like, I'm going to cross that smoke right now. We're in a bad position. We're in a 4v5. We're in a 3v4. That right here is another great example. That's yeah. the 4K you was mentioning. At some point in these games, if you just follow Counter-Strike's rule to a T, you will lose. Because the numbers and the logic says the 5v4 into a 3v, 4v3 into a 3v2, and then you lose. Fang just said, none of these rules matter. Like, I'm going to take a duel. I win my duel. I'm going to take another one. And just maybe another one. And then he was the instructor of some of these rounds, that complexity kind of stole away from Imperial. And as a progression of his career, it's really cool to see him like make those aggressive decisions, right? Because the skill's always been there. Some of the decision making and positioning have sometimes lacked, but it's awesome to see him now recognizing if I don't make a play right yeah. now, this round's done. Like and taking that taking that mantle and actually making it happen. He actually ends up tied with Fallen for for frags on the server at the end of the day. It's crazy as well because Fallen was holding court, especially in that first half. I felt oh, like yeah. that up was just not doing a whole lot of missing. Yeah, he was putting down Zonic. Uh, Zonic. Zonic. Zonic is a different player. Sonic a couple times, a great from Fallen as well. I would say Complexity maybe at times made his life relatively comfortable. We have a couple of these examples here where he's just basically cross placement, but he was very good. He was very mobile. You see, we go from A ramp to a B stairs. Now he's putting it into a shulker as well with the AWP. It was a great Fallen, which we don't necessarily have seen too, too much at this event so far. But something that remains is... <laughs> he's been blinded any of these. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> no I, I, I'm screen. telling you, it was like cross placement. <laughs> like good positions to be in. But I just like the way he called towards the end. Like that's once again yeah. a fallen where the experience really shines through. Like it's 14 14, and th the, from 14 to 16, the rounds look so in control from Imperial. And, and so I, in control. And from experience of just standing behind him while he's while he's leading and calling things as well, like he has such a calming demeanor and presence as an in-game leader too. Like he's not stressed when it's 15 14, when it's 14 14. He's not worried. Every, every call, it sounds exactly the same call you'd get out of him in like around five as well. And now looking towards the future, right? We're going to be heading to our second map, and this is the map that everyone's been excited about in this matchup. This is Overpass. We always get it in the game between Imperial and Complexity, and it always delivers, usually, to the maximum number of potential rounds, and then some. I need... I have no reason to think it's going to be any different this time. I think we're barreling <laughs> towards another one of you these You signing 30. us in for, like, double overtime? I am so ready, but I'm sure we have someone a bit more clever than us to take us to that, right? We do indeed. We've got Mahone standing aside in the Mahone zone, ready to get us ready. Zone. Bro, overpass. That's right. So, uh, what I have today is actually uh, what we normally see with these two teams is that they play against each other a lot on overpass. And when two teams play against each other, actually a separate meta starts to develop. And that's because they start adapting to each other. So, what I want to actually talk about is this here, where what we're going to see is two matches. So, this first one comes from the Spring Showdown. And what you'll want to pay attention to is this short pipe. So typically with the short pipe Molotov, teams throw this basically every round. But what's interesting about what Imperial does is that how they actually deal with the player who smokes this Molotov. Floppy here in this round, he smokes this Molotov. And what Imperial do to counter this because of smoke will actually... Oh, it looks like my, free, my screen is freezing a little bit. What normally happens is that when you smoke this Molotov, an avenue gets created here towards short. What Imperial like to do is they like to nade this when that smoke comes out. So what this does is it basically acts as a way to punish the T's when they come out. You'll see that Fallen right here. When the smoke comes through, that's when the nade comes through and it's meant to punish them. So Complexity in this first game at the Spring Showdown, they were dealing with this the entire time. Now take a look at what happened at the Paris RMR instead. Now at the Paris RMR, 14-12, take a look at what Fang does. 
instead of smoking the Molotov, he just runs through the Molotov all the way straight through. And what that does is it actually counters this play because if you look at Fallen right here in the corner, he's lining up a nade. He's getting ready for that smoke extinguish. You'll see right here, he's waiting for that smoke. He doesn't hear it. And as a result, it actually allows Fang to come all the way up towards short and puts him in a position where he can actually catch him off guard. You'll see as soon as this Molotov extinguishes or rather fades, he moves in all the way to the left side where Fallen, he's still jump spawning because he didn't realize that Fang actually made his way all the way through. That's what allows Grim to then follow up to find bolts on the right side and then Floppy to come through this monster smoke to find the next kill. So it's this small little detail that actually allows Complexity to open up the site and it's really just based on that short pipe. If they smoke the Molotov, what do you do? You just decide to, okay, we're not going to smoke the Molotov this time. We'll just run all the way through and then catch an opening like that. So this separate meta is really what is difficult. Well, a zippy zone from the Mahone. And it actually builds nicely on the point that you were making, Matthew, that Fang sometimes is the guy to maybe counter the expectation, maybe take that bold step, throw the logic out the window, and, and make a play happen. Yeah, yeah give him that short pipe. Give him the short pipe. Indeed. Yeah. That's uh, Jason Moses O'Toole. 2023. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> now listen, Mahone did a really good job of analyzing all of that. I think we have to come down to the numbers. You, you like the law of series, you like a little bit of numbers in there. Listen, in Rio, for Rio, Imperial win overpass. In Pro League, Complexity win overpass. At the showdown, Imperial win overpass. For Paris, Complexity win overpass. You see the pattern I'm going for here? Ooh. It's the numbers. So you, cannot defeat, you cannot defeat the universe. Imperial's winning out. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, well, we'll numbers. send the segment just on us off right there. I think we're That's good to it. go, yeah. Jason, you ready for that one? You, you agree here? You want to fight the universe? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> uh, I, I, have, I have Imperial winning the series, and I mean, I don't know if I necessarily would have thought it would have been 2 0. I think I had in my head, like when I saw the map veto complexity taking Vertigo, obviously that didn't happen, but I, but I think Imperial, um, just the way they're playing and Fallen having a really good game, if that continues on Overpass, and, and we're not seeing that kind of crazy Sonic that we saw yesterday, not seeing that crazy Grim we saw yesterday. So, yeah, I think Imperial got the edge in this one. Well, if you want to get involved in picking the map for tomorrow's show match, you can head on over to Blast.TV. Maybe you want to see some more overpass. Maybe not. Maybe you want to take us somewhere weird. Trust. Oh, we'll see what we're going to get. But you can influence it. Find out what we're going to be playing on. So head on over to Blast.TV. And we're going to head on into the server after this short break.
Well, here we go. Second map is going to be coming up. We are going to be on overpass. I'm excited for this one. The odds have switched towards Imperial. I think that makes sense. They did win uh, a map that probably most people weren't expecting them to win in, but still in a, in a grueling fashion, right? It took everything out of them, really. It definitely did. Uh, Imperial are showing that they're actually a pretty strong Vertigo team. Now consecutive wins over Vitality and Complexity, but that's the history. That's the old news. What I want to know is what's going on now. I want to get into Overpass because every time these two teams play against each other, it's just fireworks. I've seen double OTs, triple OTs. I've seen 1v4s. It's just insanity. When these two teams play against each other in Overpass, they have so much familiarity that Mahone has to go into two separate demos, make it three. It could have been four demos and how they build off of each other and their previous games, their previous engagements to play off of each other. They know each other better than they know themselves. Yeah, that's that's the makings of a really, really cool game. We're going to see Complexity start on the CT side, Imperial on the T side. Now we are off to the races here as Floppy will outright delete Chalos. So good night and sends him packing. That's pretty sick. And that's a bit of a warning, a shot across the bow from Complexity saying this is going to be different. We almost had you on Vertigo. It could have just as well been 16-14 the other way. But Imperial managed to just sneak one over on them and we'll see if Complexity can change their fates a little bit here. Secretly a sick game, this one. I mean, it's, it already was. The first map was great. This one could be even better. Out on long with the rest of them, you could see Bolts, I think, holding way outside of the B-bomb site, which is, which is fine, but I mean, he's not going to be part of the main thrust of this, and he doesn't have any grenades. He can't even fake out a B-hit. So if they get a sense of what's happening, if they, and they will now, that jump will probably say, okay, well, let's at least draw one or two people back. The utility indicates that they're just going for this full on A hit. All right, there it is in bolts. I mean, that's a guy you're gonna have to keep your eye on. This is looking like it's gonna shape up into a pretty typical post plant though. Oh no, wait, did they have to plant back default? It, they're not even planting at all right now. They're just pushing forward, but Floppy sees it. Finds another headshot, and now they're just gonna try and run it down. That's a third one on Floppy. He's absolutely wrecking them. If they had the bomb plant, then this, this flank, but now they're bringing the bomb back instead, and bolts is in the corner. Now tell me this, Maui, how much can you do with a Glock in this tight corner? How many kills can you realistically get before somebody spins around and shoots you in the face? And they also need the bomb to actually go down, which that's going to happen. Vinny, able to plant the bomb. And Sonic, he is worried. He does look like someone who's thinking, this is a bit weird. He's going to go to check it, and that's a huge check. Vinny going to get overrun here. There's no way out of this one. Grim to get the last kill. Huge check. I mean, Floppy doing the majority of the work, but if Sonic misses that one, man, it could be an awkward round. And that plan from Imperial was frankly a little bit strange to go all in from the long play, triple long hit. I think this kill from Floppy actually might have changed the entire outlook of the round. If Cello was able to play this round out, if he was able to actually make his way through the bathrooms, you would have felt afforded that space to plant simply at default and then go for a more standard post plant with bolts on the flank. But right. because their numbers are already thin, Imperial, they just put their entire effort, all of their forces in that long hit. And then you felt like you had to push into bank and that's where complexity was waiting. So nice start for complexity in this one, winning out the pistol, but there's still a force buy off of that bomb plant. Yes, there is with the scout on Fallen. Sonic gotta be careful here if you open up that door. Yeah, warning shot sent out, letting him know. But they're back to long again. 3-1-1 type setup here. And again, this long position, I mean, you saw it in the pistol round. Once you get the jump spot in, and there we go. They're going to know, and they know way ahead of time. They can smoke it off. There might be a gap here, but... What do you do with this position? The, the power of it would be if you could sneak all the way down long. That's sick. But as soon as you get spotted, it's just a bit awkward. Yeah, single smoke left. Fallen wielding all of the utility for Imperial. And that flash is going to help Complexity acquire a bit of information. JT wants to keep it up, though. Cello's already at Divider, and I think the win condition in this one is just fragging out if you're Imperial. You just got to get onto this bomb site and just blow them up. Can he get... No, there's no flashbangs. He's just moving forward on his own. Solo mission for JT. That's actually massively risky. Normally, when you do this, you have someone in, this, in CT spawn that can throw a grenade for you. There is a weird team kill that happens after the fact. I don't even know how. Flash around the corner and Cello and Jota coming right back into it. 
Complexity with a great start in terms of kills to the round, but now they're falling a little bit flat, and it's so awkward. What a play there. Falling gets the kill, but it's really Cello that's doing most of the work on that one in keeping him out in the open, making sure that Fang could not escape. And now it's just Grim. I think he's realizing there's no way I can take this one. That's a really, really good Counter-Strike from Cello. Yeah, good flash setup to find the player at the corner at long. And Imperial, they had barely any utility left, but they placed every nade perfectly. This is what we were complimenting Fallen on when he was playing against Vitality. Just the fact that so many of the kills were flash assists from Fallen. So many of the executes were rather strong in that they were displacing those defending CTs. And we could see the discomfort when Fang there was back truck. He got mollied out of that spot. And there was that player that was trying to fight him there at that headshot angle. And instead of going for the full commit, he waited for his teammates. Just good fundamentals, even in those stressful positions where Fang could have multi-fragged them back to win the round with some X-Factor kill. It was actually just overall great teamwork from Imperial. Yeah, this, the player to Fallen's left right there just tucking. Yeah, I think that might have been Jotra, actually, who was, uh, was in the air, but that's really sick. Yeah, team kill down below at the B-bomb side. A bit unfortunate, but I guess Grim just, yeah, thought, thought he had to. Kind of tied the game really early on. Put complexity on pistols, which, if you watch the other game against Astralis, could still be dangerous. Ooh. Grim's going to go for the wide swing. That's the only rifle they have saved from the previous run. And he's going to find the kill on Cello. That's really nice, and it's very needed from Complexity. You can see that they're working with scraps. Gun already being tossed out of the map. And Bolts somehow taking down Floppy. I, I, wow, he just stuck onto this bomb site and saying, yeah, he wants to push through that molly, but it, so much damage inflicted. That's probably the round right there. I, I don't see how Complexity gets back into this one. Bolts, another strong lurk. That's going to be someone we have to keep our eye on in this game if he's just going to keep on pressuring those b defenders he was pretty quiet on vertigo but i would have said coming into this tournament that bolts would have likely ended up the highest rated player for imperial Man, it's not a bad bet really and he certainly ducked him out of that round so sonic probably is thinking about the weapon out here but as we saw earlier it's already been thrown away so there's nothing really to find george are going to Think about it. Oh, we missed the timing. It's shot in the face. Sonic returns with a deal. He's not gonna... There's no weapon on the ground, but he steals one. Takes it away. And it's something to play with. That's not bad at all. You don't feel too bad if your complexity there. Definitely would have wanted to keep up the force by wars in terms of round for round, tit for tat. But once Bolt's found all of that space towards B, it was pretty much lights out at that point. Yeah, Fang with a desperate attempt to even things up, but Bolts was already well in position. Smoke towards Monster early on. Sometimes running through the Molotov like that is actually a, not a bad idea because some players will almost by instinct treat the Molotov like it's a wall or something. <laughs> you know, and you, just, you throw it and you forget about it, and that could be a big mistake. Ooh, yeah. Well, we talked about this boost. Grim knows. He's already seen the back of his heel. And Bolts is going to go straight down. But that's what Mahomes was talking about, right? That walkthrough with almost no sign of warning. If they missed that timing by a second, then Bolts is going to be able to knock them out in that bomb site. Still, they get two kills in return on Sonic and Fang. We can already see this game is unfolding in a really interesting way. I mean, Bolts just going for that singular push by himself. It feels like he knows what the complexity defense is going to be, or at least he has some really strong idea. Because if you're usually the B lurker, you don't need to do that. You don't need nope. to just walk into the bomb site. But yeah, and take roll the dice. dice. Yeah. They're going to know now, but if you're JT, sure. If you turn the corner and get a straight headshot here, there's something to play for, but they're going to get grenaded out. Bombs getting planted, and the weapons, again, they're too valuable. You can't get give them up so easily. So 3-1 to one lead for Imperial. This is starting out really well for them. They don't even have that many kills, really, for, for this being, you know, four rounds down. There's not that much on the board, because there's been a, a fair, fair bit of saving. And this will be another round. Grim still zero deaths, despite being down 1-3. to three. Yeah, this game, I mean, it's it's starting to feel really nice for Imperial. We got to see if Complexity can shoot back in the upcoming gun round because it's no more four spies, no more scrappy weapons, no more junk. 
being taken into the next round. It's going to be the real deal. Although, unfortunately, Sonic doesn't have enough money for an op. That's a bit concerning. Yeah, you would want to see, see him pick that weapon up right away. Obviously, he got massively outdueled by Fallen over on Vertigo. We saw yesterday what he could do with the weapon, though. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. I think two of the players there on Complexity also have zero kills. So just not a lot happening at the start of it, in spite of the fact that, again, it's a 3-1 to one scoreline. Slightly slower start with it. Again, you could probably credit to the fact that they know each other so well. Bolts. Oh, the boost up, and this time it works. Gonna take down Bolts at the start of it. Good work. JT on the board. But this is... Still, not the worst position for Imperial. They know that water is clear. They know that they have connector control. And so, what they lack in terms of manpower, they actually may have in terms of information. Double setup on Long, though. If they lose this fight at Long, it, it's again going to be a wide open round. Oh, a run boost is a very slow what? run boost, but somehow they still get the shot on Fang. That is going to be one of the weakest run boosts I've seen, but it still works. <laughs> it was so limp. It really was. It was so slow. Got to oh. go back in the gym and lift a lot heavier if you want to throw your teammates like that. Vinny's thinking about it, but Grimace in the corner. He can still win this round. He can still do it. The oh. flashbang is amazing, but it doesn't matter. Grimace there to get the kill. They spin around for it, and he picks up one more. Palm is on the ground, and Grimace just solved the puzzle for them. Fallen has got no health to continue this fight with. 30 seconds, though. It's pretty tough to save in this position. If... Is Floppy gonna hear him? Yeah, he will. Yeah, surely, surely at this point. Yeah. Okay. Complexity bounced back just as they needed to. Two to three. Opening pick going the way of JT. And then it felt like the map actually started shrinking. Fallen not really sinking into every possible position. They just straight up go for that A hit. And that's where Grim lied in wait. Good multi-frag. I mean, you, it's hard to even blame them, right? This flashbang is everything you want. It just gets the crosshair in the right place. He doesn't get too panicked. Goes straight for the second kill. Super sick for Grim. And he was the... One of the conversations on, on Vertigo. He started doing better towards the end, but you obviously wanted to see more out of him in the beginning. Good grenade onto three of them. Only really relevant, I think, on Fallen and maybe on Jotar as well. But even that bit of damage, right? 14 damage. Still will turn the M4A1 into a one-shot headshot. Or the A4 for that matter. That's really why the HE is the equalizer for the CTs. But this time around, Imperial, they're going with another heavy, long, lean approach. After easily dismantling that two-man setup from Complexity last round, they recognize that this is probably space that will simply be allotted to us. And so with that control, it does open up your playbook towards A, but it also gives Fallen a chance to go for a jump, jumping kill like this. If someone actually makes a bad peek, this is an opportunity. And these players, they're right on the other side of each other. They're rotating people back. Easy shot there. Jello just trying to sneak in there, but his gun betrays him. And Grim is good for one more. He's 5-0 oh at the moment. This has slowed down so much for Imperial, and it's just oh. being telegraphed ahead of time. Sonic does go down, but there is a long flank coming in from Floppy as well, so if you want to get the spawn plant down, it has to be right now, because otherwise Floppy's going to cancel out this round. JT in the corner, going to get killed by Fallen as well, and now we're down to 20 seconds. Fang setting up a little bit of a trick there, but it's not going to make a difference. And now it's just Floppy. 14 seconds here, they're waiting for him. The bomb getting picked up 10 seconds now. They're on the other side, planting. They're both just a bullet away from death, but floppy. They ever really have an idea. And now that they're back towards the bank as well, this has got real tricky bolts. He should be dead, but he doesn't clear it. He's just pretending to, and he goes down. And Imperial, they're going to be celebrating because this is a huge round for them. Oh, yeah. That angle just an inch deeper than floppy had expected. But even with the man advantage, even with the bomb being dropped right there at the side of Dice, Imperial were, were able to find their way back into this. And this was looking so favorable for complexity. The fact that Imperial seemingly jumped the gun that they wanted to go for this long pop before their short side attack was even ready to connect with it. And yet they're still able to bail themselves out of it. This is a worrying sign for complexity. Not only did they lose the round, but their money is in tatters.
Yeah, they've hit rock bottom at the moment. Some money on JT, but not on everybody else. Still, as long as Sonic has a deal, I'm I'm still I'm still interested. I don't know if he can replay what he was doing to device on this map, but uh, if we can even get a little bit of that. It could be interesting. That was just something else, but you want to see if Sonic's got more left in the tank. Sure, he's a stand-in. Sure, he's been playing. Well, well, he's been playing real life, actually. He's playing been playing IRL. <laughs> <laughs> but with how he was able to do so well, you want more of the performance, but it's not going to be this round. Cello with a 3K oh off God. the spin around, pirouetting through the bathrooms. Had fallen on a double assist. Oh, the flash oh wait a second. Wait, wait, JT. Oh, no. You wanted it. You oh. See that. At least the one kill just to make it feel a bit better. But it didn't work out. This is, a, this is what got hyped me up on day one, is the fact that they're laughing, they're having a good time, like they're, they're, they're playing great Counter-Strike, but without the pressure. Like yeah. that's everything you could want from, from a team like Imperial right now. Let's just say, if you're not playing good Counter-Strike, you don't have a lot to be smiling about. So it goes yeah. hand in hand. It's hard, isn't it? And it's weird that Imperial just, again, they, they find this form, this level of teamwork that's on display for the team that is likely not surviving the player break. One last dance, one last run, and they're having a great time going at it. And it's against one of their most familiar rivals in complexity to secure a semi-final spot. Winner goes home, and for both these teams to close out the season with a top four finish at an S tier LAN, that's gotta feel great because both of these teams didn't have the best season. We saw flashes of brilliance from Complexity early on. They qualified for the major. They w went top eight at Katowice. But you want this win. But Cello says no. He is on a heater. That's four kills straight for him. Five, I think. You gotta, you gotta quad kill him the last round. Oh, hey, yeah, five. Yes. I stand corrected. He's running it back. Grim out of the mix for a little bit too early. Hoping for a miracle through the smoke, but no one really to catch on the other side. And the people are playing real far back, really giving space here for complexity. And maybe just giving time for them to use the nades that they have. I mean, there's always that to fight for. Three people pushed out of the B bomb site. This is some heroic type stuff. You stack a bomb site, you don't find anyone, you just keep pushing, you make it into a sort of a, a, a death squad just running across the map. They're set up way outside, which is fine, but. They have to eventually try and help out on the other side, right? Because Sonic is here with the AWP, and that's about it. You're hoping you find this kill on the bolts. You gotta get this one. Okay. That's that's the round. Th that's it. Bolts doing too much right now. Sonic, so much pressure right now. Good HE, but there's no way he's able to survive this. One missed shot, that's probably gonna do it. Vinny, too fast. Not gonna be able to find a re-peak frag. And this was just Imperial decimating complexity. Desk was hyping it up. Mike was hyping it up that this is the map that everyone is waiting for. That's fireworks so consistently when these two teams face off against each other. The last time they faced off against each other, it went 29 rounds. Before that, 27. Before that, 48 rounds. And it was 42 the time before that. It's making it overtime half the time. Yeah. The average amount of rounds on this map is well over 30. It's... Seriously, the, these two teams facing off on this battleground, you can almost bet that it's going to be fireworks. Right now, it's looking one-sided, but I mean, that was true on Vertigo as well, and they still brought it back really, really close. Fang is 0 and 7 at the moment, so not the performance yet. I think 25 or more kills on Vertigo. He was definitely the star player for the team, but it's been a little bit slow this time for the Canadian. Volts, this is wild. He should have been lost, losing at least one of those fights, definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's, I mean, that, that's in some ways ba bad timing on the trade there for complexity, but I mean, it's a great display of mechanics from Bolts, too. Maniac's logic was that they were alternating who was winning overpass between the tournaments, and he said it, it was, you know, it was, it was their turn this time, right? Even challenged Jason to fight the universe, which Jason has a complicated relationship with the universe to begin with, so I, I could see why he wouldn't want to take that fight, you know? <laughs> I, I don't know who's winning that fight. I'm betting on the universe. Sorry, Jason, you know, I love you, but just feel like the universe 
It's got it's too much power on that side, you know. Like, what can be universe god? It has to be. <laughs> I guess the idiot. We have to oh get to my. that level. Oh, Fang, you would have loved to get on the board there. But yes. Colin's able to find the correction. Oh, it's, it's down to 14 health, and he still lives. It's not been good for the Toronto native. It's weird. We, we're deep into a tournament, and usually the two Canadian representatives are, are Nath and Twist. This time we got we got Fang chiming in as Liquid are not here. But, I mean, he proved his worth in that last map, so 0 and 8. Complexity are really missing that firepower right now. I know people hate it, but... I'm still dreaming of Europe stealing NAF for themselves. Hey, I'm not... I'm not gonna try to sell NAF to you just yet, but... There will be a time and a place. But th this game is really slipping away from complexity. This is not what we wanted. As just enjoyers of Counter-Strike, this is not what we wanted. No, you're right. We... You know, it, the, the, the storyline is really there. They've been playing so many times, so... It's not even, it's not necessarily a bad prediction that it would be a really deep game. But Imperial are doing everything they can. You know what, to be fair as well, this is the first time in years I've seen Imperial come up with, you know, not just a one odd map where they look okay, because they've done that in the past where you think, oh, okay, yeah, this looks interesting. This has been series after series. Even the one that they lost against G2, it's, it, they still look really solid. They oh, look yeah. really competent. So, so I would say, it is just a different level of Imperial from probably a lot of those past games that we're referencing back to. They definitely look a lot more comfortable in this tournament. I can even, I can, I can't even remember the last time I've seen Fallen smile and laugh the way that he is right now. The, the teamwork that's on, been on display for Imperial has actually caught the attention of a lot of people. It, it's been really a sight to behold. And okay, we got the run boost for Sonic. This could set him up nicely against Fallen. He's got to pick the right angle, though, and Fallen, it feels like he knows. He's already keyed into that right side swing. And so, Sonic, even though they use that trick to sneak him over to this left side, it feels like Imperial are well aware of this. How would he know? Surely he lands so deep. A little bit of a double nade, I think, on the JT. Maybe just the one that actually hit, but flash through. Oh, it's real awkward, but he's got Floppy there to help him out. What a teammate. Otherwise, he probably gets traded by Cello, but that's a good one-two punch. Vinny could be almost dead here. He doesn't look like he's going to check too much. He's sort of pretending, but uh, Grim should be a... Oh, no! He spun around. How do, you just, how do you remember to check that corner so late in attacking that connector? I don't even know. And if Fang goes down here again, he's had a really, really tough game. Zero and eight at the moment. He has to land a kill. He has to... Get one, stay alive, otherwise this could be right back into a three-on-three. Fang's three. got to step up. He's the only player left with 100 HP. He hears them, and that's his time. Okay, Fang on the board. Two important kills, critical frags to make sure that Imperial don't bring this one back. Jota, 1v4. Fang's already on the angle right now, and there we go. 3k to get back into the action. That's what I'm talking about, Fang. Yeah, it's going to be such a relief, right? You, don't, you just don't want to be a burden to your team in the way that he was now, but... That's going to be right back. I'm sure he's going to get fired up once again. Time up being called. The one saving grace for how this is started. I mean, this is a game where you have to also just subvert your expectations between these two teams a little bit, because despite the fact that Overpass is the most CT sided map in tier one play right now, between these two teams, at least from that map graphic we looked at in the pregame segment, they both are better on the T side. So there's still a way that Complexity are able to fight themselves back into it, but it still just feels like a lot of the work has already been done because Imperial have such a solid half. Yeah, already having seven rounds is pretty good. That little jump there from Fallen just <laughs> gave the game away. Unfortunately, they're still able to laugh about it. And Fallen may be a little bit frustrated at himself. The, the nerves are completely different versus G2. Okay, okay. Well, Vinny with the op. Got the changes up already. Oh, that's big. Oh, a second. They double up on the connector players. There's nobody at A at all. <laughs> Those two connector players <laughs> were so kind of masquerading as A defenders, or eventually they would have turned into A defenders. High complexity going for the same push into the short tunnel. 
Poppy and G just moving forward. There's a good shot on the bolts, but also a little bit of a reveal. And Cello's now discovering there's absolutely nobody here. They have so many needs on the T side that if they get the bomb plant, they can probably they can ward off complexity essentially forever. They just keep throwing smokes and molotovs until the bomb goes up. And there's really no way back into this. Vinny should be locking them out of this round. This off angle is so powerful. Sure, JT gets this going to Jota, but yeah, that's going to be a multi frag all day for Vinny. Just has to find the timing. You peak that once every four seconds. And at one point, you're going to catch the CTDs looking the wrong way because they have to turn towards that short side. So JT, it's all about keeping this AK into the next round. You've got Grim with only $500. You can drop that onto him. And everybody else should have a, a decent purchase for themselves. Obviously, Sonic is a little strap for cash, but with the loss bonus that they have, it won't be impossible to scrounge something together. But it's imperative to keep this one. Yeah, and you've got to get a little bit further away, right? The bomb is right above, so... So earlier, I think it's 69 health. Fallen went down uh, right next to the B-bomb site, so you're going to have to make a little bit of a run for it if you want to live through it. Three people surviving as well on the Imperial side of things, but yeah, that was a... Once you get those the, the kill and connect to them, it's on complexity to try and bring it back into three on five, and they just are not able to. Bolt's really been solid on getting the spray there at the medium to long range. R really interesting to see Vinny actually pick up the op right there. Just wanted to switch up how he's been defaulting towards connector. Just says, fall and drop me this, and just calls his own number. Really cool. It's generally the secondary opper for this team, but to take out the opposing opper of the other team, Oh, perfect flash setup. That's Jota flashing for himself right there, taking down JT and Sonic. It's coming too easy for Imperial. Yeah, they're putting pressure on Fang, who's got the AWP. That's in itself a little bit interesting. And now they're going to find him. Vinny just relentlessly hunting him down. Oh, my God. Total destruction in this round. Grim and Floppy left. Cello trying to sneak on through. Surely realizes that the ramp is going to get the straight headshot. And now it's just floppy. Position been revealed. Fighting to keep the M4 alive. It's a good fight. The Fallen's hunting already? Okay. I Surely he heard floppy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He heard that footstep, and that's going to be it. Nine already in 12 rounds of play for Imperial. Solid defaulting from them. Everybody... Just so thorough with their positions. We've seen Vinny come up big. We've seen Bolts. Now we see Jota. It's just every single play that Complexity want to go for in these early rounds is being caught. Here's the flashbang. This is, it could not have been better. It's actually so sick. <laughs> the love and life at the moment. Complexity are definitely not. They have a round loss bonus that's really built up, so, so they want to try and put some pressure on this round. They want to try and do something, anything really. They probably need the last three rounds. They need to make this a 9-6. Even then, they're still in a lot of trouble. But anything shy of that, it feels like Imperial should be able to close this without getting to all 30 rounds, which has been uh, kind of powerful the course between the two teams. Really standard map control here for Imperial. This is probably the most standard round that they've played so far. Just the 3-1 win, 3-1-1, a default. And we see that complexity has more or less turtled themselves into B. Fang is on A by himself. And for some reason, it feels like complexity just are making a strong read that this is going to be a Imperial B exec, but not the case, at least thus far. This is definitely going to be an A hit. Cello's already so close at long. They're trying to rotate the AWP back on Sonic. They want to get here, but this is so scary. He's one footstep away. There's the flash to set it up. Oh, it actually is a team flash. Not exactly ideal, but they're going to get a kill on Fang anyway. Grim, right under the smoke. Bit of a one-way setup. He's still going to get traded. And Sonic, he'd love to put this AWP to good use, but he can't see a single thing. And Cello will catch him. He let go of a bullet. Trying to get, just play that lottery through the smoke, and it's not going to be working out in his favor. JT and Floppy are left to try and scour away, just get the rifles out of there. Ten rounds for Imperial on their T-Sound of Overpass. They're doing an amazing bit of work right now. 
And Fallen's calling it a great game, too. I mean, he's mostly letting his players just go through the motions on their default, but every time they get close to a bomb site, it's such a simple conversion. Flashes on in, two players from both sides joining at the same time, and they also have kept contingency plans for themselves. Bolt was on the other side of the map the entire time. You also, some of the earlier rounds where they tried this 3-1-1, where they got jump spotted all the way out the restrooms, it's a very different round, but this time you actually see the full effect of Cello and the rest of them sneaking that close. Even though one of them was actually a, a bit of an unfortunate team flash, it doesn't even matter because the CT side can't react in time, right? There's just so much happening that they are going to get swiped out, so... Yeah, they've tried to come back to it a couple of times, and this time was probably the, the best one yet. Complexity getting crushed under the pressure of Imperial right now. Second time I've been used now. This has got to be something spectacular for them. Yeah, this is when, when your complexity, you almost start thinking, man, we've had a good tournament run. We took down Astralis, but with Sonic, you know, we could only do so much, and maybe they don't feel like they have their entire strap book at their disposal because Sonic really wouldn't be as familiar with it. And simply put, that firepower that was lighting up Astralis yesterday doesn't feel like it's around today. It's a day-to-day -day thing sometimes, Counter-Strike, and today it's not there with complexity, but... You got to pull yourself together. You called a timeout. You got to get your head back in the space to try to at least get a couple more in this half. Yeah, it's also it's a purely theory crafting, but it could also be that Sonic's performance from yesterday, even you just you sort of, you almost feel like you have to take it more seriously now that you've sort of shown. Because I bet in that game, he's just playing with no strings at all. He's just like, I do whatever I want. I'm just going to be out there fighting and it's going to be a great time. But now you're in the quarterfinals, it does change the mood. Like even if you don't want it to, they're still just human beings, right? So it's gonna be it's gonna be very hard to to keep the emotions on the wrap. A lot of the time, Counter Strike is so much easier to play when you're just laughing and giggling your way through rounds and getting all the kills. And sometimes you see that you know really high level teams getting brought down by <laughs> sort of mid level scrims. That that really can happen. Um, it's just that you can't do it consistently, right? Eventually, if you kept that scrim going. The laughing would fade and you would, you would you'd be in a different mindset and it just doesn't work the same. This time though, Complexity, they're trying a very different setup. Heavy, heavy A-side defense. Fang deep in the long bathroom, but a couple players just kind of around the toilets and Grim just goes for an outright peek. He at least finds the dink on a Vinny, but oh, Imperial, they're blowing this defense up. Fang's right here at the front of bathrooms and Jota pitching in with the rest of his teammates and that's gonna do it. Complexity were lying in wait, but it felt like they got a little bit impatient. Jer Grim kind of jumping the gun there before everybody else was ready. And then you're ha everybody on the rest of the team is just half between, are we pushing, are we yes. sitting? That felt like a breakdown. And also, there are no, there are no trade potential in anything that's happening, right? As soon as someone dies, there's no one that can immediately swing because they're just a little bit too far back or a little bit out of position. Floppy, some modest request for him here. It's like, I just want to save the... The, the Kevlar no helmet and the FAMAS. And Jota says, no, you can't even have that. You can have nothing at all. Imperial just running through this map at the moment. The speed running it has turned into a very one-sided affair here. 11 to 3 in their favor, leading into the 15th round. Yeah, going into this series, lest I remind everybody, it was... One time out of 11 maps did a team not achieve double digits in a losing effort when Imperial and Complexity have faced each other in the server. I don't know if Complexity are hitting 10 in this one. This is not the team that is usually fighting up against the Brazilian side. It feels really rough at the moment, doesn't it? Would have to be a complete change of the pace and of the mental side for Complexity going into the second half. I don't know how much you can get done in three or four minutes, but it's going to have to be spectacular for this to even get close. Forward position up by the restroom from the A side of the map, two at B, and I think Grimm is now just starting to get back and maybe want to see if he can help them out. Might even try and flash them into a fight here if they feel like it. Run boost last time was pretty miserable. This time it's a lot quicker. Oh, oh my whoa. God! <laughs> Grim, that's going to be one of the safest jumps in the game. And it's off the back of a run boost. Not a disgusting kill coming out. Sonic's going to get one in return. That's actually the bomb down right in front. And they don't know about the M4 up close. So Fang's going to be able to get that one. A little bit of a hiccup here for the Imperial side. 
having lost the bomb and now playing a man down in a 2 on 3 but they're going to bring it right back. Forget what I said. JT's on the other side, and they know that he's there because he got the kill earlier, so they're going to go straight for the bomb plant. Oh my god, complexity. Nothing is easy for them right now. No, oh, it felt like they were gifted an opportunity with that kill on the bomb, but now, yeah, JT, like you said, they should have a great idea of where he is or where he could be. Vinny's locking out the bank right now. Jota's making sure that he holds up the flank, and the ace in the sleeve is just the fact that Jota is going to be flanking JT. Yeah. He's already wrapping up around him. Yeah, in JT's mind, even if he finds the first kill here, he's going to be thinking, I just came from restrooms, so there's no way I have to check that. Like, I'm going to check every other position. He's going to get shot in the back. It won't even matter. What a first half for Imperial. They've almost done a job here. They've almost made it through. We'll see if they can finish it in the second half. We were promised at least 30 rounds, and Imperial have said that's not happening today. Look at this insane shot. Run boost. Grim is just jumping for information. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <He's laughs> what is happening? I don't know what's happening. But Imperial, they are on the right track at the moment. They have they've played an excellent game on the first half here. They've pretty much cemented the win already. I have no idea how complexity could build a comeback. It doesn't look like it's gonna be possible at all. No. I think Maniac and the universe were right. It's just tit for tat. Win, loss, win, loss. And today it comes up win for Imperial. But we'll see if this game actually regresses to the, the standard. Yeah, Maniac's astrology has turned out to be correct, which is um, unexpected, but pretty sick. He does love astrology, which you wouldn't expect. Oh. We all have you know, a little... Our kinks. Our little kinks, yeah?
It's all right. Well, this is now the T side for complexity. You don't need me to tell you that the pistol round is one that they have to win. Oh, sneaking up. It's so close. That could have been it. Grim, he's got into a sick position here, but without the kill, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Oh, he gets one spins for oh. it. And he's locked it open. The rest of them are going to be bombsided. If I'm Imperial, you're going to be so confused. Like, what is happening? They're winning the fight on both bombsides at the same time. Show the showing up. It's not going to be a bomb plant. And he's in a one versus four. He gets the double kill. And now he's under a lot of pressure. Shut down by Grim, the hero, to save complexity in that round. There was a real chance there for the one versus four. Grim had a very quiet first half but it's nice to see him pop off there in the pistol spinning around to get those two kills on the a site and then closing it down with the final shot from heaven okay i mean sure it's cliche that you need the pistol but like i said i mean these two teams they're better on the t side so giving themselves a little bit of momentum seeing if they can build off of it we saw what they were able to do on the defensive side of vertigo wasn't quite enough came a single round shy from sending it to overtime, but but you're going to feel enabled at the very least. One tag with the scout, you can brush that off. You're like, okay, not a big deal. Second tag on somebody else, you start to feel much more nervous. And a third tag, I feel like most T sides, they tend to really fall apart behind that third tag. You can just tell everyone is so nervous now. We only got one of them on Sonic yet, but we'll see. There's the second one on Fang. Oh. Getting into that weird territory where you have to, at least two of the players have to be a little bit careful. Sonic is quite far forward. George are on the other side of the smoke. Is it going to fade? JT's right there. Flash doesn't really do anything, and Jota can't get the kill. Bolt's going to try and smoke it off. It's on Fallen, though, to get a little bit more done, and JT, good job running it back here. There is a tank on the Grim, but I think now that the bomb is going to be planted, they're going to be fine. There is a flank coming in from Vinny, but presumably will be a bit too late here. You can see there's a lot of damage on the T side, but they needed to get a, more of this before the bomb went down. Definitely. Fang going to be able to find Vinny here. That should be a freebie. Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty nice for Vinny. Oh, a little bit of movement too. Okay. This is the last storyline in this round. Okay, Vinny, that's gonna be that. And oh. uh, are you kidding me, Fallen? I think Grim, Grim heard him, surely. I think so. Yeah, I think he's already keyed in on it. Might not have known that he snuck to the right, but either way, that's gonna be a fifth round for complexity. Floppy taking down Fallen there. And it's much needed. This should actually spell a sixth for them, but they will still, even if they find that, be at half the score line of Imperial. We see that the approach is really well done from complexity. Key nades needed to block off the angles and players on top of each other. Not too close where they can get multi-frag, but just far enough away that they can trade with ease. Yeah, that's it. This round, best weapon for Imperial, arguably the 5-7. Yeah, they're all stacked to the B-bomb side, so just one HE already been thrown out. And Complexity is showing up for the fight, which is fine. They're still going to be able to run it down. CSAT 75 will take a kill on Floppy, and that is about it. So pretty quick round, a very decisive move from Complexity. You You're probably going to win that round either way, but I feel like getting the, getting the round that quickly, again, it just all builds momentum, doesn't it? You're it like, does. That's it. It does. If you have to plant the bomb, wait, and then some... Some rat is just kind of waiting in the bathrooms and gets one kill. You're just like, come on. Like, really? Is that the game we're playing right now? But let's see. I'm really curious about that that B short interaction that Mahone was highlighting earlier. But we'll put that on hold as Fang makes his way up the connector. Bolts. That's a good shot to start with. He actually got the dink on Grim as well. Very, very low. And probably means Grim can't easily move forward here. We'll fall back from the position. Four on four. They don't know about the fact that Jota is still in, in that connector, which could be an ugly surprise for complexity. Oh, he's just moved out through. He's just walked right through the smoke. He's oh. ready for it to fade. There's the kill. Instant pick off JT, not even reacting. How do you think he realized what was going on? That is an absolutely sick move from Jota. That is a savage play. I don't even know when the last time I've seen that happen has been. It's probably been at least four years. 
I, I don't even know, like just playing around the smoke, waiting for it to fade like that. That's crazy stuff from Jota. You rarely get the opportunity to even make that play, but that's going to be it. There's no way back into this round if you're complexity. Grim's already at 4 HP. Sure, he's got Sonic by his side with 100, but you're not breaking through this defense. Cello, Vinny playing the close monster setup. It's got to be two instant headshots to even remotely believe. Yeah, we have to be so fast. Good flash, but not going to make any difference. Like you pointed out, Grim practically dead, so gonna take a walk away. And they they know that they got the thing on him earlier, so they're well aware. Like 13 the, to 6. The last time I feel like I've seen that happen, something like that, is with Snacks. Like, it's been that long. Yeah. I, well, he had a real knack for it, didn't he? Yeah, just understanding the edges of the smoke that you could play around. And the thing is, you are walking through a gray screen, and there's not necessarily a 0% chance a T is nope. just holding right there. Like, you could, that's a very common spot for a T to be, too. That could even be like a late third person who's coming through the short tunnel, just, you know, who's just a little bit late to the party who's trying to get there. That's that, that person can catch you easily. Yeah, sick move. Just brilliant, actually. That's why, that's why Launders is so high on Jota, because, and that's why he thinks that when the, the next best Brazilian team is made, it will involve this guy, because his mechanics, as we've seen in this tournament, are incredible, but it's that extra cerebral effort that he puts into every round. Yeah, but that was really convincing. He's been playing good. Him and Vinny both at the moment. Three rounds away, Imperial, from putting an end to complexity and moving on into the semifinal for Imperial. Just imagine going into the top four at a tournament of this caliber. It's, I just don't know what to say. It's just enjoyable, isn't it? It feels like a fairy tale. And it, what's crazy about it is that it's not just necessarily the easiest bracket draw ever. Sure, it was a Vitality. I mean, vi beating Vitality number one is already where people should have been convinced. But then they stuck G2 with a map victory over them, and then they made it very competitive on map yes. number three, too. On a map that G2 should have beat them handily on. All right. If there's a world in which the run instead for Imperial to get to the semifinal is beating G2 and Vitality both. Like, that could have definitely happened. Oh, it was just a couple rounds shy of it. Yeah. Okay, this is... They're kind of forced, I think, now with the setup here from, from the B defense. Wait a minute, they're going to go back. It's going to say they almost are forced to go to the A bomb site because going back to B right now with 30 seconds seems so risky. Oh, Shell's walking right into it. He's going to realize now. Pulls out the, I don't even know what, knife, grenade. He definitely gets killed. 20 seconds. Smoke is up at the L bend. So this is a nightmare for complexity. If they win this round, it's going to be a miracle. They're running out of time and they're being pushed across the map with the grenades. Vinny's there for the headshot. Trying to get one more. Bolts has shown up. Fallen with a second kill. And Imperial, they clean it up. They knew everything that was going on. Sure, it's a little bit hilarious for Cello to get run down but they were just getting controlled with the utility that was left there on the CT side. That's the power of forward positioning, though. Even though Cello, Cello does die in that circumstance, as soon as he does, as soon as he hears that they're coming down connector, Imperial can rotate. If he were just back in the bomb site by himself, he would not have heard them coming down. He would not have been able to at least give his team that forewarning. And, and look at, they're happy for Cello yes. in some way. They're pointing at him because of just his positioning and his calm. He, he dies and looks ridiculous. He looks dumb in the server, but it's about the communication there and what that allowed for Imperial. Easy cleanup for them once they knew what was going on. Good call from JT too. Uh, honestly, good, good IGL battle right there in that round. Yeah, it's probably a question that's always worth asking, right? Like a death, it, it could be great like in, in a moment like this, right? You get the confirmation that there's at least like three or four people running that way because there's no time on the clock. If that had been a minute and 10 seconds, you would have been like, oh, well, they can still go back. They could do anything. But that wasn't really an option for them. So double Mac 10, a Galil and double AK on the side of complexity. Yeah. I don't blame them for forcing this round, but man, it has to be good. The spray is there for bolts, the grenade on top, and Jota's on the other side. They're just getting chewed up. Complete destruction in this round. Complexity, you've got nothing to say about it. And JT's out here, and they're surely going to be hunting him. They're already just trying to close the book on him. Barry, an insane round. This will be 15 to 6 as Imperial are looking to take this map away and 
really, really a huge deviation from the norm here in terms of these two teams playing. Yeah. Oh, shot. These little toes. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see if JT's able to stay alive. No, Jota takes him down. But not just a deviation from the norm in terms of the average that both of these teams find in losses on every map, but on overpass especially, these teams have averaged over 36 rounds per overpass they play each other. It goes usually over single overtime in terms of total rounds played. So Imperial, they're just wiping the floor with complexity. This is not even really looking competitive. If you didn't know the history between these two teams, you would think that it's a complete class difference, but day to day, game to game, series to series, you never know who's gonna come out on top between these two. Two sides. Team Nade, Fang, eats most of it. Jotar at 17, Vinny at 16, but everyone else on the team is not that far behind. Cello, bit of an awkward position there when you're peeking the left side of the tunnel and they're going to be swinging right, but so far it hasn't really happened. Grim's almost dead in the round to begin with. There's the peak on the other side. Floppy able to win that one, but Cello's really quick to return it. And it's a four on four, only in the strictest sense because JT's at three health and Grim is at eight. So not really looking good at the moment for complexity. Sonic's out there with just a pistol in hand. We haven't seen the return of that mythical deagle that he was wielding yesterday. Not even close to it. Jota gonna get the kill. Sonic hoping to swing against him, but he's gonna get picked off as well. And <laughs> Jota's just stealing the round. 20 kills on him. And Fang is on his own in a one versus four. And Imperial, they are done with complexity. Yeah, this has been a really great rivalry, but this time Imperial are just leagues ahead of their American opposition. It's gonna be Fang to get one kill there. But they're right behind him. Double push coming up. He gets one more shot, but I don't think it even matters. He's on one point of health to try and solve this one with, and 24 seconds as well. So even if it's cool, even if he's trying his best here, there should be absolutely no way out. And there's the shot from Fallen. 16 to 6. It's Imperial making the semi-final in Washington. What a great and statement game from Imperial. They've taken down Vitality. They've put complexity to bed. And they are simply looking better than ever. This is a fired up Brazilian squad that nobody gave a chance coming into this tournament. And they've achieved top four. Wow. It's so surreal. Oh, I definitely wasn't expecting it, but you know, already beating Vitality, nearly beating G2, and now taking out Complexity. This is a super legit run for them at the moment. And you know, Complexity may be a little bit wounded with Sonic in there as well, and that's unfortunate. But I don't think we're taking away from away from Imperial at the moment. Yeah, and I just also in some ways want to cherish the rivalry that these two teams have had with the reports that are on the horizon of where some of these Imperial players will be headed. This might be the last map that we see between these two. And it's given a lot of people that have tuned in uh, just so much in terms of tense moments, highlight rounds, good tactical play, and really... Thank you to Complexity and thank you to Imperial for gracing the stage once more. I hope it's not the last, but all signs indicate that it may be. Yeah, it definitely could be, right? There's, there's been a lot of rumors around there. James is ready with an interview, so I'll throw it over to him. I've got Grim with me after this one. And, and Grim, I know this is definitely not the result you would have wanted. I want to just start by touching on this overpass. Normally such a, a great map, not just for you guys in general playing against other people, but also playing against Imperial specifically. You got off such a slow start even with getting the pistol. You won both pistols and just not enough rounds. What was missing today? I think on CT side, uh, most of our gamble stacks weren't working. They were going the other side, so we were just forced to save or uh, just try something else. Like um, they kept getting some kills at A, and we tried stacking it, but they kept going B and like stuff like that. Like the stacks weren't working out for us, and I think uh, on our T side, it was a bit tough to get momentum. And I think when they have so many rounds, you could play a bit more aggressive, take a bit more risky peaks, and I think it, it caught us off a little bit. And Fawn felt like he was everywhere for the off the whole series. <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> yeah, across both maps, he was definitely all over the place for you guys. And and now looking at this though, for complexity. One thing I saw yesterday in the Astralis game, you guys were able to come back even when there was more fight, you weren't breaking mentally. But here it looked like your heads were down again. Why was that? Um, at least for me, I didn't feel like my head was too down. Like I kind of had like the same mentality as I did yesterday in the Astralis game, personally. But um, okay. it can just be like when you, know, you lose a couple unlucky rounds or something like that, or rounds that you think you should have won, or like you got shot in the back. Like it's kind of they can make people a bit mad or upset. Yeah. I mean, that's everyone. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you're a professional, you got to come in here, like just understand that those rounds are going to happen and try to move on the best you can. 
And in terms of Sonic, right, it's the two events back to back with him. Are you impressed with just what he was able to put up, considering all the, the factors going into it? Yeah, I mean, I think all of us on the team are very impressed with uh, what he was doing, especially yesterday, the Deagles thing his device. Like, it was something crazy. We were all joking around the game, like, How, your Deagles are in the off. Like, oh, he's coming in, and he's, like, obviously just doing what he can, you know? I mean, obviously, he was forgetting a few strats every now and then, but I mean, that's going to happen when you're standing. Like, you can't, like, flood him with information, because, like, I mean, everyone's human at the end of the day. It's hard to remember, like, 20 different things on each map. So we just come uh, some basic stuff on every map and just try to fill him in. But I think he did an amazing job and uh, I think we should be proud of how he played for sure. Now, obviously, we're going straight into the player break after this. A much needed time off. Are we hoping to see you back in the complexity journey afterwards, Kroom? Of course, man. I'm always here to play, uh, especially with CSU around the corner and stuff going on there. I'm really excited for the game. Uh, obviously, Undisputed Show Match King CSU. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to the game and the changes it will bring. So I'm going to be taking some time to reset with family, yep. uh, go home, see what's going on there, see my family, and just uh, try to grind the most as I can. And hopefully when CSU comes out, just grind it like best I can. So. I love it, the crime mentality it continues forward. Grim, thank you very much, man. Thank you. Most devastating defeat in Washington, D.C. for America since the burning of the White House in 1812. <laughs> that was brutal, what are you man. That was about? tough to watch. What are you talking hurt? about? The man is out there smiling with James. You're devastated. He's I'm not. sad. I'm sad. I had hope for the boys. You guys saw me in the green room. Every time they managed to pull back a kill or a round, I thought maybe there was a chance back in, but uh, he's new. He's real. Not, well, not ready to let up. Yeah. You'll get over that eventually down the line. Oh, All your dies. hopes and dreams are crushed. Now, listen, I don't think your hopes were misplaced. You look at map one. It's extremely competitive. It did feel like a missed opportunity. Once we moved on to Overpass, Imperial once again demonstrated such expertise on the map, like knowing, even Grim, like kind of transpires it in the interview, like, yeah, they keep getting picks on A, going back to B, we didn't know what was going on. That's also the feeling we had from the outside, like super controlled approach from Imperial, very measured, knowing what to do with the space they get, knowing how to get these entry kills, and then just falling, playing them off like a fiddle. Fallen might not necessarily be there anymore in terms of his like, individual skill for tier one, but he can still call oh, a, yeah. a very effective game. He can still call a very impactful game as well and I think that's a lot of what we saw here it didn't help as well I mean he had again like kind of like how we talked on vertigo where just so many picks just kind of walked right into his crosshair we have, you have to call it out a little bit but like Fang starting like what 0 and 8 I think at one point yes. as well and when like, yeah. you have like one of your main primary site defenders with that kind of a performance you can just march into that a bomb site whenever you want an overpass that's a death sentence it certainly is and standing by with the general who called such a great plan we've got James Banks with Fallen Fallen certainly did call a great plan there. And, and one thing I want to look at straight away into Vertigo, you individually were, were looking great in this, but you obviously had that win against Vitality on it. They pick it into you to try and fight back on it. You guys have been feeling very confident with just getting some reps on Vertigo before this game. And, and did that lead into the victory here? Uh, yeah, it's been actually surprising that we managed to get two wins in a row in Vertigo <laughs> because overall it's been a very tough map for us. But I mean, the most you play, the most you learn. And I think we have been able to play both good maps recently. And then overpass. Normally it's so crazy, it's so back and forth between you guys, but you dominated them in the first half despite losing the pistol and then continued it forward going into the second half. Does it feel like you guys could kind of do no wrong? You just had their number? Yeah, I mean, I think it felt like uh, pretty similar to the Vitality game as well. Um, every single round we were playing, uh, we were throwing different punches, you know, like throwing different set of paces and getting correct reads, mm -hmm. uh, eventually doing good flashbangs, you know. Um, speeding up the pace when necessary, being very cautious when necessary, you know. So everyone was on point. Every single aggression they tried to put on us, most of them didn't work. So when you have all those advantage situations to play on a map like Overpass, if you understand what we're doing, it's pretty hard for the CTs. And despite what we're hearing about what's going on with your career and what's going on with this Imperial, I see that you're still leading this whole team. They're smiles, they're, they're doing what's supposed to be done here. How good does that feel for you going into all these games and now being in the semi-final? Yeah, it actually feels surprising, right? It kind of <laughs> gives you a question mark in your head because, you know, uh, it's, it's, so, it's super tough. Everyone is chasing uh, good success. Everyone is chasing good runs in tournaments, uh, becoming a better team, becoming a better player. And I don't know, I have been doing that for a long, long time. Everyone knows that. And every single time of my career, there's something that I learned from a specific period of time, you know? Mm. There are so many things I was very good at the beginning, very good in the past that I became worse, you know, even okay. mentally in terms of how I can approach the game as a leader or how I can approach myself as a player. And I think it's part of life, you know, yeah, a very positive player in the past, mm. became a little bit less positive recently. And now being able to play for those guys and realize some of those things, there's always something to learn, you know, and that's what I think it's the best thing about gaming. I think you can learn a lot about how you work as a person 
the things that you can do better, mm. uh, things you can drop on your ego and all those things. So I'm just very happy to be playing with them and now seeing some um, good results, yeah. it's finally paying off because the work has been there forever. And this is very reflective of you, despite your experience, despite everything you've done in your career. Do you say you've got an extra motivation now? Uh, the motivation is always there, you know, but I think it's more of uh, self-realization that only motivation can get you so far, you know, like only being motivated, only putting hard work without balancing other things in your life, without having the good attitude, putting the work where it has to be put in. Uh, putting the work everywhere is not going to give you the results you want, you know, kind of this perspective I have at the moment. So for the moment, I'm thinking about how I can balance my life for the second semester of the year. Uh, there's a lot of talks about all other things I can play. There's always the opportunity to stay in Imperial. So we're going to see what we do. And hopefully if we stay together, we can keep playing as good as we can. And now semifinals stadium, right? That's going to be amazing. It's been a while since I have been playing a, a big semifinals like that. And it feels good to be playing uh, personal and individually well as well. It's yeah. been tough times for me recently, so I'm very happy about it. And it's going to be heroic when you play in the semi-final game on this stage. Do you think the NA crowd could be on your side? Uh, definitely, I think so. <laughs> Eroic has always been the bad guys every time they play, right? And Eroic, I mean, they have been playing superb CS lately. And, you know, they're just this extra mile where they can win tournaments. And hopefully, we're not going to give them this time to you. <laughs> I like it, Fulham. Thank you very much, Thank you very man. Much. Some beautiful perspective there from the professor. Yeah, listen, he was about to reveal the secret of longevity in Counter-Strike, and we just thought we cannot have that secret out there. Only that's James, why, that's why only we, James we, knows. Exactly, only James knows. Actually, James is the sole proprietary of Fallen Secret right now. Maybe we should do something out of it. Maybe we should try to get <laughs> if we get interrogate him. I would have loved to know. Some great words from Fallen, of course. It's always nice to hear it's him. It's a little deep for this early James. on a Friday afternoon, you know? It's Jason, little, are you just uh, not activated at the time of day? Uh, are we too early? Uh, yeah, the, those kind of discussions are for later in the evening. I'm, <laughs> I'm just having a good time right now. <laughs> just just the Counter -Strike. I'm just trying to watch some CS, man. But oh. no, I mean, look, that's what makes Fallen such a good leader. That's what makes him have that longevity is those kinds of perspectives and those kinds of understanding. So, um, yeah. He had another really, really good uh, performance here today, individually, as he mentioned, and, and in terms of his leadership. Helps as well when you have Cello and Jota just blowing up the server the way they did. That does make life easy, right? I mean, you can call a, as great a game plan as you want, but if your teammates just rip four heads, every plan's going to look fantastic here, man. Yeah, listen, he said uh, it looked like we could do no wrong. And actually, we have an example we can show you guys at home. Round 20 is a great illustration of that. It's Imperial actually getting caught off guard. You see the fake coming over from complexity with 35 seconds left. And then Joda, a cello rather, gets a little curious and curiosity killed the cat. He gets found. This should be over. This should be over. But Imperial's reaction is so quick. The smoke from Fallen with 25 seconds gives time to the rest. You could argue Complexity should have pushed a little bit quicker because it gives time to everybody to be in position. Fallen finds the kill, Vini is now in water, and they've got Rotate from Heaven as well. And a round that should have been uh, Complexity all the way turns absolutely like a cost of car. Just, if you don't win that round, which one are you going to win? Yeah, it's just the way that smoke funnels everyone towards monster. Like, they have to call it completely off. And if you have three bodies streaming out of monster, Fallen doesn't have as much comfort to go for follow-up shots and repositions, but the fact they all went through exactly what he could have wanted, exactly the spacing his teammates needed to rotate back into the bomb site. So, yeah, and I think even even if you go back to, like, the T side, they, they won, what, like, that three versus five out of long when they lost the first two players on the execute. Exactly what yes. he said. Everything went, that could go right went right for Imperial. Yeah, it feels like they're having a little bit of a blessed run, and it, it harkens back to something we talked about in the pregame. It's a little sad to see this amazing level of Counter-Strike from a team that we expect to not really last much longer. This is the best Imperial that we've seen. It feels like everything is working. Cello and Jota are yes. delivering. Fallen is delivering as an individual as well as a leader. I mean, Vinny is stepping up and having massive games. It almost felt like Fallen was like alluding to that like frustration that we kind of touched on in the pre-match, where it was just like, yeah, we've been busting our ass trying to make this work for like months and months and year, and now all of a sudden, right at the tail end, when it feels like it's not going to be here anymore we've kind of figured it out like the results are flowing in like some good ups a good upset over vitality a good a good game here now a semi-finals at a big event so yeah i think that the vibe frustration is kind of bubbled forward a little bit yeah the vibes are good right now but i think the danger i'd say that the trap like man mentally speaking is to now think oh actually this team is working let's put it all together let's go back and like no you, you, there was a reason why this wasn't exactly working up until that point yeah. now and sure the hot work's been done and fallen is right they've been working on it they've been training on it but it hasn't materialized up up until the point where everybody was just facing the void in its eyes and said, listen, we don't know what's going on. Like, we don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. Let's have some fun. Let's put our best foot forward. Let's all give the best version of ourselves into this server and we'll see what's happening. But that in itself tells a little bit about the team too. But these are like some of these deep evening conversations <laughs> we could have <laughs> yeah, around, exactly. around a drink, you know. For now, let's just have fun. We're playing good CS. And he said, maybe we're going to make life for Heroic a little harder.
Maybe. Let's look towards that, because this has been a really encouraging Imperial, right? I mean, even in the series that they lost up against G2, we went the distance. It was so exciting outside of maybe Ancient and Nico dropping 30 and a half. But, you know, outside of that moment, this is a this is a really encouraging team. There's a world, I think, where they give heroic. I don't know. No, 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 Jason is not ready. Jason is not ready to deal with this idea. Come on, Jason. Listen, you're not ready to deal with it either. You're just gonna let me be the bad guy in this one. I know you. I know what you're doing over there. You don't believe? But we think the same. We think the same. Heroic is gonna destroy this team in the semifinal. And that's that's so many before you have said single digit single digits up for. That's the headline right there to everyone who's writing an article right now. Jason O'Toole. They will destroy this team. Heroic is licking their chops. The They're like, wrong. not even we can lose a semifinal to this team. It's like the quality of CS is just the discrepancy is too hard to ignore. Like Heroic plays such a beautiful Counter Strike. If they were to lose against Imperial, then I would like to crowdfund uh, a movie to you know put these moments in existence. It'd, Get be, some like, actors it'd be like there. the opposite Mighty Ducks. It'd it, be like exactly. the favorite team <laughs> to fail <laughs> like every, every single yeah. moment. It's not an inspirational no. story. It's a really depressing story. We, we make it a dark movie, like <laughs> yeah. Nouveau Noir. We'll do that. <laughs> well, we'll see if that's the moral we're taking away from this. We do have another game to play today, and this one, ooh, it's going to bring some spice. Phase Vitality. Look, if Complexity Imperial was the match that's kind of maybe the faded one of the region, well, Phase Vitality, that feels like it's faded for the world. Yes. Basically, there was a story that uh, when I was playing in Elements Pro Gaming, uh, Hooch was my captain. I was playing with Nickelback, Hooch, Cree, Alien. Alien, oh, yeah. Yeah. It somehow happened that uh, r like Team Russia qualified for WESG for in uh, like China, I think, or somewhere. And Flamey didn't want to go, so Hooch had to go with instead of instead of Flamey. Mm. And Hooch said to Flamey, "Okay, but you play officials instead of me in Elements Pro Gaming." And Flamey st stood in, okay. I think two or three games he stood in. And on Inferno, he's like, Marx, try, try like going close into your monitor, buy a deagle, and you're, you're going to feel how it's like a bit different, right? <laughs> okay. And I bought a deagle, killed four, and I'm like, bro, this is the thing. And since then, I'm playing really close to the monitor. Since then. So it's Flamey's fault of my, of my like, uh, way of sitting. I didn't wow. sit like that before. Flamey almost broke your back. Oh, so that's how it all began. Who's the most interesting player that you play with on Liquid, like personality-wise? Nitro is the most calmest. I, I saw him rage one time during the selfie year. Okay. And that was because of me. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? So basically, it was actually blast, blast groups as well. Our overpass was garbage. And I was sleeping and creating different defaults. And I was thinking how to win on overpass because everybody was picking overpass because we made the mistake of picking once overpass. Everybody saw how, how garbage our overpass is because we thought our overpass is really good, but actually it's bad. I'm like, yeah, we need to practice this. And we go into scrim, everybody's having a good mood or whatever. And we're losing the, the half like 11-2 or something on, on T side. And Nitro is calling like some random <laughs> that he didn't explain or anything and you're like bro can you call something good finally can, can you call any of those rounds or something because everybody was tilted we were making a lot of mistakes and i was like bro just please just can you and he he just goes puts his head and like drops it on, on the table stands up and i'm mad and i'm like okay i need to go out apps goes out with me to like stand and talk and he's like starting his psychology uh, therapy right he's like oh so what happened and i'm like explaining this and he's like yeah i agree with you we go back i enter the back room and he's like let's go outside and i'm like uh -oh. okay let's go outside <laughs> first thing he does when we're outside he's like listen i'm chill <laughs> like, like, like this i'm like okay I'm not mad. Then we basically, yeah, uh, we talked it out, everything is good, and our overpass is now one of the best maps. And he's never raged again. He actually didn't even rage that time, if you ask Welcome back to the Blast Premier Spring Final here in Washington, D.C. And this next game, well, it might just be a new threat level reached. FaZe versus Vitality. 
Titans clashing here in the server, and they find themselves in the quarter final. Things have gone slightly array this time for both teams in the group. Unbiased opinion, that's one of my favorite matchups in Counter Strike. What, phase vitality? Yeah. Okay, why is I that? that. What I do you like, why do you like that? I love it. Because you have on one hand phase who can completely throw chaos into the mix and play these weird ass rounds. Sure. And you have vitality on Apex trying to keep his calm. Sure. I the midst of that. <laughs> Just love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> All for the Apex. You didn't even mention Zaiwu. I'm really proud of you. You've gone away from Yeah, it. because I've been, people have been pressuring me to stop mentioning Zaiwu <laughs> all the time. So now I feel like kind of self aware. You know, I got to find in different ways. It's got to vitality. Yeah, this is essentially the first of what are going to be like three grand finals in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a beautiful set ahead of us? And I love it too. We've touched on it a couple of times when we talk about FaZe. Like this like style of Counter-Strike that FaZe are bringing out right now that's just like, finally we're back to the old school brawly ways. Get in the thick of it like real quick. Find some fights. And I, we love the way that the, 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 the leashes have been loosened on these guys. Like they've been given a lot more freedom, a lot less like hardcore prep and detailed prep that they've been mentioning these past two events uh, coming out of the Paris Major all a little bit fried. But the individual skill is so sharp. And in some situations that freedom actually emphasizes the individual skill a little bit more. Rain's having a, an incredible tournament right now. He is. He's been absolutely monstrous. It feels like Twist has been a little revitalized as well. The things that we want out of this roster, yeah. out of this team, they're delivering and they're giving us some exciting games, which is what we expect from FaZe. Yeah, I completely agree. I just think that some of the limitations of FaZe show through when one or two players, let's just say one more often than not, doesn't have the game that he's supposed to have. Because if you really want to get tactical, technical rather, and you go with the microscope and you look at their game, sure. FaZe isn't playing the best Polish Counter-Strike there is. Like, if you actually really go hardcore, like New Smoke, Metas, whatever, Flashes, it's it's not the most Polish game, but it doesn't matter because they have their own environment, they know how they want to play the game, and that style puts pressure on individuals. But more, they usually have individuals showing up. And no Polish players on this roster. No Polish players <laughs> either, but a whole lot of Polish <laughs> maybe on the other side to hear how they're going to handle it. Get me out of here. We got a little bit of a sit down here with some of the players from FaZe. I can't. <laughs> Why does FaZe lose in 2023 if it's not like the pressure and nerves? Is it just because everyone's so good? Like you got to optimize every part of your day now. Is that why? Yeah, I think all the teams uh, nowadays uh, have the chance to win a tournament, basically. I think uh, you can see it now as Mouse went 0-3 uh, in a major compared to the final. Same with Ants, you know. So every team can show up on every tournament and they can all win. And I think also from our team, it was a very different team that we had back in the day than what it is now. And I think Kerrigan's confidence and the trust we have in him is very different now as well. So if we lose, it's it's a team loss, not uh, anything individual. With you two specifically inside of rounds, you guys are the ones responsible for taking most of the opening fights. And do you put it on yourselves basically to, to know that if you're not opening, then it's way harder for your team to close? Like, do you recognize, you know, what percentage of duels that you guys are taking as like in the 5v5s? I think um, for me, at me and Finn are very similar in that way. I think there's one tournament or two tournaments where he is a little bit higher and he goes for a little bit more crazy stuff. Uh, but for me, it's mostly knowing that I have my team in the back, mm -hmm. like when I go in. It gives me more confidence knowing that even if I fail, I will have a guy in my back that will trade me. And with this team, we have the three kids and they all can, they will all trade you no matter what, right? Yeah. So uh, it's all about confidence from my side. Yeah, I think mean, like sometimes we, when those three guys click and hit like a level, not like individually, but they just hit a hit a chemistry during a tournament. It's so fun to watch. It's like so strange. It's like it's not the best communication, but it's just like layer on layer on layer of how to see the round and how to play off each other. It's beautiful to see. Mm -hmm. So sometimes better that me and Rain is dying than one of us is alive with two of them because like me and me and him is going when we go, you know, and <laughs> and they're a little slower. But that's also their hundred percent their strengths because sometimes we're going too like too slow, but they're getting a trade right before. Uh, the round is escalating. So I think um, me and Hoven knows that even if you have rough tournaments and rough games, we can play a little bit different, but even in the defaults, we know they can clean up. And, and that's how the, the team is set up for them to clean up the rounds. And if not, if me and Hoven starts entering like guards, then the, the game is over. If they are confident every single game, we are going to be the best team in the world. Yeah, I think sure. that's something me and Rain has worked on for many years that even if you have bad confidence, you have to go for the duel you have done the last 100 times because if you don't, it creates um, the chemistry of the round and how we play as a team is, is off, you know? So so that's why I'm always so comfortable with him that you don't have a rough game, we still go, you know? We still go how we usually would. 
faith in your teammates. Those are the key here for FaZe. The question is, how's your confidence in this roster? I, no, I'm, I, I like this roster a lot. I hope they don't touch it. I was really glad to see the interview with Twist where he said it's not changing. I don't. I mean, there was not even a rumor. I wasn't surprised at all to see it in any way. But th this team feels so like close to like breaking over that hump. And you know, I really like listening to Kerrigan like have the same kind of admiration, the same kind of like excitement about watching you know the three younger guys on the roster play together as we do from the outside. Because there is some kind of like magic that clicks when Brokey, Twist, Rops are all having great individual games. But on the other end of it, uh, this is where confidence has obviously been a bit shaken, right? Kerrigan is having yeah. a really tough time recently and been very, very vocal in public about his, his shaking confidence. I think there is a very, very fine line that Kerrigan is walking on right now. Like, I understand on one hand, some of the words he had in an interview resonate with me as in, listen, I know my job. I know what I'm supposed to do for that team. It's not going to be that easy, but the rest of the team believes in me and we know how we're working. We know how we're processing the rounds, which is great. But to an extent, to an extent, you cannot step into the dark side. You cannot become a liability. You cannot become a 4v5 granted from the be beginning. Because, yes, you have some of the best closers in the history of the game. I'm not going to argue that down. Yeah. But there's only so much you can do, even mentally, as Kerrigan, to just getting battered and bruised and slapped in the face time and time again, game after game. The ancient one against Ants is a, is a sad example of that. He has to be able to have some sort of individual success. Otherwise, I think the load is too heavy on the shoulders of the rest of the roster. I think we saw it yesterday as well, just looking at the cams, right? A level of frustration that you're just not used to seeing visible there for Kerrigan. But it's human, sure, but we almost expect something more from him. Well, you, you say like the load on the rest of the team's shoulders is going to be too heavy for them. And, and for me, I think of it like the load on Kerrigan's shoulders that he puts, puts on himself is going to be too heavy. Because I, I feel like Kerrigan at the moment just might be in like this, like the bottom of the pit, right? He's at like rock bottom. Yeah. And, and that's a tough spiral to get out of. And I think every single player and every professional player and every competitor player has gone through those stretches whether it's two months or three months or four months of where you just feel like you can't find your game and all of a sudden when you're getting into engagements and making decisions inside the game it's not based off intuition it's not based off confidence it's based off like 10 different steps going on inside your brain to be like okay I suck individually I need to like find a way to manufacture the perfect fight mm. to take and that pulls you out of your game even further at times I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you I understand what you mean I just would wish that as a team they were sometimes able to analyze and realize what's happening and say listen and take a step back. Like, take a step back right now. You are IGL. You have to figure out solutions on the fly. I cannot imagine how Kerrigan's brain must be at times just completely over flooded. Like, literally over flooded. Think about this, these five overtimes they had in Dallas, right? How are you supposed to take oh. time to think about your own play? It just, it's just not possible. We were laughing and talking to him about that at the after party, and he was just like, he was like, yeah, after like the second overtime, just don't, don't even think of anything, don't even watch anything. Like none of that was Counter Strike, none of that <laughs> was like a playbook. That fact. was, that was just like whatever we can do, we're doing. But he, he does that, and I think it's, it's incumbent to his role and his responsibility in the team that whenever he's having a bad game, he rarely gets the space and the time to take a deep breath and yeah. come back into the game, which is what sometimes you see players having a rough start, but they'll work their way into getting back into the game but Kerrigan is just like guys can I stop and they're like no you, you go back you go and get in there you know it's like please please come on give me a second he does it willfully but I think it hurts him in the long term yeah. it does to some degree but there is another player on that team that he can rely on that he can lean on when he needs to and that is of course Rain who we caught up with lean on me. so Rain if we're talking about papers when it comes to individual performance you've been performing better than you have in recent times this is actually one of your best performances since Antwerp so what's changed other than not reading the papers uh, well, as you said, I don't read the papers, no, uh, but uh, I think it's just uh, wanted to end the season good. Um, the team is playing good and I feel good individually as, as well. So uh, it was a couple of rough games in the start of Dallas, but after that I picked it up and it's been, it's been a roll since. And do you feel like yesterday in the heroic game, like Nuke obviously there was chances for you to be able to win it, but on Inferno you were kind of being baited out on some of these rotations. Do you feel like they were kind of in your heads? I think at the moment the heroic got our number in a way. I think they, they know how to play against us very well. So I think we have a lot of uh, things to discuss if we meet them further on in the tournament. We think we got to figure out a different way to approach the game, um, and uh, something we're going to have to do for the next season anyway. So yeah. So for Vitality today, last time you played was back in Rio. It was when they won. They went on to win the whole event as well. But you two are both in a, a different spot. It feels like I would say that you guys are kind of showing a better shape here, where they have not quite come and hitting the mark. What advantage do you feel you're going to have going into this one? Well, I think they just had a little bit of a cold start. It was the first tournament since the major for them. I think uh, the game after it was just glad they picked it up as well. So I think they're going to be a tough opponent no matter what. I think that we had a little bit more uh, experience of so late in, in tournaments. So I think maybe we have a little bit of a advantage in that way. We played more games since the major. Uh, but other than that, I don't think it's it's going to be a face with the totality game. It's been close every time we play them, so it's going to be a fun game.
I mean, there's a guy who knows what a major winning hangover feels like, and he also knows that they may have already shaken it off. Yeah, I mean, well, I think that's that's some kind words over, and, and yeah, I think that's exactly what we saw from Vitality that gave him. I just touched on it as well, but Rain has been Rain has been just so fantastic for mm. this team. It's crazy the longevity his career yeah. is just having, where he's still delivering this kind of a level is yeah, the level bonkers, yeah, is invaluable. Like it's invaluable. Like he's yeah. supposed to have he's supposed to have a role where you at best do one for one trade. Like listen, you take a huge risk, you take part of the map sometimes with a flash, sometimes without, and then you get an open kill and then you get traded. That's it. At the end of the day, you're gonna be I don't know. 19 to 21 scoreline, thank you, job done. He's actually flying high in these numbers. Like, he's having moments, even yesterday in the game against Heroic, he has moments where the parts of the map that he's taken become like a pivotal point to just change the entire situation. Triple hit in six seconds, and he goes on. Like, as, as, as Kerrigan, having someone like it's a luxury on your roster that is yeah. actually performing, it just, it's like a cheat code in Counter-Strike. Like, you, you're allowed to do things that you shouldn't be allowed to do because he gets away with it. Yeah, I, go on. Oh, I was just going to say, he certainly does. It also feels like it, it, there's sort of this almost cycle in, in the public zeitgeist where someone dares to speculate, oh, maybe Rain would consider the next step. Maybe there's a new yep. game coming out. He won't want to do it. And then just immediately we get this reminder that, oh, no, there's a reason. He's been on this roster since its inception, since three organizations ago. He has been the unchanging piece of one of the best rosters in Counter-Strike. Yeah, and, and I, mean, it, it show, I mean, it's always been one of those things that's like been like whispered stories over the years of all the talented players he have, and you always ask him, like, who's the best player? on your team and I was like rain Rain's the most mechanically gifted. Like it's crazy. Like Twist said it when he first joined FaZe. I think Nico even said it back when he was on FaZe with him as well. Like just the amount of people who have respect for that game. Um, absolutely wild to see Rain still still delivering. Now speaking of mechanically gifted players, there sure. is one who is sort of known as the chosen one at this point in Counter Strike, and he's over on the other side. So let's talk about Vitality here, and I'll serve this up to you. You like to talk about Zaiwu? I do like to talk about Zaiwu. It's one of my favorite things in life, actually. After talking with Jason, my second best player, my second favorite player to talk about. Yeah, there we go. Who is it? Am I your best? Player? talk about simple <laughs> mm. what a boring answer anywho <laughs> <laughs> moving on listen um it's it's kind of an interesting story in terms of like head-to-heads between phase and vitality because for the longest time it felt like vitality could never get past that final holder of face clan but now hear me out the last five maps have gone in the sense of vitality last five maps but the caveat is out of these five three have gone to overtime so we're always talking about these brawl like really sweaty battles where everything is a little unclear and chaotic we have this score head to head thank you production right there with the Hallyoop. that's crazy that's why i'm saying these games always deliver huh jason look at this graphic just 10 dudes in a server beautiful getting sweaty maniac it's getting in there oh love it yeah I'm, I'm down for it like i said this is basically a grand final to me so give me all the overtimes give me five of them give me six of them give me one on every single map i'm into it Th this team i it's going to be interesting to see like this is always like a cool question out of winning the major and obviously the slow start against imperial matt just touched on it saying we just came off a tournament of like the most pressure we've ever had the most pressure event we've ever been to and then came in here and weren't really prepared and that's like a splash of cold water into your face so now the question is how can you respond after that now the question is can you pick up the pieces and obviously they've done it once before to get to this point um phase is a new level phase is a new challenge and also i don't even like when i look at the loss that phase took yesterday against heroic i don't even have like any real indictment of phase or any like kind of like crazy red flag or like read like that's just a very good team they lost to and that's going to happen so i still think this phase clan is performing very very well despite that loss yesterday and this is a huge test for vitality right out of the major it certainly is. And I mean, when we looked at, at the statistics so far at this event, the one that shocks me is Sphinx, right? Sphinx was such a huge piece of that becoming a major winning team, of that becoming a championship caliber team. And uh, maybe it's taking a little while to get the gears turning again. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's had a really, really rough coming of age here in Washington. I mean, we have the numbers and you don't need to have a PhD to analyze them. These are bad numbers that he's having currently here. <laughs> uh, listen, some of the maps that he's played, I think he's been doing what he needs to do in terms of executing his role, but the success has been absolutely none here. Absolutely absent. He's been destroyed on overpass. You think about that game versus Imperial, he hasn't seen the sun, and that's not because of the fog. Second game as well, very strugglesome for Spink. So we're looking for him to show a little bit of composure and bounce back from these complicated first games. We are indeed, and we actually might have a little bit of insight into how he's feeling ahead of this game, because Banks caught up with him for an interview. So Spinks, you are one of the stars of Vitality for sure, but right now, since coming back to this event from the Major, your individual level's not been up to the same standard. Why do you think that is? What have you noticed? Well, uh, before we came here, we didn't play a lot. And I had also a couple of days I was uh, sick. So oh. the last uh, two weeks, my hours on CSGO are not so high, but uh, we've, I'm working on it just to get the, back to the form for the last uh, couple of games for this uh, season, and uh, that's it. You feeling better now? Yes, of course. 
There you go. He's got a smile on his face as well. Now, we heard from the team as well after coming back from the major, not as much practice. You guys trying to find this goal. What's it like in the mood in the team right now? How's the motivation to try and go further and win this tournament? Well, uh, I think the motivation is fine overall. Of course, it's not high like maybe other teams, but it's definitely fine. We, we had a really good season, but we want to finish the season also with a good note. And uh, we just want to show we, show we are good no matter what. And in terms of going up against FaZe today, it seems to me when I look down this veto options of what you could have, that you guys kind of win in most maps in this. Do you think they'll try to throw something different than you expected to, to get an advantage? Uh, no, we are just in... I was just told the maps and it's just like we expected. Oh, okay. Different to last time and back in Rio? Mm, I don't remember exactly the maps, but I think they are similar. I think they are similar. Okay, I'm looking forward to see it. Spinks, thank you very much. Uh, can I just say, a close friend of mine had the emergency surgery today because of medical problem. So I just want to say, Maor, Achie Akar, Oyevotcha, Tee Bari, and I'm going to be here. Kind words from Spain. Wishing him well. Message back home, wishing him well, wishing him health, and saying that he'll see him soon as well. So uh, maybe a little bit of added motivation head into this, you know, knowing that, that maybe you're playing uh, to, to show a little bit of strength to a friend as well. Yeah, of course, uh, whatever works for them to get him going. I was just thinking, in terms of like the trajectories of teams, right? I feel like Vitality is where FaZe had been in the past, which is post a whole lot of success, and then obviously not playing the best. And how do you deal with it? And like, what kind of phase are you showing yourself and the rest of the world? The kind of strike you can play with. Not everything is clicking. Like, phase are veteran with that. They've, we've had moments where everybody was ready to sell their stocks on phase. Like, yep, yeah, that's done. It's over. Oh, they didn't win. Every the, group stage. Didn't win yeah. the Grand Slam in Dallas. That's it. I'm out. Rain, please get kicked. Oh, they didn't win this major. That's it. I'm out. And every single time they've shown that the floor of phase is extremely high and they're still able to bounce back. Vitality are off the back of two big events win, which basically no one has accomplished in 23. But today is a bit more complicated. Less motivation, the plan has been accomplished. So what do you show? What kind of deep strength do you show to us now that not all the elements are aligned for you? It feels like the conversation, even from the Vitality camp ahead of the major, was about finding the peak at the right time. So they found that perfect peak for the perfect event at the perfect time, but now you're past the peak. You're, you're maybe going down into the valley, and the question is how far down are you going to go? Because if you can win here, three in a row starts that conversation of era, control, dominance. Whereas if you just go out with a whimper at this point, well, it was a peak. Sure, I think it kind of kind of shows you, yeah, it, it was this like a little hot streak that they caught to win that major, or they actually have a solid foundation to, 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 to fall back yes. on in these kinds of tough situations as well. Because again, one thing, you know, Maniac described FaZe in like a, in like the macro sense, but if you look at it in the micro sense, this team doesn't give up maps. They don't give up games. The amount of comebacks they have, even if they end up losing it, is spectacular. So can we see that same fight and tenacity out of Vitality? Because let's be real, it, it'd be a pretty easy excuse to fall back on, a pretty well recepted, uh, accepted excuse by the community if they were right. Like, yeah, major hangover, you know, this was a little bit exhausting. And we poured so much in the major. They'd probably get a little bit of a pass. Do they give themselves a pass? And listen, I, I know you're right, and I would be ready to give them a little bit of leeway on that. But there's yeah. also this caveat of the teams that you have faced in Paris, where I feel like sure. they have something to prove. They oh, yeah. still have something to prove in the sense of, hey, show me the receipts of who you played against in Paris. Fair enough, you've got the trophy, but these are the people you've beaten. This is the run that they would, if they had had this in Paris, it'd be like, no doubt. Exactly. Yeah. Look, they've just put Cloud9 to bed. Now they're playing against Face Clan, if you put these two heads on your wall, then suddenly it starts getting more serious and you add a posteriori credibility to what you were able to achieve. So I think there's something to be done if you're Vitality. There must be some sort of way to find that motivation, to make a statement, to say, listen, we're the best in the world right now, yeah. period. Not, not because of a run, not because of flukes, not because of whatever opponents we've played. We're the best. You have a chance to prove it. Also, yeah, you, want us, you wanted us to beat the best teams in the world? Well, we're going to do it right now. Yeah. We're going to do it right here, right now, this weekend. They are indeed, or at least hoping to do so, and it does just absolutely change that conversation, right? I mean, they've already entered the annals of history, the last CSGO major. That's theirs. That's guaranteed. But could they be that last dominant team? Last year, year of phase, year of Na'Vi before that. Now is it the time of vitality? I mean, listen, there's always this, this idea of willing to do more, to accomplish more, to be more successful, and not just be happy with whatever little success you've been able to fight. Just think about Sai Wu, for example, on an yes. individual level. Think about the year that he could be able to achieve right now he could be looking for a third MVP medals he could be looking for a third year as the best player in the world these are all sort of motivations I know we hear from him I know he's probably a little too noble humble and thinks about the big picture and the game and having fun with his teammates <laughs> like just 
Give me a little bit more than that, you know? <laughs> Realize the chance that you have. You absolute <laughs> little rat. You are the best player to touch that game. Want more, do more. I mean, I love him to death. You know, I, that's yes. no surprise. But there is something to be done. There's something to be achieved. And there's always an opportunity to, to write that little extra little line on your resume. I mean, every prior year that we've had Zaiwu in the number one or even the number two conversation, it's been about who's going to be right there. You mean the every year he's played Counter-Strike? Every year he's played Counter-Strike. But it's never been an undisputed thing. <laughs> We're just Chill, nobody else has an argument. <laughs> what he's trying, what he has the opportunity to do this year with us not having the same start to the year that we expect from a player like Simple, with us having waivers from other top contenders, is this year, if he can build on his major form, on the run that he had before yeah. this event, if he can get back to that level, it will be indisputable. There will and be no conversation about who's the number and one. And it's a great moment to do so as well, because we know that when the Vitality machine is well oiled, as it was in Paris, he can be the star. Like, he will have the numbers, he will yeah. be up there at the top of the scoreboard and you'll have plenty of highlights. What people have been asking from Zaiwu time and time again is, on stage, on a high pressure situation, bail your team out of horrible moments. Bail your team out of a downside, a downturn. Single-handedly step exactly. up to the Just plate. Just be like, Get hey, an ace yeah. as they entry onto B-side Anubis. Like, look at me, I'm the captain now. Like, I'll do it myself. And I wish that this could be the moment that he does it because this is obviously not the 10 out of 10 vitality. We've, we've realized that, they've talked about it, they've been honest about it. It's a chance as well for him to put a little bit more on his back. I don't think he's got it in him. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't think he's got it in him. I mean, look, he's, Why you gotta hurt me like he, that? he's still he's still an incredible player. And he's still off. the best this player of the year. Time. Obviously, I don't even like up to this point, it's not even a dispute. And who knows what happens in the second half of the year? But I, it's hard to imagine anyone overtaking him. But I just don't think he has that in his game. And like that's fine, that's fine. And he's kind of said it in interviews as well. Like I'm just gonna play my game. I'm gonna be the kind of player that I am, and that's all I want. And that's admirable as well. And he's gonna do it to an excellent degree. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess we're fine with it. Yeah, we we have to be. I think I don't think there's gonna be. I don't think we're steering that ship in another direction. I think we're gonna. To get that kind of attitude, that kind of fire out of that you see out of like a simple who's just like, I got four horrible teammates. I'm just, come on, hop on my back. I mean, I'll, I'll cast a little aspersion on that though, because if you even think about the trajectory of how long he's been competing versus a simple, it hasn't been that long in the grand scheme of things, right? He still developed so much as a person in front of our eyes in terms of what he's willing to do in terms of media, talking to people. Yeah, but I think at this point, I when, know, four yes, or five years, you know you're what right. you're going to get. I wish I would, yeah. I, I would like to jump on that. <laughs> no, no, jump no, on you be, I had to shut that down before you no, I was ready. I was <laughs> well, you know, tried to take this train out of the station. I was, ready, derail. I was ready to give that up. I, Jason is right. If, if you have that in you, it doesn't take four, five, six years to kind of kick in, right? Yeah. He is who he is. And I think what we're looking for is like the final 0.001% just to get more because we all want we all want more. We will just kind of a spoiled kind of I mean, people. I don't even want more in terms of like the, the Counter-Strike necessarily. Like the Counter-Strike you put out at the Major is like crazy. Like if we get mm -hmm. that Zywoo, like I don't even care if you don't take over games. But there is that kind of factor of Zywoo, which would be great to have in certain moments like this where he will just, oh yeah, we're down like 13 to 7. I'm going to get like four kills with a hero up, and then we're just going to win. We'll see if he can do it. You want to throw, got it. What do you want to do? He's the best player of all time. Throw a mouse into the or audience. No. Tip a monitor <laughs> over. Time is an abstract construct. <laughs> Take full command. Let's talk about this series, right? Okay, let's zoom sure. back in. I guess so. Phase versus Vitality. We, we've zoomed out on Vitality for the moment, but here's the chance. Here's how they've got to do it. How do they do it, Matthew? Yeah, listen, uh, we, we can talk about the maps just a little bit. We didn't touch on them too, too much. Phase nope. going for Mirage in itself is not a, a map that they've played a whole lot very recently, and that is an interesting prospect. It's probably one of the few maps where I've seen weaknesses in the Vitality camp, as in out right weaknesses on in terms of defense i don't really think it's a map that has fit them too too much i think it's a map they've been they've been punished on quite a few times and if you're phased that means that you're starting anubis with a great great opportunity to just immediately put pressure on your opponent knowing mirage is round around the corner i don't think vitality can afford a slow start i, I don't think they can come back from a deficit on anubis at this point i'm almost ready to just be willing to give mirage straight to phase yeah, that, that's fair. I think Mirage I, Mirage for itself seems to lend itself to a lot of like phase, like philosophy of what they're doing right now with like a very pared down kind of a tactical element to their game. A lot of individual skill, a wide open map, a map that's very good for momentum calling and changing pace that Kerrigan's going to excel at as well. I think Kerrigan probably feels pretty comfortable entering on this map. We saw it a couple times in this tournament already, jumping into window, pushing through the murder hole, trying to wrap around CT spawn, doing some crazy things. But I mean, Anubis in itself, I don't know, this, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be really fun. I think, I guess for me, when I watch this map, I think one important player for FaZe is Rops, who has sometimes felt, you know, you want to talk about like weakness on Mirage um, for for Vitality. On Anubis, I feel like Rops still isn't like the most comfortable, which is unique to say with Rops, because I feel like he's always well prepared. Mm -hmm. But over at that A bomb site, I, I sometimes just feel like he's not he's not quite super comfortable in it. 
And speaking about comfortability, I remember yesterday during the commentary they were talking about maybe Zaiwu needing to find the ideal angles for his fights, right? And he started to really warm into it towards the end. I mean, obviously the highlight reel clips, but uh, we, we still haven't necessarily seen that full control on Anubis in particular. Mm, I would argue he's, he's getting there eventually. Uh, I, what I'm ready to give you is that I don't think he has got the same movement and unpredictability as he would have on different maps. Mm. And that sometimes frustrates me a little because you're obviously looking at the defense and you're thinking, hey, the, the name of the game on the CT side is to have the strongest defense in the place that is supposed to be the point of attack. That, that's, that's baseline counter-strike. And more often than not, it's your AWP. So that's why you see teams either playing double AWP setup or have their AWP moving around. You'll see Brokey will do it. Rops will play with the AWP on the A side. Yep. It's going to happen. And Zaiwa times, at least here, when we've seen them play Anubis, was kind of segregated away from the fight. Like he would be coming in the late rotation where the round is kind of over already the, the first line of smoke is being put down yeah. and he doesn't get that chance and when he does then we have a cs money play of the day ace with an ak-47 that's when he does i think too i won't even like necessarily lay that entirely at zaiwu's feet i mean i think it's also a product of this being the newest map in the pool and like as we all know still getting figured out like you know it's been in the pool for a decent time now but there's still going to be new things popping up some new team is going to find a different way of approaching a different path to get into a bomb site different set of smokes different flashbang timings and i think for offers especially that have to be mobile around the map sometimes it takes a little bit of time to like truly kind of feel comfortable in all the different possibilities in eventual Eventualities. Eventualities. That's complicated word. Yeah, that Let's is. stick with opposite. Let's Completely switch stick. to the other side. I feel like we've talked about Twist. We talked about Rops. We talked sure. about Rain. Who you want to talk about next? Haven't talked that much about Brokey. We talked about his pillow a lot. I don't Brokey. know that we talked about Brokey. He chucked that bad boy away yesterday in the Hero he's 2. He's like, uh, he's like, I'm out. He's getting serious. <laughs> yeah, he's like, that's what it was. It, though. Business time. Maybe it's time. More pillows. It's time to be ready. <laughs> Second pillow. Build a pillow for it. We're just going to cut to the player cams at one point. Brokey's going to be totally. Does he lost. have it today? That's the important question. Uh, I can tell go. you no? safely that he doesn't. Oh, no, no pillow. Here. Wow. A no pillow day. No from pillow. From All right. Here we go. Uh, isn't, he, in, isn't he like so clearly different than Zaiwu in the game? Like, I feel like in terms, of, in terms of if Zaiwu is like your your almost always right decision protocol into the game, Brokey is just like. I have one percent chance of making that work. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna cross that smoke. Yeah, yeah I'm jumping through that. Let's he's, go. Let's do he's it. He's different from like every other opera that we have right now. He like reminds me more of like a JW. JW. Yeah, yeah. Than any I other. Knew than you any, were yeah. going there. <laughs> he reminds me of a JW more than any other opera who's just like, man. As soon as chaos is created, he's like, I thrive in this. I'm ready. It's my for time. It. Yeah, it's my turn now. It's reloading the AWP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's but, a wild animal, and yeah. and that's also why, he, he, in my sense, he's and I would like him not to be, but I still see him as an X factor. Whereas you would argue you would like to have an op as being like main star mm. and that is it I, and he will take over and there's nothing we can do about it. Brokey, due to his style, I feel like, is a little bit hit or miss. But when he hits, it hits hard. Boy, it's I, over. It's hard. It's literally <laughs> over. I like the X Factor personally, and I know there was oh, a bit of an gone. X Factor in our predictions earlier, so we're going to hop into our unicorn predictions here. I had a bit of a riot in the green room. They didn't like the full NA picks that we forced upon them, so we've we corrected, established, it. Uh, corrected we've the established record here. Policy. Turns out Faith in NA may be not going to reward you very often. I am kind of surprised by how many people win Vitality. Don't get me wrong, I am I'm too. not going to get mad about it. I can roll with that, but I thought it would be more of a 50-50 kind of affair. Oh, I think it, I think it certainly is a fifty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, not not in terms of the number of predictions, but yeah. no, that's not how math works. 50, 50, yeah, yeah. Not 50. No, I got, I got you. <laughs> well, you know, Jason is fifty percent of the credibility, and then the rest. Yeah, of us I make count up as I count as three. I, I, I understand. Yeah, with but wait, if it's really Jason and the rest of the world, then it's really 50-50. <laughs> I'm sorry, the math that's checks just, out. Oh, it's either win or you lose. 50-50 right? chance. I think that's how statistics happen. Either something happens or it doesn't. What's gonna happen here? We've got vitality. We've got phase. We're stepping into the server in Anubis. Give me one final thought. What's what? What are we getting? What are we getting? Get get? ready for the Zaiwu show. I'm so ready. It's <laughs> happening. <laughs> did I shock Zaiwu you with that one? Was that a curveball? Didn't see it coming, did you? <laughs> you could have seen it coming, I think. So oh, Twist dropping 30. Ooh. Twist dropping 30 in the nation's capital, but not his nation, but close enough to his nation, it's his region. Place. Yeah, close-ish. We'll annex him. Uh, I'll go for this time. We'll bring it through. It's time for phase. It's time for vitality. It's time for fireworks. And it's time for Scrawny and Launders to take this one away.
Welcome back to the stream here between Scrawny and Launders. Excellently unpacked by our professional analysts on the desk, led by North America's Darth Mike. But now we get to unpack this game, folks, right? Vitality versus phase. I'm gonna say that one more time. Vitality versus Vi phase. Oh, I'm so stoked. This is gonna be an awesome game. We get Vitality who's starting to gear up since what was a pretty shocking first showing since they won a major. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Vitality as major champions, and we're talking about phase who, up until that heroic game yesterday, were starting very strong. And even within that heroic game, I mean, that 16-14 loss on new, or overtime? Did we go OT? We had a lot of games yesterday. It was OT, it was the first time. All the other complexity, and yeah, 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 yeah. So we go to OT, you know, that, that could have been a map one win. We could have seen more from them versus heroic. They really did just kind of lose it out on Inferno. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, they were not of the same caliber as the Danes. But it's still an impressive phase. It's a it's a excellently performing rain, yeah. which is something that you love. That means entries are going successfully for phase. Kerrigan had some individual struggles, but the calls still look good. This is a phase that can beat the reigning major champion. Yeah. Now for Vitality on this side, like th let's talk about their story just for a quick second. They won the major. They won Rio. They didn't go to Dallas. There's a chance they win three tournaments that they attend in a row with this one. And this side of the bracket is phase G2 in themselves. This would be a very legitimate, very difficult run as well for them to do it. And that's starting off losing 0-2 to Imperial. Mm. Yeah, well, we, could, we could forgive them for that and forget about it if they are able to just, you know, bounce back, win out the rest of the event. That opening match will just be forgotten about. But alas, here comes the hit. Apex already on the kill feed, but Twists will return the favor. It's an A-Site Prime for the taking. Now, Rops is sat back by Rugs. He's going to hear all of this. Oh, I like it. Rops oh, doesn't get any, though. There's too many. All right. Well, they're just going to keep flooding forward, then into Kerrigan, oh. then into Brokey, and now there's nobody left on this bomb site, and the plant is not for twists. Nice tap on the retake, but he's trying to fight back into a bomb site that his team had under control at one point, down to three seconds, forced to go outwards. Vitality's quadruple canal flank, and Rops got nothing. It looks crazy, but they did it together. It and they come in with four so close together that Rops cannot discern the footsteps. It's just too hectic. He's thinking one, two, three guys. Not four guys. Not four guys running through canals all at the same time. But Vitality, they're a pack. And that's a strong pistol to win. Uh, Vitality, it's, I think Kerrigan, when I talked to him in that segment earlier, he talked about Vitality and how, how strong Anubis has been for them. And I think they... Went up against Monty in the major, if I'm not mistaken, right? They were able to beat them and end their record on Anubis. I think it was their two streaks going head to head. I believe so. So, you know, they have shown definitely a lot of strength on this map. Correct. A good place to go. Yeah, Monty's was like a 39 million win streak. So, mm -hmm. not a small feat. Hadn't lost since 1983. <laughs> the Technicolor just came out. Producer Martin just downloaded CS. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> little incendiary here in front of the well-equipped phase by. We've got two outside of dark with Sphinx sap within it. Oh, rain phases the smoke to the success of phase. 5v4, they're going to use that as the trigger to move in. Flashbang does blind him for a second, but look at that. Nothing but frags for phase. A completely overrun bomb site that puts up zero defense. Essentially, Vitality's pistol is moot. A kill or two would have been nice, you know, just for posterity. But to come in on an anti eco and lose like you lost to a full rifle, well, if you look at the guns, it certainly feels like there are no gaps and weakness here for phase. And it starts off with Rain, who I talked about game planning for Kerrigan versus Rain on this map. And for Kerrigan, it's more bird's eye view of the map and all the players and how they might move in a more general way. Whereas Kane's, uh, Rain, excuse me, talked about how he paths towards Khan every round, you know? How his opponent is going to play in Khan and go for that one peak every round. How he's going to phase the smoke like he just did in that same situation. That's going to be his job. Getting kills just like this. And we see Khan gets more complex every single time teams play Anubis in the small details about the approaches into mid in the beginning of the round versus the angles that are being held. But one thing that's for sure is that CTs are more often than not out in the open holding their smoke. 
You know, there's never a super safe, good angle to hold on to Kontu, but there is the understanding that CT side needs to play people inside of there. You can't give that up and win. Well, he was ready to try and hold on to it, but rain so quick. I felt like the smoke hadn't even been completely faded. And with the first one falling, unraveled fast. As I mentioned, Rain having a stellar performance here in Washington. Yeah, it's, Ant it's Antwerp Rain. Rumor on the street is he's heading for vacation somewhere here Punta in Cana. the Americas. Punta Cana. Yes. Oh, nice. Good for him. So he's looking to get there as fast as humanly possible. The, uh, the cocktails are calling. Heroic tried to slow him down a bit. But even in that game, I think Rain didn't go positive, but he honestly played very well. I don't feel like I see this boost very often. Yeah, once I've seen it once. Okay, I liked it. Obviously, the same incendiary slash smoke that you would throw to heaven also dismantles it, so it'll still be in their back pocket unspotted. Also looked like a very minute little bit of angle to work with. Regardless, it moves Magisk's M4, the only rifle of this one for Vitality, from inside of the A site, back towards mid. Desert Eagle with the double! Oh. Zaiwu. The composure right there? The first one was looking sloppy. Yeah, but even then he was shooting slowly. <laughs> and ready for the next peak. That visualization Zaiwu has is... It's on par with, you know what, a lot of people in the server, I'll just say that, but the execution, the consistency. Oh, oh he come just on. keeps on delivering. No way. Three, Three already. kills already for him. He's got the armor, 44 health. He's going to get this retake going. You know someone's here. Rain's on the pillar, sees players in the back. Zaiwu Dupree are dead. Still three up. Rain, little bits of health. No kit on the play. Rain could still take this away from them. And Magisk jumps on top of it. I think it comes close, but I, I believe he's got it. It feels good. I think Rain... I think uh, Magisk runs from this if he doesn't grab it. And even yeah. though it comes down to the last couple seconds, oh, it's Zywoo. a win for Vitality. And that's leveraged by Zaiwu, 100%. What a round. I thought it was just going to be the two kills, and then we talk about next round, but... <laughs> Dude. The great camera angle, I feel like, on yeah. that double, because you can hear the slower shoot. It's like... And you see him not move at all. Right. He was so calm with that first bit of spam, because it's almost like he knew he would get the next headshot. Second guy's not a problem, just gotta bop, bop, bop. Yeah. Bada boom. Just use the first guy's a warm up, that's all. All right, well, folks. This is gonna be a dog fight. I was gonna say, if you guys <laughs> weren't here yesterday for the phase versus heroic, that was map a crazy one, ass game. It did not stop. Every yeah. round, back and forth, super electric pace. Like yeah. if you had the if you had the the privilege of watching phase versus ends with the with the with the five overtimes back in Dallas. Oh, yeah. It kind of felt like that, but with, with within relegation. There were no saves. There were no saves. There was Just that retake clutch that attempt, clutch attempt, clutch attempt. Came through on Inferno. That that one's worth going back and watching. It was late at night, so a lot of and, the Europeans didn't get to catch it, but that's that was a match for sure. And we actually haven't been able to cast a lot of phase lately. We didn't touch phase once during the Paris Major, so I remember just getting the treat of sitting back and watching them play versus BNE, play versus Navi, play versus Heroic. Phase have been giving us such great games, for better or for worse in terms of their results. But entertainment value? Phase at an all-time high. Yeah, no kidding. So, uh... Can't luckily, criticize the opponents they get in their runs, that's for sure. Saiwu so looking to leave a mark here, round four. He's not thinking about this, is he? Oh, okay. Ooh, nice. Oh. Robs, double kill, double headshot. Apex and could try to take it back, and he will do so. With just a bit of damage done to him. This is two members of phase towards long B. The others up through dark. Timing's looking good. Not hiding oh, their surprised. presence, not masking their sound, but also not clearing their corners. They've lost one. Sphinx peaks. Double third! Everybody falls in front of Sphinx! He's gonna get pinned into the corner. Brokey versus Apex now. And Apex has opted to go the long way around. Sphinx nearly did everything. Man, some say nothing is more ancient than Sphinx. That was... That was a classic move by him. Apex able to walk around. Brokey tucked into the same spot that Sphinx just used to shred phase. And Apex, will he think of this? Oh, oh. no chance. Brokey comes out. 
closes it for FaZe. Hell of an effort from Spink. Oh, really? Yeah. Unfortunately, you have to characterize it as that. But uh, that kind of hold, it feels like he's only been a pro for a year. But for some reason, plays like this are vintage because you know, that's why he got the big contract from Ends to get the chance to play for Vitality. And he talked about his hours in his interview uh, before the game started. And right before that in the green room, I was saying, I wonder if, if Spinks has some motivation problems because when he came on the for the honeymoon, insane honeymoon, into the Pro League victory, into Zaiwu's best friend disappeared for the better part of six months. But then as soon as the Major came back into the calendar, Rio was the first one, he got it together. He has been insane in the last few. No way we do this again. Again? Well, the first one was Spinks with the M4. Then it was Zaiwu's Deeg. Now he's dead. Can already see the path whereby FaZe recuperate their losses and walk away with their third, get the, into the lead. But there's also pockets of presence here from Vitality. Magisk a little concerned with middle. If Sphinx can be a bit faster and come help this site, that'd be one thing. But Magisk peeks out. Gets toppled, and now poor Apex is going to have a ton of pressure. Nice one dig out of him. Drive-by shots, just trying to keep himself out of that corner. Doesn't want to get killed. Goes for next contact. Not able to snap it down to Rops. But Sphinx is here, and he finds timing on Brokey point blank. Rops, 1v2. Gets it back on Sphinx first. That's critical. That's the gun down. But Dupree has also picked up the weapon from mid. And Rops, oh, so ready. Man. We've got highlight real moments oh, okay. in the first five of this first map. Oh, the clutch is beautiful, man. He's an entire B of three ahead of the us. The clip offs are crazy. I mean, it's whoever's holding the angle right now. They're not letting them go. Accuracy from Rob's clean. Yeah. That's a 2K hold on long A that previous round into this clutch with very similar energy into a broke vitality. Economy is a conversation for them already. It's really fun to go back and forth, especially when you, you know, do it to your opponents on the CT side. But it, you're you're the one who are more in jeopardy. Apex missed a chance there. A free frag on Kerrigan was to be had. Freeze pistol. That's all that's going to hold on in this one. So I will get smoked and phase convert four players alive back to where they started all this. With a little comfortable gap between them and Vitality. And this is the T side of Anubis after all. It is. You know, we have had these conversations. Maui, Snake, and Anders were having a good one yesterday about how we've seen the CT side start to strengthen a little bit, get more aggressive, find comfort moving beyond bomb sites. You know, I'm, I'm glad that changes weren't immediate for Anubis when so many people were calling for the T side to get nerfed. I know. It's like if you give a map time, eventually people will find reaction. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. We're Counter Strike players. Yeah. We adapt. The late timing on the mid made and it's doesn't find anybody because Rain's ahead of it. Very spread offense this round from FaZe and also a very silent one. No smoke spams, no util usage really. Seeing what Vitality throw out first. Again, Rain. He's someone to learn from, at least playing this position, even though FaZe can struggle on Anubis at times. This off angle, Spinks is not ready at all for it, but no second frag. Duprio has to be cautious. Ooh, nicely oh, done from him. That's the one thing. Once you've revealed yourself on Dark, you can play the wall along, but the moment you try to cross back, you've got that skinny pillar to deal with the long peak. Dupree has to make sure that he peaks that with intent. And his intention kills Kerrigan to give Vitality Man advantage. A little late play out through middle. Rops gets contact as Magisk offers up a kill. Oh, and an equaling kill at that. It is, yeah. It's a, it was a 4v3 for a second with decent control and time on the clock. Yeah, only 30 left when he decides to press his luck. And yeah. uh, press your luck may not pay off. Zaiwu about to get pinched. Three attackers. But the mid player is also not coming just yet. Twist's now starting to work down. Zaiwu gets a chance in sight first. But it's just on Rops, Apex, and Dupree versus Twists and Brokey. 
I know who I'd take. With the bomb plant on Faze's side as well. Brokey's post up for the mid peak. Apex given a chance. And Twists goes deep. It's going to be very difficult to unroot him from that position. He opts himself to play in heaven instead. Long player now comes around that corner, dies instantly, and so will Apex. So very comfortable post plant for FaZe in the 2v2. That's sweet, that's sweet from Twist. I mean, the only reason he goes back there in a spawn is to like buy seven seconds. If he sees into the canals there, he knows no one can be flanking. He can play his spot more freely and he stacks right above Brokey. It's beautifully done. And uh, as you were saying, yeah, like those two in mid rounds are so reliable. Of course, even if Twist loses this frag, it's still going to be traded. Magisk push. Wonder if Apex and Vitality are yeah, yeah. You know, bothered I have, by that one. I've heard the conversation, of course, that it's not as simple as not pushing when you have the advantage. But when you see that happen, you know you could rewind time and they would take back that trade every day for just that information because FaZe were probably slowly going to lose the round. Even with that kill, it took them to eight seconds to get the bomb plant. Yep. So you could definitely say it was maybe unwarranted. Oh, oh. no way. Ooh, that's a gift. What did Rain do wrong? The one time he plays bridge. He's like not going back there. Everybody watched Sonic beat Device yesterday, and now the Deagles are swinging. Look at this. Zywoo in with another. Bro, nothing's free for FaZe. <laughs> yeah. Three-round lead, sure enough. But uh, some of these rounds with such little weaponry, Vitality still pulling it off. But that's the thing. It's actually kind of only these rounds somehow. Oddly enough. So, Rob's Twist, and Brokey. These are the three players that are meant to be last alive that Kerrigan has talked about, watching them work together. He said sometimes the communication's not great, but they always make magic happen, you know? And they've definitely got that chemistry. Well, it shouldn't take too much magic to get into this bomb site. Magisk and Apex, Desert Eagles only to hold. Apex getting a little wild, sets up Magis, but the Heaven player is able to wrap around. They didn't see that one coming, and Zywoo's right back to it. Mid-peak canceled. Rops, low health, oh. dropped by Zywoo, who comes through with three kills on the round. And just like that, Vitality, Rob went away. Come on. So pistol round and two Ecos for the CT side of Vitality right now. The biggest win out of that, besides the numerical rounds, is the confidence to be like, all right, listen, we can win this round. The rifle is supposed to be easier. I mean, look at the aim, at least, on its face. You can see they're shooting well. But I'm going to say that, that that game that FaZe played versus Heroic was a great warm-up for anything, to be ready for anything. Mm. They had so many warm-up rounds. They went to overtime on Nuke, I think it was. They had, they got pushed their absolute limits. And that was a, a test to Kerrigan, who got his form together in time for this event. But when he went up against Heroic, it was like another level because Heroic were also playing so damn well. People have really powered up in the last couple of days. But it's going to be pretty tragic for Vitality if they can't pick up a, a rifle here on CT, at least. The magic of Zywoo and Desert Eagles keeps them in it so far. There are limitations in round nine for phases by. But still they'll pressure mid, mid bridge. Pretty consistent opening bit of presence that they've been throwing out. That's true though. That does take a lot of power from them being so low on grenades. We're gonna see a relatively quiet map for the next 30 minutes or 30 seconds, I should say. Rain versus Sphinx queued up in dark. This is pretend we're full strength, going to a default, ready to sight hit without dying. And save oh. the grenades and Kerrigan. What a find. He gets tagged to 17, but he takes Zywu. There we go. That'll bring up the confidence of a man who needs a bit of a buff. Sphinx can't back up. Nope. Took a step too far backwards. Now he's low. Puts Rain fully into kill mode. 
He knew exactly where he had to go and what was waiting for him. 30 on the clock. Dupree also empty-handed. This B-site has been unraveled. Nobody's able to put up a fight, not even Apex. Sure, the damage is there, but every member of Vitality goes down without a kill. You know, when you have a Deagle, sometimes you take an extra second to aim because you're going to hit the head or you die. And so sometimes that's why uh, players will do better with the Deagles than they can with a rifle. But right now, we're looking at a match that could be 10-0. You know, Vitality don't have pistols. So that's a pretty massive problem. And that Zaiwu shot didn't do too much to affect the outcome of the round right there. That was Kerrigan's one kill inside a bridge. But the B defenders die by their own merit, right? We have Sphinx, Sphinx made himself. a mistake. The B main, it's not smoke. And I think Vitality have the utility advantage, but for some reason, we don't have any con control, and we don't have any smoke in B main as well. So why is it that Sphinx can get shot in the back? At that point of the round, I think FaZe only had a one or two smokes. Twist having a hell of a game so far. 13 and 6. True that. Oh, Apex. Try to get cheeky. Inviting Kerrigan to hold that angle and then hoping the Deagle will find its home, but also putting Sphinx in front of it. You think this is just a Deagle spamming smoke? Next thing you know, Sphinx swings with the solo rifle, which is a setup we had seen previously, Vitality. The one M4, even though nobody survived last round. Oh, oh wait, wow. hold on. 5-7, that's clean. What are the unicorn odds that this round goes the other way? Loki, now, the sight. fast response. Exactly what they need, because there's nobody else here. Sphinx is playing the long flank. Spot it out. Exchanges a bit of damage with twists. Expects that somebody will come clear him. That's because Rops is alive. And he was correct that the Estonian is drawn back from his lurk in order to deal with said flank. Now that that's happened, there's nothing here for Vitality to win with, nor pick up. 7-3. And like you said, could have been 10. Dude, the curse has been lifted, finally. It was getting ridiculous. It's because we were talking about witchcraft yesterday. <laughs> Were we? Yeah, you were telling me you wanted to be a warlock because of the way they dressed. Don't you remember that? Oh. You're into the robes and stuff. That's, yeah. Which? I that. Man, do you. Magisk and Apex both get cleared out. And they had weapons. I throw Magisk. on like a Rick Owens cape. Yeah. You'd, I'll never hold you back, Wanderers. <laughs> okay. You are the main character. Saw that, <laughs> saw that shot and fought. Oh, well. We'll see how many times lightning can strike. Okay, so Vitality, they can lose when they have deagles in their hand. That's good to know. <laughs> Apex is like, whoa, whoa, what are you getting so mad about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, I don't like that energy, man. Come on. I'm the one who talks with my hands. <laughs> You are not French. I played a game of ping pong versus Apex in Paris. He told me that he has only lost one game of ping pong since Zaiwu joined the team, ever. All the head-to-head -head between Zaiwu and Apex, he's only ever lost once, and it was entirely because of bad lighting. Ah, a classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he sharked us, you know, started slow, made us think he was just okay. Mm. And then the moment you thought you had any ground to stand on, we got the full version of Apex. And you know those emotive laughs and kind of mocking pop-offs that he does when he's winning rounds of Counter-Strike? Well... He tucked it all away? No. Oh. He did it the whole entire time. Almost had Dinko in tears. Bridge burned out. Fast cross out of Kerrigan. I feel like he's been finding his openings in middle. Even that time, Apex could have shot him in the back of the head, able to recover it. A little peek down through connector towards A. Kerrigan taking up some responsibility, and this time there's really zero resistance in mid. Yeah, and there's no uh, reaction on the extremity here. Vitality oftentimes will flash retake outside B to see if anything's going on. But we can see Phase is holding passive, so that wouldn't necessarily net them anything. Spinks being low could 
have a huge impact on this round. And Magisk is on the secondary op, so we're not going to get that push from here. has gone so far, man. Ambitious. The bomb is, is not in a position to attack. This would have been, honestly, just a crazy lurk. Um, hmm. Dupree on the platform. Sphinx is right there with him. Zaiwu's deep in CT spawn. Not quite sure where he needs to be positioned. See, if they threatened... Uh, if they threatened a B-split with mid, then I could see Kerrigan, you know, doing something a little crazier makes sense, but instead he's just material lost. Flashes are good. They do come out from cave. Damage heard. It's actually Zywu to pick it up on the cross. Eight seconds to the clock. This one's awkward. This one's done. Toasted. Roasted. Boiled. Stewed. Hmm. Poor phase played on the clock, and that's the first round where they just looked uncomfortable. Maybe Kerrigan had some arcane knowledge about the setup that we don't, we weren't privy to. Uh, you know, maybe he just had been emails. rubbing the rune stones and he had some confidential data. Yeah, you know. I mean, we've seen uncomfortable moments from FaZe, but I think those were forced upon them by the Desert Eagle kills and whatnot. But this was mid control for free, five v five. All right, five v five with a lurk. And when you see the bomb not on anyone's back in spawn while everyone's spread out as far as they can be, you wonder, what was what was he cooking, you know? But that's okay. FaZe have actually, you know, don't let the scoreline fool you. FaZe have won every, you know, big rifle round up until that point, so... That's why Apex used it as a chance to pop off. Yeah. Take what you can get. Magisk, that secondary op revealing itself. Don't believe it ever shot last round. He sat on plat for a long time, and it was Zaiwu deep inside of the A site. Excuse me, B. So now they finding. They should switch it. They should switch it. They should, right? It's just like ancient. Fine. Rain also getting lost in the smokes that were on the exit of cave last round. So the utility made it awkward, and we criticized, of course, Vitality for a couple rounds prior, not using the nades to hold off the hit. They've got another couple volleys here. Apex could lay that down at the 45 second mark. Will they run through or do they hold? They extinguish it. Dupree catches twist. Good trade from Kerrigan. Three bodies here for FaZe. It's all in. And they see that barrel. So Rain clears the corner. Zywu's relegated behind smoke. There's no comfortable push, but it doesn't need to be comfortable. Zywu. Oh, missed shot point. Brokey. On this side of the pillar, they're worried about the dark play. Oh, the molly. Zywu holds off. Brokey's now committing to this plant. Rain is right there, and he catches the head of Dupree. This is going to be a real problem for Zywu to get out. He knows his right side is being held, and if Magisk had come up to clear it, that's one thing. Rain, it's right there on that smoke. So close to it. I think he has a gap. <gasps> oh, but no, no scope. Now the red spots. Brokey, second one's right there with him. Battle of the Ops. Magisk and Brokey, and a missed shot. Gives timing for Brokey to take the angle around the pillar. He plays, he dances like ballet, and even though he dies, Magisk gets on bomb. It comes down to the wire, but this one's all vitality. Oh, he did have to get that shot in. I think Brokey thought, I'm playing with the skinniest pillar on the site right now. I can only do this for so long. Magis could wrap to one side or the other, tries to take the fight. In his I know the first reaction to that is, why did he peek? He actually was winning in that position, but he doesn't know that Magis is literally sitting there waiting for him to move. And the reaction is perfect for Magis. The shot is missed from Brokey, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Are you actually a player? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay, we're coming in. <laughs> Are you actually all players? Matt's <laughs> <laughs> just talking shit, gets two op kills you are for the sportsman. first time in a month, dude. <laughs> and tries to go at Brokey, uh, who's been giving us the most, like... But that's when it hurts, right? Oh my god, Brokey's been putting up neuron pulsing clutches. Matt just gonna talk shit. Yeah. He said, I do this as a hobby, son. <laughs> <laughs> Go collect trains. Magisk back on the rifle. Ooh. Him and Zywu laying down lead. And Twist has already been found out as well. So this one's going to be Vitality on a sixth. Sure. It started with just the pistols and the Desert Eagles that came right after. Yeah. But now we've got back-to-back -back rounds Vitality can be proud about. At a CT side, you know, we talk about Anubis, T-Habs numerically. Uh-huh. No shock if Vitality bring this game back. This is one of those situations where you had to be there. If you watch this game, you see FaZe could have had a massive lead, but history is only going to remember who won Anubis.
not how they got there. And at this point, Faye's got to be kind of worried because this T-half is getting away from him. Things were lining up, but, uh, but Vitality, they finally have figured it out after winning only three pistoling rounds in the first 10. Look at this line. Nobody got crossed. Two for Magisk, two for Zaiwu, and an Apex closer. That's three in a row. Next one ties the game seven, or gives FaZe majority on the half. Back to mid-bridge we shall go. Everything changed when Dupree got mad. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Brokey did no wrong. That was nice. So I was like looking up above the smoke too, and then just has this inkling to snap down. You know, if you told me that Zywu is the first human being to have a computer chip installed into his brain, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd believe you. Yeah. It's either him or Anders. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. Anders installed it. <laughs> Zywu vision. And they're making some sound on the uh, jump up. Uh, yeah, Rain's gonna find timing, but they push! There it is. You alluded to it. Doesn't come in with the double kill. Rain could definitely still claw back control of sight. He's worried about Apex's spot and should be. But he gives up that bit of worry. And then they give up some control. Twists answers with one, but we are tied. Seven each as Vitality finally get out and aggressive on long. They haven't, they've been forgetting about Glizzy like way too often. There's a few times where Molly would have done them wonders on their on their side hits. The splits are coming in and uh, credit to Vitality for showing that like they can go for that flash retake on the outside of B, but they don't always throw it in. And I think FaZe were waiting for that moment for some time. They were pretty careful and slow in the earlier rounds at approaching this side of the map and we have Brokey standing back with the op holding for the flash to come, but it never did. So nicely done for Vitality, sort of conditioning this half, getting back on their feet. <laughs> what goes around comes around though. What would have been a nice free 5v4 ends up being the death of Dupree. Tech 9 blasts away, Sphinx stands, but Little mistake there trying to whip out the incendiary. Missed shot out of Zywu, which means the next two land. And he does hit Rops, then swaps to the Tech 9 where Apex will close this. It is a five in a row ending to the CT half for Vitality to take a lead before their offense. Welcome to the making sound. It's easy. We're gonna have three challenges. The one that does the most loud noise is eliminated. To measure, the noise. We're gonna use this little instrument. Let's get started. Drop the mic. <laughs> so much. It's easy for you. When I do 89, you can do whatever noise you want. It's not gonna happen. Well, I lost. Eliminated. And the word is... Carambit. Oh my god. I don't know. How much you saw? I saw six at him. <laughs> 
Looks cool, you know? It was uh, 65, 63, and 45. The so You won. Yes. Okay, fish. <laughs> you won? Yeah. Good luck. He won. You are, you are the master of this. <laughs> you are the master of this. Well, Vitality came in with a little bark behind that bite. It was not looking too good with the way they only picked up pistols and deagle rounds and the rifle rounds were going all phase, but when things started to change, Vitality grabbed onto that with two hands and now have themselves a lead heading into the T side. It sort of felt like it was going to be like three rounds to 12 when we talk about how close Vitality could have been, but after having some bad flubs on the rifles, they got those two and it suddenly feels like it's their game to lose. So looking for a second pistol. And Apex taking speed. Brokey's in the corner. Dual Beretta's ready. Kerrigan helps out to the right side. Now that he's down, Brokey moves forward. Looking for four. It's Rops to nab one at the end, but still a three-piece out of Brokey yeah. on the Berettas. I thought he got an ace. <laughs> <laughs> if you squinted a little bit when you were watching... To be fair, he shot at all five he players. Did. I think spiritually that was an ace. Mm -hmm. If you were to ask Brokey. If you asked Brokey, I think someone would have to tell him that he didn't get an ace. <laughs> yeah, so. Sure. That's because he's always kind of. Why do that to him? Because he's always kind of squinting. Yeah. That thousand mile stare. All right. So we trade pistols. But Vitality. Couldn't convert even in the first half, so FaZe could get a leg up here. Start off their CT side by converting. Well, we've seen what these Deagles can do. Deagles at this event, man. <laughs> Daiwu sends a teammate first. Oof, nobody able to capitalize on Rops. There, there it is. is. <laughs> Rops comes back, though, kills Magix. That's bomb. You know, so as much as Zywu was looking for another one, Rops is just racking up money. Three kills. Locking down. <laughs> that just happened, huh? <laughs> it was like a whirlpool effect. Just dragged him in. <laughs> like a Buddhist monk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I know the reference. <laughs> Nothing gets a point across like self immolation and llamas. Yeah. Just don't combine them. Oh, I thought you were talking about someone else. All right. <laughs> I would switch it to the Molly. They don't clear close, or at least the first doesn't. Sphinx luckily taking something here for Vitality, but a nade that sails forward. Oh my god, they say don't come in here. And tags all three. That's Look. fine. Vitality can just run it away. All good. <laughs> also, if you haven't noticed the giant pole on the side of your screen, you guys can head to Blast TV and vote on the show match map. Best show matches in the biz. Twists. Done. We got a little collateral there. Magisk has his brain splattered all over Zywu. That'll give him PTSD. And now he'll be timid in the following rounds. Now I'm not sure who's... I thought Vitality were just going to win, but... Got some strong rounds out of Brokey on bridge. A really good tactic to push B when they did. And it worked out so well. And there's just something different about winning around fast, you know, versus winning around slowly, even if it's dominant across your default. 
as a T team, you don't want to lose those ones where, well, obviously, you don't want to lose any rounds, but those momentum calls where you could have thrown a bit more utility, you could have dragged around it a little bit more to have those sucked away from you really sucks. Uh-oh. Nice flash. Yeah, Rob's help out, Brokey. Ready for another one. Saiwoo. The Deagle just doesn't stop today. Yeah, he waits for no man. Rob just goes out. Oof, good mow down for the two, but Deagle's still up and pumping out damage. You got Sphinx and Zywoo with Desert Eagles. You know, Vitality have a chance in a round like this. It's with them. Sphinx gets lost in smoke, though. CT's not shying away from the gunfight. Sphinx picks up another. Can't manage up into heaven. So FaZe survived with two. But that one not nearly as convincing as, like you were mentioning, the total shutdown that happened in the round previous mm -hmm. over on that B site, right? There's an opening there for Vitality, which gives them hope. Yeah, massive damage keeps them alive in this game, so that's that's pretty cool. I mean, the Deagle is just fearsome this week. Yeah, Sonic has really uh, invigorated the pack. Go coach and prove your Deagle. Definitely Reign's worst map of the event so far. He is the highest rated player of these 10 coming into the server this evening. And right now, just not really finding his footing on Anubis. It's okay. Twitch is picking up the slack. Rops has been finding his impact. Brokey's had a highlight here and there, but it is Apex to open up this one. 4v3. Brain can try to pressure out from Dark, but as he falls back, he's going to get nearly caught by Zywoo. Good chase there from the Wu. Doesn't quite get all he was looking for. Rain on 34 health. Of course, all this presence and pressure going down Yo. on the other side of the map. They peek right into Rops, who is trying to hold that but can't. Magisk, instant headshot. And now no real route for Kerrigan to get into this mix. And same can be said for Rain. Vitality That's just dispatch of the three stars of phase. And with it comes their ninth. That's a wrap. And like tactically, there's not even that much special that went on. They this was a round where they default, and they meet five CTs in all their usual spots. They just come up huge on duels. And that last peak on the op from Rops, picked up from Brokey on that pillar. Next to Platt. Rops is one of the... With the fountain. One of the eight players of all time right now. Who are the players that impress you the most on Anubis specifically? Skulls. <laughs> good shout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good shout. Um... Caserado. Mm. Impossible to kill on A site. I like that guy. Let's see if I can think of any more Brazilians. What about you? Who's your golden pick? Mm. I don't know. I don't really have anybody. Warwell. Don't think I've watched enough Anubis. What? <laughs> to have, you know, these strong opinions. What about Waro? I, I like the way, Boros. honestly. Waros. Waro and Boros. Bor both of them, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a good one. You know, on the Monty win streak. I actually really like the way that I feel like Magus used to play a site with an AUG more often than not. I, I like yeah, I what like happened him. to that early on yeah, AUG? The AUG, he used to like really lean back. Now he's playing more outwards as we saw in the CT half where he was kind of pressing outwards. Dude, and I think that that's like the adaptation of CT halves. Dude, if a but map is welping double double offs, that also means... Play the AUG. Play the AUG if you can't afford the AUG. Absolutely, oh. you're right about that. Yeah. That should come back into play. That just was on that list for me, but... <sighs> he changed, you know? They always change. Uh-oh. Rops is stuck between two smokes. And a Molotov in the middle. So definitely feeling the utility pressure here. But also there's no follow-up behind it. Although he doesn't decide to stick around. Mid-play, left open again for FaZe. This one's pretty interesting. It kind of feels like uh, there's not enough attention given to B right now because three are leaning on the A site with no mid control and they're comfortable sitting and waiting. Do FaZe have a read on what Vitality want? Because as we can see, they're about to split this site. It's the right pieces in the right place. They tried to burn out that position multiple times, but they peek into Brokey first. Rops turns it. Magis gets shut out. 
And these initial positions work perfectly for the 5v3. Brokey misses the mid shot. Now he's pressured, gets dinked, still holds off with at least one more. Apex waiting for the mid rotate, and sure enough, it's there. But the Heaven player pushes bomb, or at least tests smoke. Apex has gone down, and Sphinx isn't going to get a chance. He'll come up with the kill, but that's it. Twist staying alive in heaven, and Apex not able to get the additional kill towards mid. Now, for me, the setup's perfect, so I really wonder, because no bridge control, no info inside of mid, no one pushing B, no one pushing uh, into con, and yet, for some reason, FaZe, they were like, yeah, I, we're moving in. I'm, I'm going to chill. We're going to chill here on A. The attack takes formation. It's as if they were in Apex's head before he even had the idea to take the site. What do they know? FaZe take a third time out here after a very strong round and a good setup towards long between Rops and Brokey in the back. Kill a piece was pretty much all they needed. And if we're talking about pushing for map control on CT side, Rops is almost one of the least the players you least expect to do it, but he's actually one of the most comfortable pushing baskets and getting out there once in a while, but taking forward aggressive map control on A, when it used to just be Brokey sitting on the skinny pillar and waiting, dropping down, taking a fight there and falling back. This could be the same kind of turning point we saw in the first half. It's all the money in for phase. Yeah, they're pasting the same setup. It's hard to dislodge, because even if you flash Brokey off, Robs can confirm that there's nothing here. Even activates when they throw a nade at him. Yeah, Opera in the back. Oh! Oh, that's real a, chance that's for Zywu. Un unfortunate for Zywu, though. He takes, puts damage on the Opera, which is less important. They don't get a kill. They don't fully push the setup back. They're left with almost nothing. You know, we said it's a difficult setup to unravel, but I do feel like a bit more mid-presence could have helped in that last round. They were just so intent on emphasizing long vitality. Molly on glyphs. They smoke it out and put one down on cross. So two smokes simultaneously out of this hold. And there's barely any nades left for phase. Yeah. But 40 seconds, Sphinx boosted. Scarier for vitality, though. They don't have any split going on. They don't know if ET's a push, and they have. Another Molotov for the same position. Look at this flank coming in. Smoke to stop the cross. That should nullify Brokey. Kerrigan's still on site to help. Molly does burn rain out of his initial spot, and Kerrigan hoping that somebody peeks him. Oh, the collateral with the Fomus. Nearly even three. Dupree's barely alive. Sphinx responds. Picks up Bomb. Twists, kills another. And that flank was coming, but not even needed because Brokey stuffs him close. It's a big day for FaZe. They're looking insanely good here after some tragedies in the first half into a very strong CT side. Lots of ideas are working out. This is one of the games where I definitely want to know how good the prep was because Kerrigan's ideas working out extraordinarily well. And again, some of those Deagle rounds, you can't really account for them. You're not going to analyze those too much. Why one guy killed us with a Deagle. It's going to happen if the aim is on point, but the majority of rifle rounds today have all been FaZe. if they just kind of wean themselves off that early A hit, fixate in on B faster before Brokey and Twist can come rotate, then, I mean, this half of the bomb site and the map has yet to really be tested. This is an adaptation from Vitality that could certainly pay off. I already see how. Double players down in dark. They won't find Kerrigan without him getting one. And the more he sets Rain up, the better this could go, but the bomb plant tucked in safely. Oh. Apex just straight up wins the duel and twists immediately out from Temple. He's got a player close left. Saiwu takes the next fight, wins it, and man advantage falls into the hands of Vitality with a post plant there with it too. Rops, great game thus far. Smoke on his back and Brokey right behind him. Goes to clear platform, but Sphinx's headshot sends Brokey running, and therefore, Vitality break back through. Okay, so now we can see, with absolutely no vision on the map, they go for the same setup with three on A. 
So right there, that could just be a read from Kerrigan. It could have been the last time as well. Some belief in the call from Vitality, but Vitality, after losing on B previously, go right back in again, saying, hey, a apart from Kerrigan getting this bomb of spray down on our site last time, we had a good split going. So, ooh, close to save the op in that position. A big confidence call here is what I'm trying to say from Vitality to try the same site again. And this time they do benefit from FaZe's early gamble. Now I will say, first kill going down CT side and then Rain, that trade inside of Khan swings the momentum of that whole site hit entirely. Because the trade comes out instantaneously. Could have been both him and his teammate still alive. But still, you want to give credit to Vitality for going to the site that only had two players in it to begin with. Immediate change up from phase. Brokey was at A. Excuse me, B. We should change that. <laughs> I don't understand. I feel like I got over this hump months ago and now it's just back. We've got a push already off the B site. Stack is only going to calcify here on A. And there is an op in play, you know, along with this scout. So, oh, Brokey's moving to his favorite angle. Twist takes some damage above. They're looking for the entry. Dupree in the smoke. We got four kills over on the actual bomb site. Reigns 5 7. Scout out of ROPS. Not like this, Vitality. Not quite sure how we got here, but it leaves Apex 1v2. Good smoke placement. Definitely guarantees the plant. It's just the scout on ROPS still. If Apex can get back, but he's got to be ready, and he is. And then he doesn't hide. He takes it to him, and he takes it from them. Apex pushed to clutch. Delivers. We could absolutely see the difference between a win and a loss here on Anubis based on that round. Apex surviving the eco attempt, which is what they were able to get over face so many times today. Trades come up good here for the CT side, and it's because FaZe pushed the other side of the map before a minute 30. Took advantage of the fact that Vitality have moved very fast in these past few. And that gets scary, but... Vitality survive. And phases by rebounds. Twists. It's been pretty unstoppable. This first one looking easy. Magus with the lesser weapon. Twist pulls back a bit. Rain's been cleared through smoke. Zaiwu gets the answer and a second. I guess Rob's tried to challenge out the side of that. Twists just buying time. Would have heard the drop down to the water. Brokey's trying to lean out for the gun. And Kerrigan in the corner definitely has the element of surprise. Quick peek back by Spinks. Slight edge here for Vitality, but Apex may need to come through with consecutive clutches. And if he dies to Twist right here, well then Spinks was in a tough spot. Apex falls back with the flash. And Twist's trying to work his way out. Dodgeballing with those utilities. A frag grenade that could have ended Spinks, but thrown the wrong way. Bomb plant to the left side of the column. The obelisk blocks off the split between Vitality's two, and Twists was hoping someone peeked, but no, sir, nothing. He'll take an op and leave as Vitality find 12. Yeah, Spinks takes the right risks and gets out of there, and he's too tucked, and Twist can't find a way in. Perfect crossfire is maintained. And it's all about Zaiwu. Three frags on those. I don't know where exactly that was. Two pushing Dark out of push. Yeah, two pushing out of Khan in the beginning of the round. And the first one, dead through the smoke. Rops thinks he has a chance to get out. Brokey's trying tying his shoes. And that's the round over. Yeah, we didn't actually get to see where the Rops pick happened, but it wasn't through smoke, so I can only assume I, I that he tried he, to come out smoke. I think he pushed out the left side as Rain was just behind him. Right. Rain said, you could push right now, trust me and dies first. And it leaves FaZe worse for wear. Just Brokey's off now. They go back to Brokey bolstering the B site. But it is indeed Kerrigan to at least slow things down on Dark. There's a second smoke on this side. Curious at what point
phase, decide to either dismantle the A defense entirely, maybe go for a peek, get some info. Twist is toying around with some mid. But even Vitality sort of playing in the dark. Oh, it's true. And time is on Brokey's side as we cross a minute mark. It's still this queen and four pawns still up. They'll activate in front of him. One for one, it's a little scary for Vitality, who were intent on going B. They still definitely have enough time to change up if they want to, but we don't see any plans to. 35. And FaZe haven't moved. In fact, they reinforce. Man, they just put the AWP in the only position that there was any utility pressure, and Vitality have gone so all in on this. Brokey is behind sight pillar. <laughs> Difficult shot for the 5-7, but the off is all that they really, truly need. And he's got himself a second already. Brokey's dead. Deagle's up, and Robs is also cleared. Twist is here, but Dupree answers. Ooh. And so Vitality decide to take it to that site, and they fight every step of the way. But that fight goes their way. Robs isn't going to miss like that all the time. So things certainly get scary if he hits that dig to the side of the head. But a good setup from FaZe, a good read on the attack, good opening from Brokey. I think they used everything pretty effectively here, except for Rain, who had this off angle. This off angle is totally fine if Brokey just has a deeper one into Khan. But he's a bit busy watching B main, and they have yeah. to hope the split comes in in a different order. It's Twist on the off. Oh, interesting. Takes it over Brokey. Canadians really can't do anything. Good flash still, though. And Brokey on the fallback gets away with the big green. Doesn't go too far. Oh, the re-aggro from He's Brokey. reinforced. He's got a teammate right there with him, but he doesn't shoot. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Spinks is lucky to be alive. Yeah, no, they see them cross to the left, however. Okay, Zywoo scoped up. With bomb. No A player so far, but it's Brokey himself to make his way over. They're scared about how fast Vitality may have gone. But Vitality know the information they've given over. Oh, Spinks gets the headshot. But Rain dies following them to the site. Are they going to continue forward again? Or do they just pause? I mean, the uncertainty could be crippling for FaZe here. Even top teams have tendencies. You've lost and, your flank. And last round, FaZe called them out for trying the same site after some time. And look at them again. For now. But as time passes... The question remains, where is Vitality? And who takes 14 off this 3v3? Oh, this is a win for Apex. Utility gets set up. Molotov comes down. Brokey could still try to force this issue or wait for the retake attempt. Nobody's actually made him uncomfortable. Ooh. No Molotov on his feet. They burn the bomb site instead, but he's so concerned with mid that he's allowed for them to cross. Robs is smoked out of heaven. Brokey's gonna double back to go around through storage. And all that time, the flank is getting closer, but it's Kerrigan to die first. Two successful holds. First by Sphinx, now Magisk. Zaiwu has nowhere else to look because he has more teammates. But even then, he shuffles attention. And it's a duel between the offers, queued up, missed shot. And down beneath this retake is a player on the bomb site. Sphinx buys time. He's gonna get cleared. Oh, Brokey! Quick scope, so critical. Nothing more. Nothing more for FaZe, that is. Vitality, 14. Wow, amazing rounds out of Vitality to pull that up. And again, that's a win for Apex mentally. He actually does call out the fact that Kerrigan, after a certain amount of time, this time, they're gonna overthink it. They leave the site that they had stacked. They would have been bad for Vitality to come in early. Nice! But 20 or so seconds later was just enough time to wait. Dude, the mind games in that 3v3. Seriously, you know. Patience. Watching Brokey right there, he was actually starting to figure things out. But okay, now Vitality have a, a lead on 14. Look at the guns that FaZe have. Almost nothing to work with. MP90. Nearly dead. But honestly, worth it. Rob's almost just bested Magisk with an MP9, and he's got no utility, so... Take that first fight. Now Magisk is going to be tempered. Oh, let's Whoa. go, dude! Oh, from rugs! Let's call that the Newton. They exchange damage on the long peak. And Magisk chucks out a heat-seeking missile. 
That window's open to both sides. Man, you know that feels so good. And behind it's gonna be the all-in from Vitality with nobody here for phase. Full-blown exec, sights on fire. Nothing could stop this bomb plant. And so by extension, nothing should stop this 15th. Should. There's no kit. There's a smoke towards mid, but Kerrigan with an uptick. A little more likelihood. He gets stopped after the one. It's rain to offer up the next. Teammates falling by his wayside, Brokey. There's nothing more. Vitality do indeed take it. 15 and two left. Thought we were going to finally see a round with multiple players alive, but no, it's never that simple. Not in this game. Nice attempt by Kerrigan. Yeah. You know, I feel like it would have been way too easy to just write that off and leave when there's so much util on the exec. But luckily, in the last 48 hours, we've been getting good CS. This nade. They tried. This nade makes the decision. The early kill and the site hit the follow. And I feel like that, that nade's only like a 15, max 20 damage nade, but... Because he was so low, it is precisely what they need. This game felt like Vitality still hadn't found the form that got them through Paris without losing a match. A slow start, but a sick recovery. Brokey, Rops, and Twists have all brought forth their best foot. Zywoo with the first, but good thing Brokey's layered there in dark. Doesn't come for free, and Zywoo's barely standing. That's a somewhat dubious position now, and but the positional compensation out of Apex walking into mid gets nice. cut off at the pass by Twists. Very nice. Twist just ready for it. Kerrigan, same deal over towards B. Bombs back in spawn, though. This is going to get weird, especially now knowing where the last player is at and still bombs so far removed. I mean, this is kind of like Vitality just sort of limping into different engagements, and none of them could have ever led to a commitment. Yeah, that looked that looked risky from Apex, but I think he was just, you know, you don't alarm any rotations if no one's watching this for just two seconds. And he decides, I'm going to try to cross. I mean, we look at Twist's angle. That's something, you know, only a few players on your team are going to be confident in that spot. He's got a hard, flat angle. You know you're going to be cleared. But Twist believes in the aim. And he also has an idea that maybe they are going to try something sneaky. But all the regs were in that basket that Apex was holding. And now there's yokes on the floor. Round 30 will decide if we go to overtime or not. It couldn't be any less clear what the outcome's going to be. It's a pretty massive find here for FaZe Clan. It has been a battle of the minds between Apex and Kerrigan at multiple intersections of, of this match so far. An individual skill from multiple players here. Peppered in, it's not been one hyper carry versus another. Even although, though Zywoo is cli climbing that board, he yeah. really is. And although Twist just put 30 up. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. just kind of taken over. at a very important junction. This is the kind of round where, you know, you'd see Kerrigan on the T side would make some kind of amazingly complex call come together cohesively to pull out T side rounds. And, you know, Vitality haven't won the last two tournaments they played in for no reason. Apex has been doing a fantastic job at T side calling in a way that Vitality just felt like they weren't finding an identity for a long time. Well, here's a challenge and a half. They've got three AKs to work with on this round. Very low on utility. And they're facing OT if they lose. They're facing twists in mid. Oh, but twists. Almost dead already. 80 damage done. Nade on his feet. So he limps away full of shrapnel. You know, we talked about the T side for Vitality. Having that fixation on A out of the gate. Well, now they're just going for the timing into the B hit, but there is indeed a third CT in position, albeit blind initially. 
Dupree falls with nothing. Rain, a double kill, but his gun goes dry. And we've got another player here on plat. It's Brokey with the A1S. Stops himself. Two! And as the hot swaps over, it's Apex to oh. the clutch, but Brokey with the instant headshot. Oh. 15 all. We go OT. Yeah. Brokey, take a bow. That's disgusting. How many kills does Brokey have right now? 33. 33. What the hell is going on? Twist on 30, Brokey on 33, and he said, I can do it with any gun, Magisk. You said, Am I really an opper? Brokey said, It doesn't matter. <laughs> I love processing how nice of a shot that was. Right there, yeah. And then into what it really meant. 33 and 16 is Brokey. 30 and 19 is Twists. Stars of the show for FaZe at the moment. And back to that hit on A. Zyru, Mac 10 in the front, dead instantly. Brokey's gonna have a field day with this challenge. Good thing Dupree can get a trade because he has had struggles across this map. Molotov's popping all over. Dupree, a double kill. And they know about Rops' position. He dies to Magus. The Danes making a difference. Here comes Rain, though. And Apex stops him. Pushes Kerrigan into a clutch with an AWP. Knowing that presence was on platform, knowing there's an additional member down on bomb, oh. but missed Molly. Awkward. Oh, couldn't be worse, really. Tries to lay down the smoke to change things, but his fate is sealed. It is the double from Dupree and that third one from Magisk to make up for the fact that Zaiwu goes down 4v5 with a MAC-10. Yeah, that's crazy. They wanted to come in with speed. <laughs> they put him in front. But he'll be proud of his team today. That was a great trade behind it. Losing the 5v4 is nothing small on a run. Oh, and we know how it is when you get to overtime. Playbook's out the window. You got to come up with stuff that you weren't prepared for. That's one of those calls. We didn't see a single round like that in regulation. I can understand why FaZe have been citing burnout at the end of this season because they've had so many awesome overtime <laughs> maps versus some yeah. of the best teams in the world on some of the biggest stages of the end of this season. And here we are again. Dupree, time to turn it all around. Twist is here though, right with Brokey. And the op aggresses. Brokey takes it back around the corner, comes through with the difference maker, but check out Dupree. Whoa, he's on an adventure. Oh! And a missed shot. <gasps> Two Magisk missed shots. Gone. And because of that push out of Dupree, I mean, Magisk knows he can run to that bomb site. The only problem is that Dark could be occupied, and sure enough, Brokey takes up position within it. And he scopes early, doesn't see anything. I, they don't, I don't think they hear him drop. I don't think they hear him scope from where they are. They're, of course, of course, worried about this. Most natural rotation. And Brokey, he's doing a marathon. Yeah. He's going all the way around through spawn. It's going to be very hard for him to pull off this clutch. If there's a guy to do it on phase, it's probably him. But with this off in hand and the distance between him and his opponents, Vitality switched to Danish. And all they have to do is trade. He's got the full belt of util, two kills to his name, a kit to work with, and some of the sickest clutches on the biggest stages of phase in the last couple weeks. So why not now? Dupree on the angle. All they need, though. Locks it in comfortably from Dark. And honestly, great patience there from Vitality. They knew that his one play was to chase and drop to water. Tough for Brokey. Once he commits to Dark and they don't instantly run across haphazardly, and you see it kind of click in his own head like, ah, they're not going to give me this for free. They were option limiting, making sure that after some time had passed, okay, it couldn't be here, but we look back on that. I mean, you know, the worst thing to have to analyze is missed shots, and we got two chances to kill Magisk inside of middle with ops from two different players. They both miss. Weird smoke. They put another one up. 
Ooh, Cyro goes through <gasps> as Rain was going to grab another nade, but a quick aggression out of Kerrigan. He's gonna double back. Twist turns up the distraction. Cywoo's locked in with this fight. Twists be Cywoo. Big pickup. And Twists He's doing what he has to. The better player today. But Dupree, who has definitely put a better foot forward in overtime than all of regulation, has yet again set up his teammate by going out on his own. You can see Apex checking Dupree's screen, making sure his decisions are informed. Dupree, if you can just cut off one, hell, two, then that would have been fantastic. But instead, it's gonna have to be the French leader to do it all, and they are so quickly on top of him. Off inside of the smoke, he knows it, but Brokey strikes him down, and it is one, at least, for FaZe on CT. Yeah, I'm glad for them that they got it. I, I think this game deserves, you know, max rounds because of how close it's been all the way around, but to put that one to a couple different situations, you know, Dupree, he had lots of time to pick that angle. It's not a bad angle or anything, but got to win the fight. Picking up at least one would have been huge, but maybe they still lose. I think Twist stopping Zaiwu inside of Khan also changed the momentum in a pretty big way. And they'll start off with a pause. Save this one just for overtime. I really can't call this. You know, in terms of conditioning, I've seen both teams get their flowers. Like they've they've tricked. Vitality, Vitality have tricked them. And now that their playbook has been exposed completely, how are they going to keep it fresh? What comes next? I would say that phases rounds have been a little bit more detailed in terms of the amount of clock that they're using, whereas Vitality have been more comfortable getting set up into full execs on both sides of the map earlier on. And that could prove to be beneficial for FaZe, who can simplify now that we're in overtime and have that be a surprise. But that's ignoring all the details that can come of it, all the X-Factor moments that we've seen from so many members of both teams in this game, in this game today. We get that instant double op out of Magisk, and he solo holds A. Magisk versus Robs has really been the name of the game on this half of the map. Robs outshining him ever so slightly. Sphinx ahead of the fire. Zaiwu softened up, loses a third of his health, but waits on the angle regardless. The Molly's actually null, and they, with confidence, know that no one could have snuck in. Zaiwu protecting Sphinx. He could peek behind this, but Brokey's waiting. Battle of the Oppers queued up. I don't know if he goes farther than this, honestly. <gasps> Brokey oh. baits out. Oh, but blind. Sphinx picks it up. Brokey's pinned, and he gets the second. Oh, that is great rifle work out of Sphinx. Oh, and he just doesn't move because he can't. The Molly's there. Off shot in from Magus. This is the angle that he played that AUG on. Now he draws them in, and Apex cuts off Kerrigan. They thought they could pounce. And it's going to need to be something magnificent from Van Dalken. He's got the bomb, and he's got half of Vitality on this site. And he's got no reason to run. Smoke announces his arrival, but Magisk will not miss it. And just like that, it is Vitality to stop it right away. Yeah, maybe he could quit his day job. The op presence for Magisk has been felt at a critical juncture. Double OT locked in for Vitality. And right here, look this at second. He says, I can't fall back, so I'm going to focus. I'm going to double down on this position. I know there's an op holding, but I'm going to outduel him. Dupree had that curse on Astralis, mm -hmm. and he kicked that habit, you know. Enjoy the honeymoon, but hey, if it gets him through this map. It's all fun and games until they start flashing your ass. Double off held on to. Boost out of twist. Saw Vitality fumble their previous two map points. Now they'll get the same chance, but an OT. Apex ahead of the flashes. Oh, twist! It's like that. Just cracks it back. Flick of the wrist. A creep oh. through smoke. Rob's best Magisk off of that mid kill. Magisk gave up his platform position, and that just opened the door on the A site. Oh. 
and then they get aggressive on B, but Kerrigan's patient enough that they don't see anything. He can be ultra passive. This is all phase all day. Okay. They still need another round after this to get into another overtime. It looks like this is a foregone conclusion. We'll see if Vitality can even think about attempting it. It is overtime, of course, but... Oh, man. Twist just beat him over the head with the butt end of that AK. Yeah, that was a wicked flick. Now Kerrigan has bought time. Peeks out to Canal. Oh, dies oh, to Zaiwu. Okay. But a three versus five here. They're going to put Brokey up. That makes it awkward. Hold no, on. No, hold no, no, on. No, 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 no. They're going to now play Pillar. Reigns up next. The first two fall with nothing. We've got guns in the hands of those in the back, and nades coming out on the front end. Rain says, enough. And he locks in this 17th for FaZe. Zaiwu, of course, going to rack up the costs. But that 3v5 will stop its attempt to get that bomb site. The 1% chance retake comes to a halt. That was very close. All right, so it'll all be decided right here. The end of the first overtime. Vitality already ready to win this game. FaZe just looking for another chance to play. It's just going to be emotionally exhausting. Again, the overtime plays here out of FaZe, the close losses. Yeah, but Launders, either way, for one of these teams, it's the last match of the season. Mm -hmm. Player break on the other side. Whatever you got left in that tank, burn it. Double OT could be... It's a peek out long that will not net them the 5v4 that could have been arguably either way. Zaiwu had a player up in front. Now much less forward pressing defense out of Vitality this time. We've already got Dark preoccupied. Rain's going to be comfortable ahead of that Molotov. And there's no smoke up towards long, so we've got FaZe getting into the right positions at the right time. Four all... CTs are coming to bolster the defense, yeah, yeah, they but are. it's still just three. Smoke will buy more time. We talked about that aggression out long. They could throw it out again, but Twist and Kerrigan are both in safe spots to dodge this aggression. And then that could just leave the CTs exposed. Sure enough, it's a double out of Twists. Apex now beckoning Zaiwu to come over. Utility over the top, flash in the face of the IGL, but he'll lay down another smoke. Oh, 40 seconds. Ooh, interesting. It's not optimal in the sense they could still exec behind it, but oh my god, Apex. Crosses back silently. The bomb is still trying to figure out. They're making a final decision now, but two players They're are here in A. a. And the flashbang tells them it's coming, and guess who's in position? Zaiwu ready in heaven to clip the wings of FaZe on this first map. And he waits, and he waits, and as they round that corner, they go down quick. Magisk in the pillar, hides, and he may not even be needed. Because Zaiwu strikes fear in the hearts of FaZe, but Twist rips heads off, and that bomb plant could be his. He comes up for the frag, and through smoke, Zaiwu ends this. Apex leads Vitality to a map one win, and FaZe's matches always deliver. They always fight, and yet tonight they falter, at least here on map one.
hard. Into overtime, you needed more rounds than regulation, and Vitality just about managed to close. That was a nail biter to finish here, Maniac. Yeah, this Your last boys round. Did it. I mean, we're, we're right on the money right there. We're showing you guys the last round at home because this was such an illustration of this whole game between Vitality and FaZe. A game of chicken in terms of I'm calling the bluff, you're calling my bluff, we're moving around. And at that game, I have to give props to Apex for the calling. And in this very round, you could see how FaZe had all the pieces they needed just to hit on that A side, or the B side rather. And then the smoke comes in from Apex with 35 seconds left, sends everybody back to A, where the defense of Vitality is already in position with Majisk and Zaiwu in position right there. Checkmate. Bro, I think I actually, I, I, you got to give props to Vitality for adjustments in both halves as well, going back to regulation, because it felt like FaZe really had their number in both of them. Well, like, it was it was a good scoreline for FaZe up until that. Yes. You could see the clutch that actually happens from Magus and Zaiwu, the 2v2 they win with Brokey dancing around the pillar, going on a streak to end the first half. And then look at the end of the second half as well. Six in a row to just, like, completely, like, dominate, you know, the, down the stretch of this game. This was a very, very good game in terms of adjustments from Vitality. You talk about round 12, well, speak and thou shall be... Oh, we have the technology. Exactly, there oh. it is. We have round 12 and I agree with you. It was a turning point in this game. We have here the execute coming out on the side of phase. The kills have been found. Kerrigan punishes Apex. We have the dead man's position here. Brokey's got him in the dead side with rain. And then here, the three or rather the two versus two with a double AWP setup from Vitality. How the hell are you supposed to do it with a no scope to start things over, of course? And then Brokey dances around the corner and we have to praise Magisk's patience here because it's a game of chicken once again it's about who makes the first misstep and he waits patiently and he punishes him with a nice little sight and a little bit of banter going after this honestly i don't i don't think <laughs> Are you an old player? Yeah, that's sick. We love that out of magic. We love that, don't we? We absolutely love it. I, I mean, I, I actually got to say, too, I don't think Brokey played that, that, no. that poorly in the clutch oh, as well. Oh, it's a game of detail, yeah. really. And that's, that's tough. I mean, you can always be like, oh, why do you peek? I, I think even I said it in the heat of the moment, but to dance around the pillar for that long was actually a very good round from Brokey and a very good clutch attempt for him. I mean, when you look at the high heavy hitters here, we had two on the phase side. 37 kills apiece for phase uh, on Brokey and Twists. You told us we were getting 30. We got seven extra. I told you you are going to get 30 out of Twists, and he, boy, did he deliver. Yeah, that was, that was was wonderful. He had, a, he had a really good game. Brokey as well with the off. Like, we touched on him right before going into this game as well. Just kind of the chaos that he thrives in and how, how aggressive at times coming in spurts he can be just peeking in. It's so powerful and he delivered it here today. Yeah, it's, dif it's difficult to fault him for anything, truly. Yeah. I don't think Brokey is the one responsible uh, for that mishap on, on the side of phase. He tried his very best. He did indeed, but ultimately his best wasn't enough. And to tell us why that might have been, we've got Mahone standing aside in the Mahone zone. zone Break it down. Zone, 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 zone. That's right. So something that the desk also mentioned were these adjustments in both halves. So the first adjustment I actually want to talk about or the adjustment I want to focus on is actually on the CT side towards B because we saw a couple of rounds where they actually got collapsed in on towards the B side. And this is the first round where they actually take a more proactive approach. So first thing we're going to see here is three players here towards the site. Phase, they're set up to split towards B, two players outside B main, and two players here towards dark. Now, rather than just sit default and play passive, take a look at the play they make. First, you'll see that Sphinx, he lets go of this dark position, and instead he focuses in towards main. Apex, he's going to toss this flash here to allow him to fight towards his B main side. This allows him to find the first kill onto Kerrigan, but he doesn't find twists. Now, although he doesn't find twists, this is valuable information because it's only one person. With this split coming in, it's valuable to know now that with this one person, it means that the main push is not coming through B main, and instead, it has to be coming through dark. Now, pay attention to Dupree's positioning right here. Dupree makes a very good move here as well because as soon as that information is identified, he takes contact onto Dark. Now, he's able to do this because with the smoke up as well, it provides some protection from this player who could be pushing up main, which allows him to establish this crossfire here with the player at Glyphs. What this does is it allows them to establish this crossfire so that when the main push comes in, they're going to get gutted. You'll see first, first player to take contact here is Apex. As Rain comes in, he gets shot on the side. That activates the pre to let him come in from the side and catch another, and then finally catch Twist at main. Now, if you look at this from Rain's point of view, even though he knows that this crossfire is possible, look how deep of an angle he has to check towards that right side. It's very hard to break this crossfire. Tries to throw a flash, he gets shot on the side, and then Rops, as he comes in to try to trade, he gets double peeked at the same time. So it's really that adjustment where they're more proactive towards the B main side that allowed them to set up this crossfire, and that's really why Vitality was so successful towards the end of the half. 
Key breakdown there from the Mahone zone. Always good insight in the Mahone zone. He brings the knowledge, and uh, that's how they brought the game. I was kind of waiting for Jason to do the little sound effect zone again. Zone. I thought this was coming. Like I only a do it. I only do it going in. Uh, I understand. I need a new sound effect for coming out. Of the My bad. We'll, we'll workshop that. It's yeah. all about timing, much like in a Counter Strike game. And there was a lot of timing from both sides. There was a clock, and there were times that hits came through and executes as well. That is true. We're going That's through the list word. of things in Counter Strike. There were <laughs> weapons, and there was a bomb, and there, there were yeah. two halves as well. Uh, all of these were statements are true. Uh, but listen, I, I gave a quick shout out to Apex, and I do believe he deserves maybe a bit more than ten words in this. Uh, he had a couple of key moments, and I actually think that we have a mic up moment of one of Apex's brilliance. Seven. Two, seven, seven, seven. Go, go, don't go, don't go. He's burning I, inside, he's burning uh, inside. I can't. Side, he's going to be there, dead, Evan. Evan, Evan, Evan. 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 Evan and mid. Nice. Scouts. Scout last guy. Nice. 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 Sick, bro. Good shit. Uh, read them like a book. Uh, read them like a book. Like a coloring Read them like a book. It sounded like some NACOMs there at like the start of that. I was getting flashbacks. You like that? You like the little chaos? Yeah, it was a little weird. People screaming around? Yeah. One of the things I noticed uh, just watching the player cams, because we have that little insight during the game, is uh, in some of the timeouts, Zaiwu getting very vocal. I mean, you heard him there in the comms as well. It's something that we mentioned in the pregame. Sometimes you do want him to just kind of assert himself as a presence in the server. He certainly is in terms of the frags, in terms of the kills, but you kind of want that. Ah, this was just like well. a that, that was just like a standard Zaiwu performance, <laughs> honestly. I don't think there's too much to be said. 136 <laughs> rating. He's got 34 kills. I, I don't know, guys. I think we should really be more demanding. Expect yeah. just a little bit more. Sure. This more? was very tame. It, it did feel average. Right, Jason? I don't, I don't really remember. Pedestrian, I think, yeah. is the word we're looking for. Don't right? remember a Zaiwu flick. I, you know, what is the meme like? You know, <laughs> Do you remember any Zaiwu kills? Suddenly he's got 34 kills. No, I that was another one of these games, kill. honestly. He was, he was great with the AWP on the CT side. Uh, he was much more involved. I mean, that uh. no-scope, by the way, is just mm. absolutely rogue. And then in that positioning as well with Majiz closing on the A side, um, that was a great Zaiwu performance. Another one down the list, and uh, I'm not complaining about it. Yeah, no, he was everywhere, man, with his AWP as well. Super Ooh. effective. We didn't really have to see him switch over to the AK-47. He was obviously feeling it. This, this was gross, and I mean, he provided, as he always does, a lot of openings, a lot of solid closings to round, some important kills supportively when his team's entering into the bomb site. So, yeah, I mean, what, what can you say? It was a great performance from Zaiwu. Again, He's yet another. All right at the game. One more time. Uh, we're going to be headed into the next map, though. Let's look to the Mirage. Future. We've got Mirage here, and I remember from the pregame, both of you pretty heavily lean towards FaZe on this one. You still feeling that way? Yes, I, I do feel that FaZe is definitely in a commanding position on Mirage. The level of opposition that Vitality had to sink their teeth in recently is not up to par with what they have on the other side of that stage. We're talking games against Apex, Big, OG, Monty, Big again. There's just a G2 game in there, so I think there's a punish to be found here for FaZe. I'm looking forward to seeing if the B defense of Vitality, the Dupree, Apex Duo can be a little bit harassed. I do think Kerrigan is going to focus on that. And we're looking to three, of course, because a game like this deserves three maps. Serves three and another overtime. And another one. And another Just one. one. And another Just one. one. Just one. Just, Just one more overtime. I think series. we could do two or three. It's in the script. I think we certainly could. And it's time to hop in for a few more rounds and a few more words from our commanding duo of Scrawny and Launders.
phase games. They always deliver. Hell of a banger on Anubis, back and forth affair, we go into OT, not able to close in regulation, but for all we know, we're now looking at the last map of their season. Now, what we have here beneath us is not the veto for this series, but the veto for our show match on Sunday. Uh, at some point throughout this first half, you guys will see a lower third, a call to action to go to Blast TV and make sure you get your impact on said veto. I see a problem. What's the There's problem? still a chance ends on Vertigo. We got to do something about that, Blast TV. As a people. Power to the people. Blast TV, make sure you guys go over and veto out Nuke because we want to play Vertigo. On Unicorn, the odds are favoring Ver uh, Vertigo. <laughs> Vitality. No, no, please. <laughs> they're, they're favoring Vitality. Why? Because, well, map up, all is looking good. You know, when Vitality came into the event, it looked like they were playing at 50%. They didn't go to Dallas. They didn't have much of a warm up here. They came in kind of cold. And then the day after that, it looked like they were kind of 75%. Yeah. And now today, I feel like we are getting back to the vitality that can win events. Did win events, in fact, both in Rio and in Paris. You know, yeah, they've now with the major, the best wins this year. With this win, you know, we might be too far gone to have eras or anything like that, but maybe a vitality period here mm -hmm. as they end the sentence on CSGO with the final game of the season, at least. That's what they're looking for. And, uh, you know, most think, uh, obviously, after the Imperial loss. Well, okay, they're out of gas. They feel uh, like they did enough. It's another outsider. But they just won Anubis. They're taking FaZe now on Mirage. This is, of course, FaZe's map pick. But it's not lost for Vitality by no means. Sphinx alongside Zywu. Oh. Looked very good on the first map. And I thought that was a two-headed beast. But it's just three players down beneath power. Yeah, that's going to catch you off. What is this setup? What is this? <laughs> Just open the cellar door and they all come flying out. That's a call out. Surely. Three players under Balk. You see, you see Kerrigan's reaction after, like, mm. damn. So, outstacked. This is the kill we didn't get to see. Oh. Clean as possible. Hey, one chance for that bullet. Look at him. And we see it didn't even matter, you know? The, the, the attack was coming to A. So many people here. Really nice start here for our Vitality. Scrambled out of that cave like a troglodyte. What are those against those dinosaurs? Four fossils? No, Poke not quite. Other Pokemon? Not quite. No, a troglodyte is, if I'm not mistaken, something that lives in caves and little dark places. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know, like uh, rain. Like um, Valorant players. <laughs> <laughs> They don't need that now. We're on top. We're no longer <laughs> insecure so about sorry. our game. I'm so sorry. Uh, Finally feeling good about ourselves again. Yeah, I'll tell you when I'm no longer insecure, okay? <laughs> but securing rounds is vitality out of the gate. Nice 2-0 sweep. Not in the series, but the first two rounds of this. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, they definitely could win Mirage. I mean, that's just what it's going to be when you have teams like G2, FaZe, Heroic. There's very few maps that are like givens. For a while, it was like G2 on Inferno, given the Vitality on Nuke, actually, kind of insane. They were, mm -hmm. they were, you know, only winning their games. As Kerrigan pointed out, though, you know, they don't have a completely safe 100% pick like they did at one point after Antwerp. I'll do something about it. Too many people have gotten good at their best maps. Look at this aggression. Zywu just throws himself through underpass alongside Dupree. He had an escort to get into position. Oh man, with if no default, uh, I mean, this is such a perfect spot for Dupree to be in. A best use for the MP9. Now you could say, oh, they could subvert him and go over top, but they're not going to with the split coming in and, oh, side of a head shown to this MP9. And Dupree's not worried about the B flank because I was already pushed. And Kerrigan, his position is known whether he realizes it or not. So feels like Vitality in this first gun round looking very comfortable. Audible on the fallback. Hey, this is this is the hole that they are going down, but they don't know how far Zywu got. Yeah, poor Brokey, definitely caught off by that one. Kerrigan thinking that, you know, he didn't actually give them any info. Oh my God, he's this gonna, whole time he was spotted. Okay, they're transitioning this. Kerrigan knows they're going to come back. He's turning this into an A split, and normally three choke points for an A split is great. Three v five, it sucks. But to have CT mm -hmm. under question, they're not going to read this if Kerrigan pulls this off. Good call so far, down to the 30-second mark. He's gonna pounce on Apex. Matt just needs to use Sight to block off oh. the ticket play. Turns up towards Palace. 
But it's Kerrigan to come through with the second frag. He still has time to pick up Bomb, but unfortunately the cross is held, and that's where Sphinx is going to kill him. So I think Kerrigan just did a great job of trying to make something when they really had nothing. Yeah, he was making do right there. Right, and trying to they, craft it up. And he actually got his kill, and he got CT open. So he just required everyone else to go one for one, and then suddenly it's back to even. You know, maybe 3v2 with the Bomb plant. But look at this. It's Groundhog Day. That just pops up underneath the bricks, instant bomb this kill, and it's calm for Vitality. That was a solid setup though with the B push, paired with the underpass play on the MP9. I love that, highlighting the advantages of your worst guns. Me oh my. You know, we got, we had a hell of a back and forth into overtime with FaZe versus Heroic yesterday, and then that second map just felt like it was Heroics from the start. We're getting the rumblings of an excellent CT half in the first three. Rops will kill Apex. But Vitality are coming in fluid. Oh! Rain, though, keeping it dynamic. Scout headshot to Magisk. This is Zywoo stuck for now, but Rops is Tech 9 at this range. Yeah, just like that. Headshot. And Sphinx, he's revealed himself. Now, Dupree is right here with him. And they've got these players wounded, but FaZe are going to run that Deagle back up towards top mid. They've got him on a silver platter. Sphinx is dead. Dupree is stuck between it all. And FaZe have just clawed back what? a 3v5 with lesser weapons. And at every single moment, they could have easily brought that back and killed the two players who were low beneath them underneath Cat. And instead, Rops does it all. And he's so sharp. And the way that he shoots, like, didn't even have an extra bullet just in case he missed. This Tech 9 frag. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's clean. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, that's not what Vitality thought was about to happen in round four. A swift reminder of what FaZe is capable of. Brokey plays behind smoke. Dupree makes some noise. Wow, we saw Kerrigan making this play, actually, um, with his fast B pushes. Now he's sending Brokey to do the same thing, and we see how dangerous it is for Brokey. But Dupree feels the same way. Brokey is the last person to get information, though, it looks like. And now I think that op sticks out, so Surly is going to call for some help. No cap player this time. Zywoo's coming over. Flash doesn't do anything, and actually Brokey knows the op is tucked farther ahead than this window. So, awkwardly, this gives him a little bit of power. He tries to spam him out. Roki feeling uncomfortable because of that one. They don't have yeah. to go in on it, so they'll they'll pull the plug. When you exec be like that, you want your opera in the first window to cut off market and nothing else really. Because then the other opera, that's where they rotate into. And in this setup, as soon as Dupree saw that scope, it made it easy for Zywu to post. Extra smoke grenade to slow it down. It's looking like a 3-2 split to B. Apex not necessarily looking for the kill, but just the info on the jiggle. But times it well enough. Dupree goes down. This leaves Zaiwu on his own towards B. The cat split gets cut off. It's all out of apartments here. And Zaiwu hears them coming down upon him. He strikes down Twist. Rain's able to answer, but Brokey back by bench. Cleared out by Sphinx. Rain in the post plant. Drops the pistol, comes out, kills Sphinx, and with half health, it's him versus Magisk. He doesn't know where or when or how he could lose this. But as he creeps back over the timings to a T, Magisk makes the difference. Had to be a first bullet headshot. They were swir swirling the bull right there all the way around the site, but not enough HP for Rain to work with. And so the defuse gets locked in. It's the two con players to stop the split. That helped out Zywu tremendously. Does a good job of also not getting pre-fired. Just swinging out a little wider to make sure that the player scaling to empty pillar dies. And even though there's some great trades, Brokey in transit over to the bench. He gets his frag. It's still a good situation for Vitality every step of the way slightly. Wild that Kerrigan gets away with the cat kill too, because he died so quickly to Apex. Would have been even more difficult to follow through, but FaZe, working with little, want a lot. Straight into the A play. Exec comes over. Oof. Poor Dupree working with the MP9, but hey, he's gonna hold off on his own. Double kill. 
and then Rops from up top. Dupree gets lost inside smoke. This is now getting awkward. It's another 3v5 recovery so far. Magisk over Ticket, queues up the bench push. All the pressure falls on Brokey, and he's been relegated to the back site with Bomb beside him. He waits. And you can play all the time in the world for all Vitality. No, he was never even here. They just didn't leave B in the situation, so no one's really got to move. <laughs> this is so Brokey. Just hiding behind the boxes. Trogging around. And they've given up tickets, so that's a bomb plant. Even if it's only the bomb plant. Simply waiting gave him that, but he shows a little skin. It's just too easy to play CT, so he thinks, no way, they left. So, no plant right there. It's the same guns that one phase their only round so far. But they keep the pressure on the entire way through. As soon as phase, as soon as the smokes come up, they get the molly off on um, a ramp as well. And what we don't see is three players do get separated from the attack because of it. They don't have enough utility to smoke it and run through. So they had trouble scaling. Vitality 5-1. Ooh, but the op shot from Brokey's nice. Now they still know boxes hasn't been crossed. So Apex is comfortable getting out to mid. Oh my god. Popped. Simple as that. Now Magisk. This, this might force Vitality to leave a site completely open until the decision's made. You know, Dupree's sort of that free rotator in this mid setup. Now they can transition to fighting top mid. At a minute 18, now there's so many options that FaZe could use. They can go right to a site or come into mid late. If they're going to do anything, it should be successful I top mid. I actually like this from Vitality, but we'll see if they get the kill. Bad flash. Doesn't matter. But Twist is further back, gets the trade. Very effective so far. Zaiwu is alive. But that's two pieces of utility with different trajectories. So FaZe should have a clear picture as to where Vitality just were. And Vitality seemingly cutting their losses and going towards the B save. So a second here queued up for FaZe. Because Twists, Rops, Brokey all get a kill apiece. When we talk about Kerrigan's land calling, it is plays like that where Rops can come up the A ramp and just take a fight. Uh, we'll see Twist do that sometimes on a spawn. They're willing to try it. And we've got players like that, you should. It can be a waste sometimes. Just wait for a perfect opportunity to full exec and have everyone trade. And Mirage also welcomes, you know, your most ambitious individual efforts. So Vitality, I think they're comfortable writing that one off. It's nice, though, to get the start of a real half here from FaZe. Nice and smooth, nice and simple. Rops, kill. To take Spinks out of it that quick as well. That's the Mirage op spawn for you. Limitations for Vitality off the back of this, so let's see how they mastermind some kind of response. Wasn't enough Round wins in a spree for Vitality to really get comfortable either. Big chance for FaZe to nullify those first rounds with a win here. Vitality will be dead broke if they don't win this. The opening bout still very much open for the taking. Not nearly as much presence from Vitality in middle as what we've seen in previous rounds, but if they do go looking, there are problems to be had. Twist is peeled back, but it's still three members of phase in mid. Spinks, the most limited weapon on the field. And with mid window smoked, it's Apex and Sphinx here on connector. Apex making a bunch of sound, maybe trying to draw one out. Kerrigan sticks around. See if they forget about Spinks on the other side as Apex runs away. But this is going to be a lurk for Kerrigan with the B site hit coming in. 
Drops his left A ramp. Lots of emphasis on Dupree. And Kerrigan's Lurk comes out early, which only will make the ZT stay here a little longer, but Sphinx sees nothing else. Dupree, what can he do? Ooh. Well, Nade starts, but gets peppered. Twists just over the smoke. And Rain already in the corner. That's done. FaZe mm. just meticulous on the approach. The fact that Sphinx can't get anything more than just the trade back on Apex. We kind of changed perspective there, but I'm surprised Apex even got that kill. Or excuse me, other way around. Kerrigan fragged him. I mean, that whole time we were waiting for Sphinx on stairs to just kill the connector player, and even then it was delayed by a few seconds. Yeah, because he was just held tight against the wall. Because if, if uh, Kerrigan's on the opposite side of connector and he's not holding completely flat, he'll get spotted. Mm. So I, just, I, thought, I, thought, I thought Kerrigan came out, though. I don't know. Weird. Yeah. I think he did, but not, not like all the way out. I don't know. But uh, Apex has to, you know, he can provide the bait in that situation, but he also has to be aware of left side connectors, you can see. Okay, yeah, he stepped back. And I guess uh, the call was for Sphinx to play anti-flash. Ooh. It's a bit nasty. Do you think Brokey ever has fun? <laughs> I think inside his head. think he's and, always having fun? I think he's having fun inside. Okay. I hope. I hope so, too. It'd be a shame to be that good and not having fun. For sure. All that early presence in middle just to set up Kerrigan towards top connector worked out. T side trying to make something of itself. Yeah, Rain gets invited forward by these smokes. Apex doesn't have Sphinx to tether off of. Instead, that's a heavier cat presence coming out of Vitality. And Faye is already starting to just creep all around this A site. Now, remember, Bomb is still down outside ramp, so Kerrigan will have to peel away and go grab it. If things get weird, they could get even more awkward because of that. Apex, by chance, catches Rain and Connector. We've got Rops versus Magisk, Brokey versus Sphinx, and so far, so good here for Vitality. Kind of a slow squeeze out of Faye that Vitality interrupt. Quick jab to the eye. And as they shake it off, Bomb doubles back around Palace. So they could still try to just pop out, jump down, plant Bomb. It's doable. But Apex would also have to miss. As would Magic down beneath him. He gets dinked. Does a ton of damage, though. And Twist still ever so slightly delayed. 20 seconds. They look to call it off. And they'll just go for the three-man save instead. It's very so nice for Vitality, who have no nades left. And... Uh they came off last round, they lost, but they saved. And quite simply, FaZe have to do the same thing. So Magis will come and try to hunt. That's the one gun they can kind of afford to lose if that. I don't even know if they really wanted to do that, knowing FaZe were saving for sure. But all right, Vitality win the rounds. It's lurky from FaZe, but then it gets really murky after the first kill happens, the second one off of Cat, and it looks like Brokey flying around in ladder room. Sphinx is up on bricks, hoping that play comes down. This is a nice find from Apex. I don't know. Say, did Rain do anything? No, who, who knows? I didn't hear him shoot. It might not be too early to get frustrated. Map down. Struggling on their choice, too. And season on the line. I personally think they could have afforded to make a call like that because of how well they won that last. I think they built so much momentum, but they went two default rounds that uh, they could tilt, tilt the hell out of Vitality if they won in that position. Because even with the three saves, they barely got enough money to get the two guns back. So there's still a chance that they crushed the money from Vitality. So I guess a recognition of the fact that that opportunity is now lost a little bit for a live at the end of that round for Vitality. But it's still a full buy here from FaZe. Brokey did get all the way up into ladder room last round, but it's the fallback to Cat that cost him. Yeah, they kind of let him have it with that boost. Kind of created this, like, false sense of confidence. 
And of all things, you've gotten up catwalk, you double back to the doorway, and there's a guy on top of bricks. So, I understand Brokey's frustration. Tilting way to die. Three players in middle for, for phase. Cat presence again. This time, the ladder room's occupied. Sphinx shuts the door. Brokey's gonna chase. Oh! Off the ladder. Quick scope from Brokey. Sit down, Sphinx. And top con. Well, that belongs to Twists right now. Man, that bomb is spotted. Hevcon smoked off. There's freedom for Brokey, but man, FaZe are very split up right now. And also Zywoo's B. This has been Dupree, but now it's the Wu. And they, they also can attack right at this very moment. And Rops is looking for a Lurk, and Kerrigan dodged an upper B. I don't like this. Rops gonna try to Lurk out. He gets stuffed by Dupree, so both players' positions swapped and still successful. And Twist has been waiting patiently this whole time to try and get something rolling. He will catch Apex in the window, but he doesn't even have the bomb. He could just go for the kills. He knows they're back on site, but Vitality 7 added to the board. Fundamentally, Majority alive. Yeah, fundamentally speaking, creating chaos and getting as much map control as you can in the default's great. But there is a point where you break tension and you start to be so far away from each other that the CTs kill one, no chance to trade, no chance to get position on another part of the map, no real information left, and don't know how Zaiwu got its kill. But he, he smelt them falling back, and with that goes FaZe's money. Pretty back to his jobs. I was here with him, though. <laughs> Dupree throws That's the nade, makes a bait. ton of sound. Kerrigan bites down on it, and who's just waiting with the op? Zywu. Kerrigan's gonna feel like a sucker. We'd ended up around like this that FaZe did win. You know, it's kind of the tale that Vitality put forth at the start of Anubis. Not being able to win rifle rounds, coming through with the half buys. See if it ends as well for FaZe. They're hoping. Because if not, it's a perimeter to lock down here for Vitality. They'll forego mid, check on the A ramp, but they know Vi they know now FaZe are here. Nade starts it off, but one of two AKs. Breaks through with an opener. Oh, Zywoo peaks, drops rain in the back. Twist is still alive and kicking, as is Rops. Sphinx is going to have to be cautious on the approach. They know these AKs are here to play. Little to lose, but Sphinx hyper passive back on CT spawn. Zywoo hasn't actually given up any real risk, and he tucks back as it now falls onto Rops. But Dupree has taken the long road all the way around, and look at the reward. Hands busy on Rops, which means AK's down now. Deagle nothing, and Vitality put up that five round lead. Yeah, they're playing extremely well. Looking forward a little to a potentiality, you know, the major final could have been Vitality Heroic, of course, if uh, Heroic didn't lose. And I think a lot of people felt, of course, that if Heroic made the final and they got Vitality, that's a team they like to play against. That could have been a, a good matchup for them. That final's a potential at this tournament being on opposite sides of the bracket, of course. That's not the conversation FaZe want to hear. They're not done yet, but Vitality, they're playing extremely well here. Twist, there we go. Up until the moment that I said that. Yeah. Let me get clamped down on. Like a hydraulic press, twists, just shatters the underground push. Look at him. Dead. He's going to take the dry peek in the window. Oh, they'll have to phase it. Second 3v5 where they've dedicated all resources on CT to mid. And there have been late plays for mid, but a trade with footsteps underneath. Zywu goes. Ooh, Brokey just flying downwards. Velocity too quick to stop. And what's Zywu going to do? Save. Looking to hang on to that AWP. Money's still not fantastic for Vitality, even with the consecutive wins. But I feel like hunting Zywu is like hunting bears. You're not supposed to. Yeah, you're not really the hunter. <laughs> I 
He might be a black bear in the way that he's a little nicer, but sure. still a bear. Still want to protect your neck. Yeah. You know, I always thought grizzlies were like the deadliest, but apparently it's polar bears. Polar bears. You got to be made of something different to live out there. Yeah. If you Canadian see a polar Arctic. bear, I heard you're already dead. If you see when you're already dead. Already dead. Like, if because you're the only food for miles. Yeah, man. And they smell two miles away. Oh yeah. If it sees you and you see it. Wow. You're done. I was you know watching. what? What are you doing there? Honestly, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you got some other life choices that led you to yeah. a place where you shouldn't have been. Or you know, luck of the draw. True, true. Luck of the draw. Could have been building your igloo. Everyone born in Alaska is like, come on, bro, don't blame me. <laughs> what about... I came for the salmon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I stayed because I can't leave. <laughs> oh. MP9 on magic. Op up. Double up. It's not on Magis, though. It's on Dupree. How fun. Don't miss, though. I feel like FaZe are so ready to pounce on any kind of opening they can get at this point. Three rounds left on the half. Zaiwu burned off his original angle, and still there are rumblings of Apartment's presence. Three rounds. Vitality have got this off pick on a rifle on upper B. Oh, he's going deeper. Two of them, of course, been Zaiwu. Dupree might want to leave a little bit on the left. Just oh, yeah. Just smokes. A1F just gets Brokey. That's it. Drops the bomb for a second, but nobody else inside of sight can stop it. So talk to me there, Launders. I was just thinking that, you know, who am I to tell Dupree how to hop in that position? But holding the crack, if they have, if they have cross, which maybe you didn't think they did, and then they swing... Wide to the right. If you're holding super tight, your half your gun is sticking out, and they can just spray you down through the wall. But it looked like he was making a small move. Look how quickly FaZe just transitioned into the commitment, though. So ready for the cat players to come swinging up. Spinks almost got a lineup. But I feel like even then, best case he gets two. Vitality were so far away already with all the money on the line. It's an easy call for them to just give it up. You know, it's a couple rounds phase of head to B, and they're met by Zywu. And those rounds, they lose. Yeah. But then you head to B again, and you catch Dupree on the op angle, and look always, what happens. It's always nice when it's the hybrid. So, a bit of a gamble. You roll the dice. Also, when he gets splashed, takes a right step, just puts himself even more in the open. Dead real quick. So back to the singular op, where it belongs, with Zywu. Both teams have been very responsible with money here on Mirage. More cooled off on the mid plate. It's Kerrigan by chair, just left. It's interesting how little Vitality fight in mid in the early round. Yeah, true. They come through late and oftentimes when they're down numbers, but I think FaZe are recognizing it. They've been taking a lot of mid space. Make the most of it. Oh, oh that no, it sucks. Flash. Oh, no, rain. That was in. Just left Kerrigan to dry, and oh, man. Spinks right there with the next one, and so... Spinks definitely peaks off that flash, not blinding him. No doubt. The fact he finds his opponent flash is just icing on the cake, and the MP9 shreds two as Robs gets smoked out from Palace from such a successful hit into that B-site last round into a fumble with the flashbang in mid that costs them 5v3, and from there, nothing. Ouch. Yeah. It, it really can be a butterfly effect from such a small thing that happens. And you could write it off if you weren't losing the half, if you weren't losing the series so far. But one bad flash and Spink says, Thank you. One man's trash, another man's treasure.
Oh, this one's free for Vitality. Moving into round 15. Could not have been easier. Yeah. Counter-terrorists win. Matt just gets back with a better weapon. Still just keeping the one off up. Nobody on... Oh, actually, Matt just could rebuy one if he chooses to. We've seen it a few times. We've seen it on both maps. Double ops coming back around. He said in the last map, maybe I should op some more. <laughs> yeah, because it's too OP. First time out called for Vitality here, looking for the double digits. I don't necessarily have any ideas for FaZe because some of their ideas worked. They, I mean, they don't have that many rounds, but the rounds they've won look pretty good, I'd say. Their B hits look pretty good. It's been an honest day's work for both teams, and uh, Vitality have won more rounds, but it doesn't mean that phase half has necessarily been bad, but this round was definitely pretty tragic. Especially when numerically they haven't won everything, so... One last chance. Let's see if they can make it six. Rain doing his thing inside of middle. When I say it hasn't been bad, I mean... They have been surviving 5v5 for a long time. They are getting close to putting in splits. They're doing great in terms of map control. It could give them like a 90% rating on that, I would say. They've identified mid is underplayed by the CT side. They're taking control of that. They got connector a few times. But there's also been other rounds where they just get completely stuffed. Sphinx has been sharp. And he looks for another highlight round to end this. Peek out of the catwalk. Goes the way of Kerrigan. Big duel to win if you're Kerrigan. Trying to recover this event on an individual level. But every kill that happens at the A site gives you the confidence this is clear. When in reality, the king is in his palace. And if the ticket player sets up a distraction, Zywu's coming out with the Deeg. Twist is going to plant the bomb. Can't be stopped. Eagle finds its first. Nothing more. Zywu, unfortunately has no teammates' success to tether off of. And so Dupree to close out the half in a 1v4 attempt. FaZe able to squeeze yet another out of this half, which means six on the T side of their map pick. They'll have a good defense in store for us. Will it be enough to push the series onto overpass? We had three or four like kind of guides, like really experienced people in this area because it could be kind of, kind of dangerous. So the first thing we were gonna find with this GPS tracker was like, it was a tent. So we were like, oh, we're gonna sleep outside and it was, it's like minus 20 degrees. They eventually told us that we'd have to go back to the cottage to sleep because there was gonna be a storm and they did, and they were gonna, it was gonna be very dangerous to be outside. So they were like, okay, maybe it's gonna be a little bit too hot on these guys. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so, and, and that was like day one. And then the second day we went on to, we were supposed to go on another hike uh, find new objectives and we would have a map that we had to look through. You know, it's all about tasks where you had to communicate and guide through. You're talking about one of those paper maps that we don't use anymore, right? Yeah, it was. You keep up in the windshield yeah. in the 90s. Uh, oh, that's actually a funny story. I don't know if I should, sh I, I don't know if it's, sh it's only on me, so. Perfect. <sighs> okay, I f I'll share. Let's go. Uh, maybe two weeks prior, I, I destroyed my phone. So I had just gotten a new phone. It was the, new, the newest iPhone at the time. Yeah, you know, I, I was on my phone and I had to pee. So, and, and, and you know, you see, you, like, you have the toilet, as, like right here. And then you'd have like a window up here, a little bit curved, you know? So you can see the bears coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a little bit, I was just like, I put my phone up there. All of a sudden, I hear someone, you know, like tries to, and it's, it's Sonic, you know? I panic that I thought that maybe I didn't lock the door. Oh yeah. So I'm standing here, my phone is up here. Yeah. I hit my phone with my elbow as the phone goes, <laughs> into the toilet. So my phone is lying in the toilet with my own pee in it. Yeah. So I just immediately like <laughs> get my hand inside the toilet, realizing that the phone has gotten stuck because you know the, the toilet is like on the curve. On the curve, so it's like in between. I'm just like <laughs> trying to get that goddamn phone out. I finally get the phone out and I look at it. It's fine. It's working. I had pee all over my hands in my phone and oh my god, it was horrible. <laughs> Sonic kind of also panicked because he heard from 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 outside the door. A lot of things happened and he was like, oh, 
what did I do? And, <laughs> and he didn't know it was me in there. Yeah. And then he said, uh, hello? I was like, hi, it's just me, Danny. It's just me, Danny. He said, are you okay? Yeah, I just dropped my phone in the toilet. There's pee everywhere. Oh. Pants on your ankles, lying on the floor. Yeah, it was horrible. Phone stuck in the toilet. It was horrible. And when I went back to the room to tell the guys that, that what I did, uh, that was a horrible thing. Wow. I, uh, I, it's actually, it's, it's right here. This is the phone. The same phone. This is the phone. So make sure I'll make sure you, never to touch you, that. But yeah, still remember it. Got that sense. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs>
as a beha- a body language expert, <laughs> yep. looking at um. Oh, you an expert of body? <laughs> huh? Got to take my shoes off to count how many I got. <laughs> but the fact is, they aren't looking extremely energized. Not in the same way that Vitality are locked in. Still nothing other than what they saved. For all we know, we're looking at the same story that was told versus Heroic. That is a hyper-competitive, electric, back-and-forth first map. Into their opponents just walking away with an easy 2-0. And that, unfortunately for FaZe, kind of dispels some of the excitement that we get in the first one. Starts to taint their image. Can't ask of much with an MP9 and a Fomus. They've foregone all the mid-control until Rob's goes for a peek. Just the one, Apex. Snaps it back for the double. Brokey's Deagle off the window, dead. And we've got a cat player that looked to get closer, but Twists gets a glimpse of nothing. That 10 health left on Zaiwu is just enough to move Bomb back to Joint Sphinx by the looks of things and hit that B site. Oh, no. Or no, they're actually going to pull back. They have the option to go here, but... Both leave. I think, you know, Kerrigan makes the smart move of saying, Zaiwu probably left this way. Since I was... Since Twist, you were on top of him on Cat, you know he didn't go Connector. Uh, just a smart move out of Vitality. I mean, not even too special. Just a good idea, not rushing the situation. And brought to you by the fact that they had Magisk and Palace. Because if they didn't, then they wouldn't be super confident about clearing everything coming back to the A site. So, hard one for Face to read. Vitality being very pragmatic here. Another good decision. And some excellent kills out of Apex. He got both of those inside a connector, even though his aim was maximum stressed. The second player, we don't even get to see where the peak came from, but it sure as hell came quick. I mean, Vi Apex went negative on Anubis, but he definitely had a good game. There was a lot of great rounds from him individually there, too. Do you, sometimes there is, this, there is this sort of race between the sort of lower fragging IGLs, Kerrigan, him, and Hooksy. Do you know where that stands right now in terms of... Uh, Apex at the top. Apex at the top. Yep. Followed by Kerrigan, followed by Hooksy, mm. and then JT. And then JT. And Snappy... And Where were Snappy fit into that? Snappy actually? Would, he actually I, I would probably good. say above... If I had to, just off the top of my head, above I would say Apex. he's higher rated than Apex at the moment. Yeah. Snappy has been having a good individual form. And he got that win on Dallas, um, too. If anything, they're kind of like, let's just say equal. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the struggle has been pretty real for Kerrigan and, and, and Hooksy, unfortunately. Mm. And I was going to say the struggle for Dexter has actually been even worse. Mm. But Dexter also, with Dallas, has returned to form. Mm -hmm. But uh, enough about Mouse. More about FaZe. Second timeout called on this one. You know, the one... The one thing is that whenever NA loses their representatives on U.S. events, we always look to phase so that we can still cheer for twists on stage. Mm, yeah, that's true. Unfortunately, the team or, that wins in every stadium in that yeah. regard. Uh, this could be no NA representative in the semifinals. Yeah, same but, but we get Imperial. That's true. One of the best from the Americas to ever do it. Fallen, a legend. If you're coming to the event tomorrow and Sunday. You may be watching something special, but here we are, locking in. He's not done yet. Don't write the obituaries. Ooh, Magisk, however, kicks it off. There's a little bit of Rops in that peak. Oh, man. Probably uh, haven't mounted high enough, yeah. You know, Rain came in, again, Rain coming in as the highest rated player of these 10 prior to this match going live. Oh, yeah. And now looking at back-to-back -back underwhelming performances. He ended the first map 17 and 29, 0.85 rating. This one even worse. Guys, oh. ban Vertigo on Blast TV right now. Ah, yeah, guys, ban Inferno on Blast TV right now. It's your last chance. Rops gets smoked out on window. You can kind of do no wrong from this position. It's going to be three halls flood here in twists. 
Yes, he's gonna have to stop this by himself. AK Drops in hand. Here. Trying to hold off as well, but... Oh, yes! That's what they needed. Dupree doubles. Whoa. Drops just couldn't hold on to it all. With that third person out from Palace, right? Each of the original defenders gets one. They're thinking job is done, it's held. Dupree slides out, finishes off the little that was left of twists. Ends Rops deep on ticket, leaves Brokey and Kerrigan in a 2v3 attempt if they want it. But man, this has been flat. This second half still has zero round wins for FaZe, and you thought maybe guns could make a difference. And in this case, nothing. Damn, dude. I mean, what more can you ask? You've got Rops and Twist covering each other perfectly for those kills, but Dupree, just another player that FaZe don't want to have to talk about. Getting the double kill. The third man out from Palace makes the difference. Seven round lead for Vitality. Nice Peter indeed. This was Magis opening. He was hoping it was Rops. Yeah. But they free handled that. Nice shot on Rops. Commits to the spray. Nice, okay. Another buy-in from FaZe. Come on. Do something. Want to see that fight? Want to see that dog? Yeah. Zaiwu, there we go. Nice. <laughs> He's dead. For now. His resurrection will be great. But just utility there out of phase to make a difference. Now, 5v4. Best scenario they've had on this CT side so far. With guns, still with more util, and an opening kill. I would never expect phase to go down without a fight. But that fight has to start now. Vitality look to keep this simple. Everybody grouping up inside of the apartments. Without Zaiwu, they lean on Sphinx, Dupree, and Magus. And out through window goes Sphinx. He's lost Dupree and Twist catching him off the catwalk. Flawless hold. Perfect hold. Mm. Coming out of phase. Yeah, that was Kerrigan there. Thought they were going to come B. Was chilling in the site for a second. They have Cat to cover. That allows Brokey to go forward with this Kodak moments from one angle to the next. Each window. And then the final shot in is super easy for him. Knowing they can't jump out. $1,500 here went into making sure that Zaiwu died. But with this kill came information and no trade as well. I don't think he's worried about it. Quick, fast fight from Rob. Sticking around. Third peak. And Twist is actually the one to get it deep from apartments. Rob's goes in. Third serving. Gets canceled out. Luckily for FaZe, Twist was ready to roll, and he's actually going in for maybe another engagement, but Brokey holding top mid. Uh-oh. Yeah, he goes for the peak. Twist decides to take a risk and loses out. This might be the keys handed over to Magisk to make a move, so... But Rain's angle's nasty, and Magisk... Oh, he's looking for it. Oh, he clears it properly. Oh, nicely done out of Magisk. Goes for a second. It's an off in the open. Whoa, oh, the headshot connects. Oh, and there's the last for Kerrigan. Jesus. And Magisk with nice. Dupree just rounds a go. They are owning out of Palace. Yeah. Raps, he's doing what Rops did and more now. On both sides here. It's a nice kill. It looked like Rain was getting prepared for that lurk to come out, and there was probably a timing where he looked up for a second, but... Nice! Let's go! Yeah, some Let's beautiful individual in! moments here from Vitality once again. They still have guns, which means they still have a chance. Which means this season isn't over, but Zaiwu... drops Brokey in a heartbeat. Having gone down to the util, looking for revenge and unfortunately for Brokey he's on the receiving end Apex ready to go up connector Rob's looking to hold off catwalk but he's losing teammates luckily he's got Kerrigan here to help him Jeez. but every time these CTs peak they just get dropped rain dead in an instant and the individual level that's just coming out of vitality on this second map is unmatched, unmatched. by face not even close and on Anubis that wasn't the case 
Let's just... Oh, and you can see how important that is to Zonic, just to keep it steady right now. I mean, FaZe are clearly deflated. Apex is soaking up all their energy. And I, I think Vitality, everyone at Vitality thinks they've won this. Zonic wants to send it home. And this could be the last round from FaZe this season. Might be an auto shotgun on rain. Why not? Oh, yeah. Why not? And, and a twist is on an op. Okay, yeah. let's get creative. <laughs> let's know? get crazy. That's one thing we haven't done. Show us your loadouts. For all we know, the next time we see FaZe, maybe even in CS2. Dupree. Looking for his point of contact. And this is a phase, of course, that was chasing the Intel Grand Slam throughout this season. Pulled that off at Pro League in Malta thanks to a world-class performance from Twists. And so this season still needs to be celebrated for FaZe. But at the tail end of all this, man, they have had some of the most difficult challenges at hand. From the last chance qualifier in Paris to grueling best of threes every step of the way to get into the playoffs when so many others still faltered to have to meet Heroic in that quarterfinal. Getting bested by Entz and now beaten by Vitality, but not yet. Rain. Not yet. Rain said, not my last round. <laughs> Rain whips out the auto shot. He gets three kills somehow, some way. Let that be a reminder. Sometimes you just got to have fun. Yeah. And I think he bought it just because of the money that he had. They'll be happy to win. It's nice to get this off pick in from Twist. It just feels like a drop in the bucket. I'm sure the confidence will be earned as usual. If they get back into double digits, then I'm sure they'll feel like they can actually make that comeback as they made so many comebacks in the last few months. Until that point, just got to take it slow. Some more regular buy here out from them. Props with the movement, but oh my god. Wow, nice. Wow, man. how do you do all that? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Twist oh. wants to come at him. He still dies. They lose Rops on Cat. Twist reclaims a single kill, but Dupree is further back. And Spinks just clipped rain, oh, so now man. just two frags away. That one round, the one-off that has led FaZe to a failure here in Washington. They had their chance versus Heroic. And again, electric first map. Some of the best maps of this event were put forth by FaZe in terms of the entertainment. They started it with Anubis versus Vitality again. But this is a tale of Vitality going from Paris as major champions to time off, which we've seen deflate teams in the past, to now looking to lock in that semifinal. And if you want to talk about Vitality's run in Paris being, you know, unimpressive, lacking opponents, well, versus FaZe and potentially versus G2, they will change that story. Utility picked up, but Bomb planted on B. It's going to be a desperate retake attempt, but you've got nowhere else to go. Two frags separating FaZe from the player break. And Kerrigan's met by an additional Molotov. Insult to injury as Zaiwu posts up in sight. It's wow. both coming in from Cat. Initial damage looking good. Brokey's dead. Kerrigan right there after. Vitality closes, it, as it always seemed they would. Anubis back and forth and action-packed. Mirage belongs to the French and Danish fusion. And unfortunately for FaZe, despite a season of success and an accolade so many others do want, here in Washington, they're gone. Yeah, it's a tough road uh, here and a, and a way to end, you know, for FaZe, who didn't show their best form on Mirage, even though if that's going to be your last memory of them, that's not fair. The amount of fight that they've shown in the last few months has shown that not only have they put up a great effort, got so many overtimes versus so much of the top competition, tournament favorites, taking it over the line sometimes, but had to constantly do so, tournament to tournament. <laughs> and Vitality, they have the confidence. We know what tournament wins can do for them, and it's been a while since FaZe have got one of those. So it's a beautiful thing. And to talk now, we've got James with an interview. Hold on. 
I've got Carrigan with me here. As I want to start with going back to Anubis, right? Uh, a competitive game again. You guys were up on both halves. It's 7-3 at one point and then 6-1. What do you feel was the struggles for you guys in that in terms of keeping that momentum going and being able to, to keep Vitality down? Yeah, I think we had a good game plan on, on T-side, uh, playing pretty slow and trying to squeeze them into side and win the late rounds. Uh, that's all tactical at 7-3, 7-4. You could feel they adapted uh, pretty good. And then I felt like we had one of the two rounds, upcoming rounds, we could have closed, but uh, we didn't. And, and Vitality is a great Anubis team, and we knew that coming into to the game that Anubis is going to be rough. But I think we managed to have a good idea how to play, but just didn't finish it off on the T-side. And for Mirage, this is the one you guys, we can always rely on. You've been on a streak with it. We saw the, the wins against G2, against Ents as well. But here, it didn't look like the normal phase. What was missing? I mean, I think I think we won six weapon rounds on Mirage T side, and like uh, I think one of the key things on T side Mirage right now is you have to break the enemies if you want to have a, a momentum in that uh, in that sense. So I think we played as good as we could, and also uh, um, energy level probably it's been a long month for us, and I think that's been fun everyone. But uh, I just feel like. Um, we never really got into the CT side, and we know we have a very strong CT side. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't get enough rounds on T sides to kind of survive a pistol round lose. Now, in terms of this, right, with the end of the season, you said it's been a long season, it's been a crazy few weeks for you guys. This isn't what you would have wanted, but you still hit some great marks, like the, the Grand Slam, for example. Obviously, they've got a player break coming up. That time off is much needed. But coming back into next season, Twist himself already said to us, right, we're keeping this face clan going, which is good news, what we want to hear. But how important is this bit of time off and, and how much do you want to come back and show the full force of phase? Now, for me and Vigil as a lead, I think it's 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 a good time. It's a break I need now. I think I think if there was a tournament two or three weeks, I don't know how we would have managed that uh, for me, uh, at least. So, yeah, uh, time off to rethink and also make, uh, again, make an individual plan for myself how to improve uh, for the next uh, season. Uh, the last two, three months have been rough on me and Vigili and obviously at some point it's hard to call with a lot of confidence when you can't kill people. So in the end, I did my best as a leader and I tried to stay strong, but today I could feel like the energy and, and just everything coming together is kind of rough the, the last week for me. Well, Carrigan, one thing I know for sure is you always come back and your plans always work in the end. Thank you very much, man. We'll see you next season. A rough end to the season there for FaZe, but Vitality resurgent, they carry on. And it's starting to look like a Vitality coming up into form. Yeah, FaZe uh, measured against a Vitality that was much more activated than on day one here in Washington. That's uh, undebatable. Just want to bounce back on the um, words of Kerrigan, of course, hot words, but I think he's spot on. You know, they're, they're tired. Like, that's it. It's been a long yeah. stretch. Um, he, was, he was lacking just a little bit of energy, not only in terms of the fragging output, which is obviously needed, and he had players on his team who was also a little bit missing. But usually where FaZe can strike really fast and make precise mid-round callings, I feel like this wasn't the case. And on Mirage, it was very apparent that they were playing one or two speeds below Vitality in the decision-making they were going and the decisions they were having in terms of strategies. Uh, it, it wasn't the great of, of FaZe on Mirage. No, they've been talking for a while about feeling like burnout. Like, it's been a couple of events now, like ever since the Major ended, essentially, like how, how it's just been that conversation around FaZe has been like, yeah, we're just fried. We're done. We're dead. So yeah, today a little bit, a little bit flat, especially on Mirage, which was a bit of a bummer. But look, I don't know. This isn't going to help them internally as a team. But I know from the outside, it's like even in those circumstances, FaZe has delivered some of the most exciting Counter Strike right. we've seen this year. Like they've been awesome to watch. And again, it's like they take that loss to Heroic, one of the best teams in the world. Now they take a loss to Vitality. This is still a team that, despite all these struggles and all these issues, is still contending with the best in the world. And that exhaustion, I think, is what's preventing them from finding that last three, four, five percent to be able to actually overcome and win a few of these matches and actually turn these ones in their favor. So, um, yeah, it's a bummer that we're not going to have them moving forward, but this is the nature of having it one half of the bracket be purely grand finals the whole way through. Well, that side is a little bit of a bummer, but the other side, I'm sure it's all smiles, and we've got Banks Hell standing yeah. aside with the winners for a little interview. I've got one very happy Apex with me on this side. A big smile on his face after that one, and no doubt, mate, because I think a lot of us were very worried after your first game here in the Spring Finals. But now does it feel good to come back and come back in the style that you did? Yes, of course. I mean, people can underestimate that the way that we, for five months, as uh, Magic said in an interview, we did everything for the Major. Everything yeah. was planned for the Major, and we won it. And when you you end like uh, a big goal like that, it's pretty weird to go into a next tournament. And that was the, the first for me. I didn't know where I was. Mm. We, we, couldn't pr we didn't practice the first week when we were after the major because we didn't have time. 
I mean, we didn't have time. We wanted to take some time, time off. Time off, time off. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Some time off. And the other week, um, unfortunately, Springs was a lot sick. Okay. So we were practicing uh, with Jax, actually, uh, because we, we wanted to play a bit. But yeah, we had like, we almost had no practice coming here in, in the last like three or four weeks. So that wasn't easy at the beginning. But after the loss against Imperial, we were like, uh, Come on, guys, we're not here to, to, to lose and uh, to, to not show up. And I think uh, we're coming back step by step into the tournament, and that just feels good. Can you tell me what that team talk looked like after the Imperial game? I don't know. I mean, we were not mad. We were just lost in some way. And I think our sport psychologist, Lars, helped us a lot to get through that because I was the first one. I, I, my words were I was empty. I was empty in some sense because I didn't know uh, what was the goal now. And uh, of course, it's to win tournaments, but when you win such a big tournament at home with Without a doubt, people can underestimate that, but that was the most pressure I ever had in my life. So mm. when everything goes out, you're like, oh, what, what's, what's happening now? What, what's going on? And yeah, we, we, we came back uh, together uh, as a team and that's what matters. And we showed up better uh, the last few days, even though that's not perfect. That was a classic Anubis <laughs> over time against FaZe anyway. But yeah, we showed up the last two days, even though that was not pretty, but that's my team. And that's actually um, what we've been showing this, this year. It's a lot of mental fortitude. It definitely is, mate, 100%. And I want to touch on this Mirage because yeah. they've been beating you on it over and over again. We have the first time we see it this year and you win in a stylish fashion. But I noticed Spinks a few times over towards Shaw. Is that a change that's been made? that's his old Ents position. Yes, we've been changing positions. So uh, obviously um, we didn't play it that much because we had to, to adapt to, to our new positions uh, with Dupree B and Mikon Actor and Spinks Shorts. Okay. But I was really needed to do it because uh, we needed more movement on the map and we need uh, like a bit more craziness connector. Spinks is more, I mean, he's, he's not that crazy. He's like more a star rifler and blah, blah, blah. so I needed a crazy guy like me to, <laughs> to get over, being able to support Magisk as well. And I think it's been working well and I'm proud that um, we've been improving our mirror so much and uh, it just feels good because we won it the last few times. Improving it at the right time for sure. Now going into the semis, crowd's going to be here, but you're going to be up against a G2 as well. You ready for that? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, playing against G2 is always a, a pleasure. Um, uh, they are the rough major. I think they want to bounce back at this tournament, so it's going to be a rough run for sure. But I'm ready. We are ready, and uh, we want to show uh, that we are the best team in the world. I look forward to seeing it. Dan, thank you very much, man. Thank you. Sometimes it takes that sting of defeat to relight the fires of competition, and it is looking like a vitality reignited. We hear from Apex, they're uh, getting hungry again. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Look, his argument, his point about you win the major and then what's next, I think we can relate that to a level. Like, how do you bounce back from having reached that goal and suddenly you left a little bit empty? But what I do like is the reaction halfway through the tournament. I would have been very sad and disappointed if Vitality just bowed out sure. after the win in Paris, showing up in Washington, playing two series and, and leaving. That in itself would have said much more about the team than what I would like to. But now we're seeing how they can look like when they're actually warming up into the tournament. That's now a victory back-to-back 2-0 -back against Cloud9, against FaZe, and Dan is talking about it. Resilience, composure, a vitality that, let's say six months ago, was famous for crumbling in really tense situations, having people, Apex, the first one, kind of letting the emotions get the better of him. Now they seem so much more focused and sure of themselves in these situations. It's refreshing to see. I don't know if it's just me, but every time I like hear Apex talk these days, I'm like, I, I like, just from like being, like having watched this transition of him into an in-game leader, like just like vocally in the way he can carries himself in interviews, the things he says, I'm just like, he's starting to really like put together like a nice like leadership pedigree, mm -hmm. not like outside the game as well as inside the game, because inside the game is obviously going very well, but just he gives off that aura a little bit more. And speaking of bouncing back in the middle of a tournament, one of the guys we highlighted in the pre-show is a little bit quiet with Spinks, and he just went off here in Mirage. Absolutely. He was crushing it. I mean, he, he's, I think, probably the top rated player across the series as well, had a solid Anubis and then absolutely took command of the map on Mirage. Um, this is what you need. If you're Vitality, this is the winning formula is Spinks and Zaiwu hitting with a little dash for the Magisk and the I, Dupree, and, and they're delivering. I think the fun thing about, like, Spinks right now in this team is it even ties into what I just kind of brought up about Apex is, like, remember that interview he gave a while back where he was just like, yeah, Spinks on Ents just kind of got to lurk and take his time because Ents calls so crazy and these four-man explosions and Spinks has all this chaos that he gets to pick and choose. He had to learn how to be, like, a little bit of a lurker and learn how to play his role specifically within a vitality system that doesn't play that style. And now talking about, yeah, shifting positions because <laughs> Spinks can be a star yes. rifler here. We needed a little bit more insanity on this side of the map. We needed someone who was willing to do the crazy, dirty, grimy work that I like to do. So, I mean, I, I think that those conversations coming out of Apex's mouth is, is so interesting to me, and it's so cool to watch this team, like, properly work through those issues.
to find the solution. It, it's a work in progress. Yeah, right? it's a work it in always progress. is. They, they, they obviously had issues on Mirage, right? The way they were playing with the Apex Dupree combination on B, there was a bit of a disbalance in the defense, maybe a lack of movement. And then Apex looked at it probably with the coaching staff and said, okay, how, how do we fix that? One way we could fix it, bring me towards connector, yeah. have a bit more movement. And we know Apex does not like to play Counter-Strike, just sitting in a corner. Like, no. He's the man who's going to push you to regain information, to be inactive. And on the other, you get to put Spinks, multi-kill machine in like a short position where he can play off of Dupree's contact on the B side or fight towards mid. And yeah, once you see it, you're like, oh yeah, it makes sense. Like, this so is you stupid. Had to, Why didn't we do it? You kind of had to come up to it, right? Yeah. Because originally putting Spinks in connector did not sound like a bad idea, right? He's, he's a very high skilled base position where you have a whole lot of duels coming your way. Sounded pretty good. Especially didn't when you look out. across the entirety of Pro CS and you look at the other players Absolutely. playing in connector, right? It is like those the star Nikos riflers. World, yeah, Nico, it's like not the crazy people. It's like just your star solid rifler. Elise as well used to play there as well. Like you just put someone there who's going to be able to handle business and get you a double kill. And obviously Vitality's finding a new way to do it. That they certainly have, and it's led to great results early on, and I think they're heating up into what should be a killer matchup as we look towards tomorrow, because now we have entered the stage of the semifinals. Now we're going to have a crowd in the audience mm. watching these games, and so the tension only rises, and G2 Vitality has that game. I love that. Well, I absolutely gonna love it. the night tomorrow. That is going to... I think that's going to deliver. I love it because now Vitality, I think, has sent the message to the out wide world that they're ready to fight. Like, this isn't just a slow, diesel fueled Vitality, not exactly sure how to behave in this event, not knowing uh, what for the dance. This yeah. is a real serious Vitality now who's activated championship mode. And Apex said it G2, they have a bone to pick here. Like, they have something to prove, they have a statement to make. And we're going to just sprinkle a couple of people out there just to make it an even better game. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, think, it's, I think it's really cool too, as well, because I mean, we touched on this as well in the pregame is like, Vitality's run at the major, while like you can't like take away the major trophy, obviously the fact that they've won this major, you could sit there and be like, does this kind of a run really qualify you as the best team in the world after winning the major? And now if you go through and you beat these yes. teams, you beat these teams, then it is, oh, you guys are the best. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, actually I take it all back. <laughs> you are the best. No contest. And I mean, if we're looking at the other side, at that other matchup we've got, Heroic Imperial, there's a team in Heroic that's been claiming to be the best in the world at various points over the course of this season, over the course of the last year, never quite had the trophies to show for it. Now Now's a chance. If you got a resurgent vitality, you got to take care of business against Imperial first, though. And I know. That's a scary prospect. There, there's always like, listen. You, you can you can play with words, and that that's the beauty of the English language. But when heroic say we're the best team in the world, you can be annoying and say you're the most consistent team yeah. in the world. Are you the best team in the world? Like how many trophies have you won? How's your cabinet looking like? And if we ever if we ever got to a vitality heroic grand final, oof, this would just be my treat. I'm yeah, inviting you all of it. Dinner's on me. <laughs> Perfect. I Dinner's like on me. Yeah. Yeah, We're going to have a couple bottles of wine, Holding crack it open. That. The right way to do it. The yeah. only way to do it. Holding you to that if we get there. <laughs> but uh, first, I, I think we're just, we're all running right over Imperial as a speed bump here. Uh, yep. Oh, what I were you worried, Jason? No I way. Think like, the, <laughs> I think no way. No way. Stop. <laughs> I'm still holding out to this. I think I know Heroic started joking about it. They started laughing about it. They're trying to address it in different ways, but this is still an issue for them. Listen, Imperial's job is going to make it a battle. Just make it a fight. Like just just have win enough rounds so that the idea gets kind of planted as a seed in the minds of Heroic that, wait a minute, are we really gonna lose that game? If you get to that point on stage, they've proven in different opportunities, different occasions rather, that they can get a little bit rattled, but I just don't know if that's gonna, ever gonna be the case. It'd be cool if they got out to like a hot star, right? Like a 6 Yeah, you would have like, seven just put them and like, pressure. just put them under pressure immediately and see what happens from there, see if that collapse, see if the cracks oh, start to begin to form. No. But it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Just ruin all my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's dreams for stepping on it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, he says. It's not going to happen. Unless it does. Unless it does. No, it's not going to happen. All I know is you've said that a lot of times, and so I'm going to throw that back in your face. Not even fact, stress. It does happen. Uh, but let's see how we did today, right? Because we do have our results from today. Imperial 2-0 over Complexity. That one maybe a little more one-sided than we were hoping. It and was. Vitality phase, exciting in the first, but all Vitality. I think the, the Imperial 2-0 against Complexity, if anything, just makes that semifinal a bit more interesting. Like, this wasn't mm. a, a scrappy. Like, Imperial looked very dominant on the second map, fallen very much gray state in terms of calling. He had players by his side stepping up as well. So all of the uh, elements for us to get a no way semifinal. It's like like the Do you know how it. many things would have to go right for Imperial to beat her? I have a pretty long Do list. Do you know tonight. how many things would have to go right for that to happen? It's a long list. If we could make the list tonight. We'll, we'll write it down. We'll bring it in for the death segment tomorrow. We'll have a list of it. like the 12 things that need to occur. Let's do, we'll, we'll do that. One of those pages yeah. where it unfolds and then like a, it's, it's going to be a just, just, yeah. rolling down. <laughs> He's ch making a list. He's checking it twice. A toilet paper roll that goes all <laughs> the way out. <laughs> Double ply.
Well, we'll find out if uh, Imperial are going to be naughty or nice tomorrow in the game. But uh, it's time to check in with our Maersk MVP race. James standing by with that. Mike. That's right, the all-important Maersk MVP is coming your way. And the players we have right now, well, there's still a huge chance for other players to jump up on. We've got two more days of competition. But in fifth place, we have Yabby Dabby Doo right now, another heroic player. They've been consistent throughout. Then we go on to Nico. Well, he was absolutely dominating. And I think that rating on Ancient would have massively helped him out there. Then we have the baby goat himself, Mr. Munasi. He was the one kind of pulling G2 across the line, kicking and screaming in some of the games they need to win. And they are in the semi-finals as well. Second, we have Cadian, the dominant Orpa and IGL for Heroic. He's starting to show a bit more better in terms of his form, which was kind of lacking in Dallas. That saw them go out a little bit early on. And then in first place, Stown. But Stown in front of a crowd. That's what we want to see. Try and find some success and see if he can dominate with it. We'll have to wait and see how it all goes. But that's our mess. MVP check-in. I'll be back tomorrow with some more for you. How are you guys feeling in the MVP race? If you had to guess right now, headed into the semifinals, who's your shot? Do I really have to say? I don't know. It's kind of, I kind of have a boring answer. He I wasn't even on the list, bro. He, he wasn't even on the list. Even on the list. Even you, gotta, you gotta throw in a curveball. You gotta <laughs> throw in a curveball. Like, people don't have to always expect what's coming at him, you know? Expect yeah, but they can't expect your answer. Because it starts with a Z and it ends with a woo. Uh, woo. What, what do you think? What do you think, Jason? Uh, you know, I think it's I think it's gonna be decided really in the semifinal tomorrow when you look at the two G two players and wow. two players. Wow, so much you risk like being taken. You like a that? Ooh, leaving on the edge. Just like, <laughs> uh, I'm going cello. Let's just go curveball cello. It's gonna win it all. Uh, let's talk about our CS money plays of the day because I know cello <laughs> the made some made some spicy moves. I don't know if he made the play of the day though. And now oh, the it's grim? They have a look at Vinny. Have a look at Vinny and pull off one of these many clutches he's had against Complexity. This was round 15, of course, one versus three. Beautiful, pressure with the smoke, punishes the peak from JT. And here we go, a round of applause for Vini, yeah. uh, one of our contestants. I don't, we don't get enough like, teams standing up and cl golf clapping their teammates too much. This is our boy Fang, obviously eliminated today, but not without going out without a fight. That, I said that all weird. Yeah, Fang, he's had a pretty good tournament, all things considered, but this was round saving, coming through the smoke at the perfect moment, realizing he had to make a play. A nice little quad kill to shut down the hit and tie things up at four. 14. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, There's that golf clap. That's on man. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Normalize clapping for you, homies. And then we have Broki, of course, another one. He, he's gonna bit the dust today. We say goodbye to him, but not without a couple of them. M4, A1, a silencer kills here. You can see the scoreline as well. What a pivotal moment to do it. Round 30. Ooh. Beautiful, beautiful work from Brokester. Look, Vinny, the only one of those play of the days to actually survive into the next day. Don't, so don't rationalize. Don't rationalize. MVP. Let people dream. He's let let people happen. dream. Fang's gonna win that one. Fang's gonna win that Fang, one. Fang it was a sick play. play. It yeah. was a dope play. It was a really nice exclamation point on the end of the season as well for Absolutely. Fang. Absolutely. I forgot it already. Ups and downs. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, exclamation <laughs> point on the back end of an elimination, yes. Well, let's see if you're uh, gonna <laughs> want to forget about your picks as well here. How'd you do all oh, two for two? <laughs> Well, not I guess bad. you're going to be remembering this one for a while. My faith in NA, not rewarded. That's not bad. Yeah, well, Imperial looked good today. FaZe dropping the ball a little bit. Yeah, this is a, that's a bummer. What do you think is the word I was saying as they took that picture? What do you think I was mumbling? What's my blood waffling about? What was I saying here? Uh, I was saying... Uh, 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 yeah. You think Simple's <laughs> the best of all time? I, I think, think that's what I was saying. <laughs> good, good lip reading. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like that? Yeah. Put a little emotion in that one. You think Simple's the best one? I, I was trying should, to get, uh, get some yippee kaye our way on done because it's come to the end of a day here at the Blast Premier Spring Final here in Washington, D.C. Another great day of action, and tomorrow we welcome the crowd. The stakes get higher, the excitement gets better, and the Counter-Strike, you know, will keep on delivering. So come back tomorrow for more CS action. But for now, good night, everybody.